Hey, everybody. What's going on, man? It's Friday night. Yeah, we're staying My, in. Yeah, we're staying in. So we'll probably go out tomorrow night, though. Yeah. Tom's got to Tom's gotta work in his new boots, man. Yeah, I, I, I got them broke in now. Yeah. Yeah. After after much putting alcohol on them and putting, uh, like, putting getting them with a heat, heat gun. gun. <laughs> heat gun on them. Actually, um... Making them conform to the feet. Yeah. I was putting um, goat lard on them inside and out, letting them absorb that. Don't ask why we have put, goat lard. Put, uh, put alcohol. It, it kind of helped a little bit. But what really helped was a heat gun. I put them in there and fucking put big old thick socks on and hit them with a heat gun and start moving. And you can feel the leather just expand and just release. And now they're they're good now. I could dance in these tomorrow. Well, you need you need to dance to some 80s shit tomorrow. Yeah. So it's like you're going to have yeah. to have some boots that are like yep. working. Well, hi, Pokemon. Tomorrow it will from? be ready to except um kiwi shoe polish <laughs> you, know? you made how except kiwi shoe yeah, polish. yeah. iris <laughs> says goat lard that's a first for me yeah well yeah. i had some i had some i had some it's, as well, as one does well it sounds fucking crazy it but does it's, sound kind of crazy not. if you're in the horse industry all the saddle soaps and shit the real expensive shit is some kind of a lard um yeah, it's just go to work. Sheep would work too. Yeah, you any know. animal that has fat. Is yeah, um, human and, fat. And that's like that's what you're gonna use like on a nice Hermes saddle or something. Yeah, it's gonna and it, it, the British are gonna sell it to you as like some hardcore fucking saddle soap or saddle or leather. Uh, what do they call it? A uh, leather conditioner. Right. Yeah. And you smell it, you go, "Whoo, man!" I know. That shit's smell. expensive though. You know what I mean? And if you actually looked into it, it's gonna be like lamb grease. Right, Land, uh, you know something that came off a of mutton. Probably go to about the same. Yeah, worked good. Well, we also have because you know, like I said, where we live, it's all farms and stuff. Farms, yeah. So there's people around here um, that make stuff out of yeah. goat lard, like make soap and stuff like that. Yeah, soap, fresh eggs, get fucking yeah. farm fresh eggs. Got some of those down there. Actually, there's a couple of really big yeah. blueberry farms around yeah. here, yeah. which is kind of weird to think about, but yeah. Next door, next to this golf course, is a big old open pasture with about 100 cattle in it. They're just l lounging around, and they kind of come and go. They go off to slaughter, and then they come back, and it's just, you know, local cattle rancher. You can go down there and buy a, uh, a half a, uh, a cow, but you got to pay for it beforehand. You have to pay for the feed, and then you got to pay for half that cow. It's about 1200 bucks for half a cow. And yeah. then the feed. I was looking into it. I hadn't do it yet. Got that big freezer. I mean, so that's a lot of money. I mean, it's a lot of meat. It's a lot of meat. That's more like 18 months worth of meat probably. Easy. Yeah, that's like a year and a half worth of meat. beef all fucking day. I mean... But I don't know. That's a lot of money, <laughs> like yeah. up front. I understand why they charge it. I mean, that's like half a whole animal. What you can do is you can go in with somebody. Yeah, I kind of feel like that's probably what most people around here do because yeah. nobody can really. Right. Around here, like a lot of people can't really afford to drop twelve hundred dollars or something. Yeah. I would think. Yeah, but it's good shit though. Well, yeah, and, and anything that comes fresh, from that, anything that comes half of anything that comes from that cow, all the tripe. We don't eat. We don't eat internal organs in the U U.S. too much. I eat beef heart. Chicken hearts. Chicken hearts, yeah. He L loves chicken liver. hearts. Liver. They eat those a lot in Brazil. Yeah. And like the first, like I'll, I love chicken hearts. I'll, I'm willing to eat a lot, but it's just like, that's that's a bridge too far for me. No, you, uh, you barbecue them far. with rock salt on them. They're fucking really good. I mean, I'll yeah. even eat a little bit of liver, but I don't love yeah. it. I don't love it. It's what like the liver has to be done right. That's what I mean. Now the gravy you make that has like the liver and everything yeah. in it, that's really Look, good. I use just a little bit. Yeah, but you just use a little bit of just, that. Yeah. It's a very, very strong yeah. flavor. It kind of overpowers everything. Yeah. I so. use gizzard in it too. That's turkey though. Yeah. That's what I mean. So it's just kinda like, mm, I don't know. It's one of those things. But out of that beef you get a lot of tallow. And you, you render it all off and save it, put it in a jar, you know, and it, it doesn't go bad or anything. And you could just use it for a bunch of shit, like conditioning leather, or uh, if you want to deep fry something, grab some tallow, fucking put it in a pan, and fucking we're gonna fry it in that. Yeah. I mean, bread's good. Fry a piece of bread, you can fry it. Oh my god. In tallow, if you're that making that sounds a, amazing. Yeah, if you're making <laughs> if you're making a fucking ham and cheese sandwich or something, or just yeah. a cheese sandwich. Shit, yeah. Yep. Oh my it's god. It's good shit. Bread and so lard. it's not just the meat. Mm. You know, it's it's all the other stuff that comes through it, <laughs> comes with it. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, like I said, so I mean, I'm not saying it's not an excessive price for what you get. Yeah. But I'm just saying that's a lot to drop at one time. Yeah. You'd have just, to go in with somebody. That's and what I mean. Split it. Yeah, you'd have to split it. Um, yeah. Murder yeah. Hornet says Tom told me he has a nipple belt. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, I got a nipple belt. Like, what's his name? <laughs> what's that dude's name? Ed Gein. Ed Gein, yeah. Yeah. Fucking Ed. Isn't that bad that I can just pull that out? Yeah, like, she yeah, knows yeah. all that shit. Ed Gein had a nipple belt. I remember, I saw pictures, photographs of a nipple belt. They leave that out a lot of stuff. Yeah. That they say about him, but yeah, he definitely had a nipple belt. I saw the photograph of the nipple belt. I've seen it too. Photographs of all the snatches. Yeah, he yeah he also had a box of vulvas. Yeah, he had a fucking. It was a shoebox, yes. Yeah. And he kept it under his bed. Yeah, a shoebox or a bucket. I don't remember. I think I think that was I think it, uh, that was Dahmer had the buckets. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, yeah, see, I thought Dahmer was more of a bucket guy. Yeah. Ed Gein was more of a shoebox shoe guy. Shoeboxes. He'd dry them out. I think he had a face too, didn't he? I thought he did have yeah. at least one face. Yeah. Now I have to go back and look. <laughs> the thing is, though, is that uh, Gain didn't kill most of those people that he had. No, he just stuff. dug them up. He dug them up. He did kill two people, yeah. right? Yeah, I think so. One or two people. Yeah, just he was trying to get fresh bodies because he was digging up all. He dug up all the ones that he wanted. He wanted some fresh ones, I guess. Um, but I guess digging them up, you know, they had been embalmed, so they were kind of preserved. Yeah. And he, he had a was making furniture out of them and belts. He had a. Uh, a chair, I think, that was made out of women's skin, wasn't it? That he had yeah. dug up. I think he had I mean, a skin shirt that he would wear and dance around, and he'd go he'd get naked and put that woman's shirt on. It had titties on it and everything. He'd go outside and dance naked. That's, that's where they got the inspiration for Buffalo Bill from yeah. Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, he was acting out. He was fantasizing that he was his mom. I mean, there comes a point where. If you have a belt made of nipples and also a shoebox of vulvas under yeah. one's bed, yeah. perhaps you should um, take a step back and reassess your life choices. And I, and I don't think that's a controversial th statement. He was too stupid. That dude was damn near a moron. Yeah, he was, uh, he was not real bright, no. Mm. I, in a way, I kind of feel bad for him. Um, not he, that bad. The, but, dude, the dude was fucking very backwards and not, and not intelligent at all. And his mom raised him funny as fuck. And, and he was left alone. When, when his family died, he was just left alone in that house. And he just fucking went crazy. Clearly. Yeah. He, uh, he was a dude yeah. that needed supervision. He, had, he, he, could, he wasn't a person that could be left alone. Yeah, I and, feel like um, he probably would have benefited from being like in an institution he, of some yeah, kind. He needed to be in an institution. or He had to have assisted living or something. He had to have somebody that was on watching him the phantom said he killed three people three including his brother yeah that's right yeah because i thought it was two but yeah i forgot about that he was doing weird shit before he killed people though yeah it just built up to that he was crazy crazy and dumb he had, his fantasies took over if i think i remember correctly his iq was only about 70 i think yeah i'd have to look but yeah he was, he, he was below average for sure way below yeah I would like to take this opportunity, if you have not seen it, if you're interested in Ed Gein at all, there actually was a very good movie that came out in 1974, I want to say? 1974, 1973, which was called Deranged. Yeah, that was a good one. Um, and that. actually, of all the movies that I've seen that were based on Ed Gein, uh, and, you know, admittedly, I haven't seen them all, um, but it was actually quite, it was um, dramatized, like, for, you know, for artistic effect or whatever, but um, it was actually like really, really good. And the dude playing the Ed Gein character, he wasn't named Ed Gein, um, Robert's Blossom. That was the same guy that played LeBay in the John Carpenter movie, Christine. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he was great. He was so good in this fucking movie. And I feel like I always have to bring it up because I feel like a lot of people haven't seen it, but it's really, really good. Like it's an exploitation film for sure, but it's like way better than you then it has any right to be yeah and i feel like a lot of people haven't seen it but it's really good but it's based on ed gain but he has like a different name and they changed some shit but it's pretty much ed gain it was it was a trip man well yeah i mean you can see why so many like bit like texas chainsaw massacre was kind of based on him like um norman bates was kind yeah. of based on him yeah. you can see what like buffalo bill was kind of based on him you can see it's why like, people yeah. are like fascinated even though he's not I guess he's technically a serial killer, but um, I think people were more fascinated by like the necrophile stuff, like the necro stuff. Yeah, because that's. I guess he was having sex with the one. It wouldn't shock me. Yeah, no. I mean, 
It didn't explicitly say that, I guess, but he was just he had the dead bodies. He maybe that was like the maybe that was like the limit. He was just kind of like, yeah. well, I'll just admit that I dug him up and yeah. had him in my house and made furniture out of him and shit. But like, having sex with him, well, I'm a little ashamed to admit that. Yeah. Wow, this took a dark turn, didn't it? Yeah. I don't think, <laughs> I don't think he admitted to that. A lot of them don't. Yeah. Um, because I kind of feel like even serial killers, and this is a weird thing to say, but it's true, I guess. Even serial killers have standards of a type. Yeah. Because it's like a lot of times they'll be like, yeah, I, I raped and killed so-and-so and this person and that and like 20 people. But it's like, one, if you ask them if they did anything to kids or if you ask them if they did anything to dead bodies, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Even though I'm pretty sure they probably yeah. did. But it's just like, that's, it's funny that that's like a bridge too far. Yeah. Like, even though you're a serial killer and you've done like the worst shit ever, but it's like those two things, now nah, we're not admitting to with that. With Ed, I think he was, I think with Ed, I think he was wearing that stuff. Yeah. He was putting it on. Mm-hmm. Trying to transform into, into his mom or a woman. Yeah, so, I think he was trying to be his mom. Yeah, he was trying to be his mom. That's what I like think. I said, that's what, that's what, um... Kind of you know, what's going on Robert with, going, Block going on. picked up on when he wrote the novel Psycho, Psycho which yeah. he kind of based on him loosely. He, he was trying to like be his mother. Obviously, they couldn't have people wearing skin in right. 1960 when they made that movie. Yeah. Um, but you know, they can do it nowadays. He was a mama's boy and, he, and, and and mentally slow and missed his mama, so he was gonna recreate her by digging up pieces of woman and making a suit and putting it on and walking around and pretending to be his mom. Like, how would you Bringing even his think of that? Out. How would you even think of that? Now, there might have been something sexual with that. You know what I mean? It was him and his mom was in there for a long time, and who knows how weird the mom was. I don't know. I mean, it probably was something like that. I notice you read into that kind of shit a lot, but I don't know how common that is. I don't think that's that, that common. Mothers and the, and the sons. I don't think that goes I don't know. Much. Well, like I said, I'm not, you know, I don't, I don't know. But it does seem like in a lot of cases like that, a lot and a lot of serial killers too do have really weird relationships with their mom. A lot, a lot with of their moms. A, a lot of the things, you know, especially if you're like an, a, an only son, the mothers try to keep a fucking grip on the son because it, it's something that's in them from a, a evolutionary yeah. I've point. noticed, and, and what it's it's very simple if you if if you look at it from their point of view. You're the backup husband. When the husband dies, you're going to take care of her. Right, yeah. That, that's all it is. Yeah. That's all. And that's probably what it was back in the, you know, back in the fucking caveman days. You know what I mean? Yeah, they were selecting men to protect them as mates. But when they got old and unattractive and the fucking, and the mate was dead, she had all these sons she sired that were like her bodyguards. Yeah. You know, that fed her. You know, that's all, that's what it is. Yeah, it is. I do kind of feel like there is like, it's like a the lot of social security that. network. <laughs> right. But that was before before fucking, before government checks. Before that was the thing, right? Like when you just had to fend for yourself. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I, yeah, I could see how that would they happen. They don't care about the daughters because the daughters have all run off with with men, and they have they've had children, so they can't depend on them. So she's basically an old woman with no means of support in the wild. The only thing she has to pr protect her are the sons that she sired. Right. So it's like, yeah, she's, she's going to laser focus on... Yeah, laser focus on, you know, on you but don't I have, nowhere. But the thing you about know? it, one thing I have noticed is that um, dudes that have, that are only sons. Yeah. Um, their moms, like, even when they get married and stuff like that, their moms are, like, way, like, overbearing yeah. and, like, overprotective and, like, will usually have a contentious relationship yeah. with the daughter-in-law. Yeah. And because it's almost like there's some kind of weird jealousy yeah. thing going on. Because well, the son might leave. She might lose her, right, her, right, right. her security. Yeah, so that, so that definitely is a thing. And I'm yeah. not saying it's, like, necessarily sexual at all. It's just kind of like a... So there has to be a backup. Right. She needs protection and money. It is kind of like that. You know, it, 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 it's instinctual. The thing is, though, here here in the West, it's not that bad. No. You need to fucking look at how bad it is with the Chinese. If you marry a girl in China, your mom is going to become your, your wife's boss, basically. Because the mother imagine. lives with the son, the oldest son. And she bosses the wife around, basically. It's her, that's like her uh, employee now. So a lot of the weird shit that happens at a Chinese family is between the wife and the mom. No thanks. And, yeah. 
and they don't really have divorce or anything, so the woman the, the woman just has to put up with it. No thanks. So it's fucking funny because you know if you if you look at a channel called Serpent ZA, and uh, he's a, he's a South African guy who moved to China. He married a Chinese girl who's a doctor. He had an American buddy there named C Milk who also married a Chinese girl who's a doctor. They both they all left China now since recently because the weird shit was going on with the government there. But uh, the moms, the the, uh, the, uh, the the wife's, the wives' moms were always trying to move in. That was another thing. And then the Chinese wives were happy that they had Western mother-in-laws because they never saw them, which that was evidently kind of like unusual. Hmm. You know? Yeah. Because they, <laughs> they weren't being bossed around by the mom. But then the the, uh, the 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 wife's mom would try to take over and move in. So the moms of both of, of the boy and the girl, or the man and the woman, see the marriage as an opportunity to freeload, basically, to try to move into your house. Yeah. See, I'm not a big fan of anybody bossing me. So yeah. I don't really like that idea at all. Right. Like, I know how it's different in different cultures and stuff, but I would absolutely not <clears throat> enjoy that. When I lived in Korea, <laughs> at some all. of my friends when I was in the Army were Katusa. Katusas were Korean Army Augmentation in the United States Army. They were Korean soldiers that were in the serving inside the United States Army as our interpreters. And I was in an infantry unit. These are infantry guys. <laughs> and uh, some of the guys you get to know, you get to hear the weird shit that happens between their families. Like, brothers and sisters are real contentious. Sisters pick on each other. There's this big hierarchy inside of Korean families. You know what I mean? Who's the oldest brother? That kind of shit. Yeah. And I, well, you know and what? There's, there's this some rank structure, and they boss each other around. There's some Western families, like, because I yeah. knew people that had siblings that had that, but it's like, thank fucking Christ, I never had that. Like, I have three younger siblings, but they're all delightful, and we all yeah. got along. Um, we all are very similar. We weren't like real competitive or anything like that. It's like, I, my siblings are fucking awesome. I love hanging out with them. Um, Granther says, my wife's mom is my boss. Yeah. See now, my mom is also delightful. Yeah. Um, so she would never dream of bossing you. Yeah. Tom. No. Never. She's not like that. No, her mom is like just another chick. Now that her husband's dead, fucking I was hanging out with her. Yeah. She was, was listening to my advice and stuff. Yeah. It's like, it's okay, you need to get me a dog. He's, she, he's like my dad. <laughs> yeah, you said that. I said, you need to you get said, you a You said, you sound dog. like my dad, she, she said. sounds like my dad, yeah. Yeah. My grandpa. Yeah. Who she, actually, she found. She's in a big old house and out in the country and shit by herself now. And my stepdad just died he not just too died. long ago. I said, you need to get you a gun and you need to get you a big old dog. I think they have a gun already. Yeah. I said, you need to keep that Well, they had a dog, but the dog died. I'm sure that house is full of guns. Yeah, I think it probably is. Bob had all kinds of guns. You know my stepdad. Well, they did have a dog, but the dog passed away, sadly, not too long ago. Casey was the dog. She needs a big old friendly dog. I should maybe go visit her now that I'm thinking about it. My brother went out there today because she texted us. (laughs) Her and all of my siblings are on like a text chain. So it's like every time somebody, you know, we all get the text. And my poor mom yesterday, she was like, um, do you, any of you guys know anything about changing tires on tractors? <laughs> and I was like, um, what do you need to know? And so I was asking Tom about it. But then, like, my other brothers, like, chimed in. And my brother, Eric, who's four years younger than me, he's like, um, I was going to come visit you anyway. I'll come out there and yeah. today. So my brother went out there today and, like, fixed it for her. I think, I think the problem was that she thought that she's, like, she wasn't strong enough to keep the seal on the tire. Yeah. On the tractor tire. But I'm not sure if that was what the problem was. But my brother went out there today and, like... No. But I probably should... I but, feel like we should probably go out there and visit her yeah, soon we because... Need to get, we need to get your mom two big old fucking pit bulls. Because she's out there all by herself. I mean, like, she yeah. knows all the neighbors and yeah. stuff, so it's not like she's out there completely alone, but... Pit bulls are great I do Danes. worry about something her. Big, something the size of a man. Yeah, big, big old fucking Great Danes. Not one, two. Something that's an intimidating defense force. To give her time to go to get to a fucking pistol. Because another thing is it's also just peace of mind. She's an older woman out in the middle of nowhere in a big old fucking house, dark, out in the forest. Yeah, because that's like and, in the middle of the yeah, woods, and, literally. And I, I think me in that situation, it would kind of play on my mind. You know what I mean? Like, 
who, nobody's creeping in any of these fucking windows. Well, and yeah. there's all kind of animals out yeah. there too. There's yeah. like bears and alligators and bears aren't a problem. Though. Well, no, but I mean, um, yeah. bobcats not really They're not a problem, a problem either. either. Really, if anything, would be a problem be an alligator, but. Yeah, and there are a lot of alligators around there. Like, the water is kind of far, but... Human predators. They're not out there where she's at, but there's always that chance. Yeah, you never know. Um, I do worry about Somebody that goes, that's a lone woman in that nice house by herself. You know, that's a target. But that's she lives in deep, deep redneck territory. That's a defense zone to its own. Okay. Nothing but just Trump flags and Confederate flags fucking flying. All, and that's not an exaggeration. And, and like I, I said, there, it's it was not the Confederate flags fucking everywhere. And like I said, it's in the middle of the woods, but there's other yeah. people around. Yeah, there's were, like a few blocks away. There's kind of like a kind of sketchy, some tr- sketchy trailers. Because I always take that wrong turn because the trailers, GPS. Those tra- them. No, those are good trailers. No, I'm just saying. But the, those you know. trailers, when I looked at those trailers, you see what's parked out there is fucking Ford F-150s, Ford Dooley's. Camaros, Mustangs, and fucking Harley Davidsons. You have yeah. to worry about them, <laughs> right? And the thing about it too, <laughs> I'm come help you. <laughs> my mom's well, and my mom, they they live on they well they she now it's just her because my stepdad died like a couple months ago, but um, they had ten acres. Yeah. So when you go out there, it looks like there's nothing, like there's this house and there's just woods, but there are yeah. other houses along that. It's a dirt road. It's not even paved. Um, but there are other houses in line, and then she knows all of those people. So yeah. if she needed help, um, they would come and help her. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. It's a very Christian part of the state, um, but wild. They're wild, too. And uh, moving through there, it's weird. You see Floridians, and you can look at it, especially the guys that I saw at that one fucking Circle K, and I stopped off. There's a whole bunch of fucking Harleys out there. And I was looking at the fucking bikes. And they had like a lot of fucking dream catcher type shit and, and Indian motifs on the fucking bikes. Now I looked at the dudes and you could look at them. You could see they're, they're big. They're like fucking 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, and they're slightly, if you look at them, they're like slightly Seminole. Which is the Indian tribe they have around here. And it's good. those country people are part Seminole, man. Some of them are, yeah. Some of them are, yeah. And... Um, it's just uh, it, and you, it's like Germans and Indians, <laughs> crossbred, big. Yeah, you know, they're they're farmers. Weird, they're yeah. horse breeders. Is what they're doing. And you wouldn't think that anything like that would exist. It's like something out of a movie. But no, that's what this state was made up of. Like I said, everything's more complicated. And Florida, yeah, everything's complicated. Everybody here. is from someplace. Well, except me. I was born here. Well, but... no, they got natives, and then they got other people that yeah. came here, like me. I'm not from here. I'm from basically I'm from, from here. Mississippi. You My know? parents are not yeah. from here, but yeah. I am. I was born here. I was born in Daytona Beach. And then there's a lot of New Yorkers here, and we're friends with a lot of them from the scene that come here. But some of them are like boomers, Gen X fucking people from New York. They stick out like a sore thumb. Uh, <laughs> it's like my cousin Vinny, you know what I mean? Their, their accents really give them away. Uh, but they're, they're all right, you know. Uh, they come here for the for the winter. And a yeah, lot of them have moved down here permanently now. Because it's like, you, you don't have to shovel snow down here. That's right. ever. That's yeah. for sure. I don't even remember. Last time it snowed here was, um, I don't even remember when. 20 the years Oasis, ago? The Oasis. The and you bar- don't have to shovel it. The Barker Bar I hang out at, the fucking Oasis. Has has Canadians like five of them that are regulars, and uh, New Yorkers probably about five or six of them. They're all Republicans. You can tell they moved here permanently. You know they're fucking in there bitching about politics and shit, yelling at the television. They're they're, they're boomers, so they watch TV. They Stop watch TV at the in a TV. bar. That's so obnoxious. It's fucking obnoxious. <laughs> and then they want to see the game on TV, and they're also fucking obnoxious. rooting for northern fucking teams. But they're in the South, so I want to slap them. All right. Well. And the the but the thing and then they they talk about how fucked up New York is, and I'm like, well, if New York's fucked up, why don't you fucking root for a Florida team? You know what I mean? It's just fucking stupid. Anyway. Well, why? And I'm mean, not the only one about that. The fucking warlocks who are outlaw motorcycle gang come in there and boss them around. You know. The fuck, <laughs> well, the thing. Well, I said, I don't you ever fucking. Don't I? This is you better. He said, "Don't you ever fucking play Neil Young again in here?" And they go, "Oh, yes, sir." 
<laughs> they're serious, all right? I like Neil Young. But, but yeah. I like Neil Young. He's all right. But, but, don't but, you ever play Neil Young in here again. But some... Uh, like, yes, sir. Bikers are a little salty about it. Yeah, and bikers so, are fucking still, salty about even it. Even after all of these decades. Do not fucking... You don't come to the South and ever fucking go to that jukebox and request anything from Neil Young. You in, a little scuzzy bi- in. in a little scuzzy biker bar like yeah. that. Like I said, they're still pretty salty about it. They're fucking... Yeah, and that bar right there is Moss Eisley Starport. Those dudes are carrying guns in there, and it's legal. Now, it's not legal to carry in a bar. But you... We got, and rightly so. But we got... We got fucking constitutional carry here. And here's another thing that's weird. Those guys in those outlaw biker gangs, about half of them are ex-cops or ex-army. You know what I mean? If that, that one of the dudes said, you know, you, you can join. Because I served in Korea. He served in Korea. He says, I, I, can, I can put you in. What do you call it? I forgot what he said. He asked me if I wanted to become a pledge that he would fucking nominate me. And I said, ah, I can't really do that right now, man. I don't fucking want the heat. He was like, okay. It's just like that. Yeah. But I don't really want to fucking join a fucking outlaw biker gang. And here's yeah, the I thing. mean, I can't stop you if you really want to, but it's it like. It takes time because you have to pledge. So you got to go to their clubhouses. You well, gotta... what exactly do you have to do? Like, uh, what is it entail? Usually the basic entry shit is to clean all their bikes all the time and fucking clean clubhouses. That doesn't and, sound and you got to work fun, on a it? day job. Sure. But that's just to get, and other shit could happen. That that's what I was more worried about. Like, I'm not worried about cleaning bikes and yeah, shit like that. Yeah, some of that shit that's might your involve, standard. Some right. of that shit might involve breaking laws. That's what I'm. Right. That's what I'm saying. Right. So you know. So it's just kind of like, like I said, you're a grown man. Mm-hmm. You're your own person. Yeah. I'm your wife, but I'm not going to tell you can't do something. <clears throat> But I will say that if you did do that, um, that uh, there might be really bad reasons. Pledging for that shit, I'd probably be gone. I'd probably be fucking lot soak up a lot of hours for about fucking ninety days, three months, probably. Usually. So that would probably make me mad. But like yeah. I, but like I said, you're a grown ass man. I'm not gonna like probably, tell you. And it's like fucking joining a fraternity or something. They might ask you to do something crazy. So That's what I'm saying. Know. It's like yeah. you might have to do like some shit that I probably would not. Uh, like or approve of <laughs> well I think at the entry level it's not anything dangerous it's just fucking shit stupid shit you know? yeah well and I don't want to find us some hookers bring them to the fucking I don't want anything that kind of shit bad to happen to you <laughs> I also don't want you to give me any diseases uh, <laughs> so there's that too yeah um, it, you know if you could avoid it I would rather you did not reason why she's bringing that shit up is because I burned the shit out of my dick Oh, and I have to tell you some shit. Well, okay, you, you tell the story too. It's like, I yeah. this is why I love sidetracks. Yeah, because exactly. it's like some people are like, whoa, TMI. I'm like, no, I love TMI. This is awesome. This is awesome. This is this on. is good YouTube right here. Good YouTube. Been working on that car. Yeah, this is what we think happened. This is our yeah. this is our working theory. Working on that car, fucking. I was <clears throat> trying to figure out why the fuck I was getting this fucking random misfire warning code and I was doing some up I was uprating my fucking battery terminals I fucking cleared off the old battery terminal terminals and put some AC Delco battery terminals that were the heavy duty kind for like which are a lot better than the factory shit so I was doing a bunch of stuff in a car that involved fuel and battery during that time I fucking went in, went to the bathroom yeah take a leak just the downstairs, like, yeah. half bath that's right yeah. by the garage. Later on that day, man, shit started fucking burn, man, and fucking... You know what we're talking about. Yeah, my junk was fucking looking bad. <laughs> I think what happened is I got either fuel or battery acid on my hand, went to the bathroom, was holding it without washing it. Without hands. thinking about without it. Without thinking about it, because I was fucking in a hurry. Yeah. And I cooked my shit, man. Jenny, I was like, Jenny, man, fuck, what the fuck is she's, and I was, and he's like, she's been with me a long time. She knew I didn't pick up any diseases. He, co- I teased him about it, though. I was <laughs> like, because I'd be like, how's your STD, Tom? It's like, man, fuck you, bitch. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so, when did you have time to do that? I don't know. Yeah. But he comes in my office, and he's like, look at this, look at this. And he's just yeah. like, and I'm just like, oh, shit. And I that said, was, yeah. I said, I think that might have been battery acid. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, battery shit. acid or fucking gasoline. Yeah. I don't know what it was. I mean, so, yeah. It's about cleared up. But, I mean, it's yeah. better. It's better now than it yeah. was. But like when you showed me, I was just kind of like, "Holy shit, look at that!" And then, and then, yeah. look like a fucking bad rash. And then, like even before it got better, 
Like, this is how bad he is. He's just kind of like, just like I'm laying there in bed, like, just waking up or whatever. Yeah, I'm going to dive into this. Yeah, he's like, my shit's not really healed up, but it's like, look at, I can't. He couldn't resist it. Yeah. And I was just, and then, and then today he was just like, man, my shit's like burnt. And I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> you said you couldn't resist it. <laughs> That's what happened. Also, Dang. I might've got some contact shit. Too, yeah. So. We got 23 people in here listening to the show. See who's there. So, see you know what I mean? Here. So I, so I don't know. Like I, that's kind of what I'm thinking because yeah, you've been working on the car a lot, and it's yeah. like that sounds like some shit you would do. You'd be like, yeah, yeah I got battery ass, or you didn't think about yeah. it. Yeah, you're just like, hey, I just got to. Well, I had gloves, but I was taking them on and off. Right, and I forget to put the gloves back on, and fucking... because right where the where, right where the fucked up shit was so was where right where, <laughs> right, right where your hand would be. Yeah, Erica's in there. What's up, Erica? I, I fucking showed uh, Jed. The, the pictures I sent you and everything. A couple of those, I actually the the ones yeah. of you as younger, I had never seen those. Yeah, I had some that me. I'd seen most of them. I like got the... some other ones, but I got to take pictures of them. Mm. I got hard copies. You know what I mean? Those are I all took pictures of them using my phone over the years. There's a bunch in that closet right there. There's yeah. a fuck ton of pictures of like of your old pictures. Okay. I don't know how they got in there, but yeah. there. I mean, we just consolidated all our shit and we just threw our shit in boxes and everything. Yeah. So it's like in that closet. I was cleaning it out the other day. And I'm like, dude, I found like a whole cache of like your old pictures, like from when you were a teenager and stuff. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. I don't even know where my. No, I know where mine are. They're in that other closet in that other room. But I got some pictures of me somewhere around here when I'm like 15 or 16, taking heavy metal pictures of myself in a room with circus magazine and shit like I that. I mean, didn't we all? Yeah. If I can try to take cool pictures, none of them came out cool. <laughs> you couldn't take a selfie back then. No, the you really couldn't. The were not fucking built for it. You really couldn't. No, I'm good with Murder Hornet said, I burnt my junk from putting on Icy Hot and touching my junk going to the bathroom. <laughs> do, bro, seriously, do not mess with Icy Hot. Um... I had some one time because, um, you know, I used to play soccer and stuff. So it's like I'd put it on my knees and whatever. And one time I was like, man, my neck kind of hurts. I'm going to put some of this Icy Hot on. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. Um, I put Icy Hot on my neck and I'm just like, ah. I was like, why? <laughs> it like burned. It was so bad. So it's like I can't imagine, um, you know, and I'm sure my neck is not as sensitive as someone's junk would be. So please do not put Icy Hot on your dick. I'm just saying. It's like, it's fine on your knees or elbows or whatever. But it's like, I just put it on my neck and I wanted to die. So I can imagine. I can imagine. Um, but yeah, so so that's been kind of like the last few days. i just been like fucking teasing everybody. I'm like... I was like, bro, you can you can tell me. It's like if I if you gave me some disease and I have to go to the doctor, I'm gonna find out anyway. So it's like you better tell me. You've like been going to the rub and tug and banging some hooker and getting weird diseases and stuff like that. But it's, he doesn't do that. But you know what I mean. It's just like funny. I like to tease him about it. He thinks it's funny. But uh, but yeah. So it, the funny thing about it is he won't <laughs> he won't let it like heal. Like I'm just kind of like you know yeah, it's kind of sucks. We can't do anything, but it's just kind of like, maybe you should not. But he's just like, no, no, no. I'm just like, all right, fine. So I'm just like, it's, it's on you then. Because you apparently couldn't resist it. So you just have to <laughs> suck it up after. <laughs> like I said, shit happened this morning. And then, like, we go out to lunch. Later, we went to get Indian food. And on in the car on the way there, he's like, man, I shouldn't have done that. It's like, man, you fucking, I'm all, I'm burning up. And I was like, that's your fault. I'm like, that's your fault. Not like I didn't enjoy it. I'm just saying. I was just like, that is your fault. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, and they're talking about Vicks Vapor Room. But yeah, that's bad, too. It, it is, yeah. Anything that's like... I've used that on my neck before, and it kind of stings, but not in a bad way. But, like, Icy Hot, I still remember that to this day. And that was, like, fucking years ago that I did that. So I can't imagine what that would feel like, like, on your dick or balls or whatever. I can't imagine. Um... But on my neck, it was like, immediately, I was sorry. So. Hmm. All right, you I'm going to, now drink. I'm going to go pee. Okay, go ahead. And then How I'll I'll get my own drink when yeah. I'm, because I'm getting up anyway. I almost got to add ice to mine. Talking about dicks and balls and. Talking about dicks and balls makes you want to go to the restroom, huh? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, I was just making an observation that that's what we were talking about. Okay. In case you wanted to continue that. Uh, I don't know, I'm done talking about that. <laughs> Victor's in there. What's up, Victor? He just made it in. 
every time Victor shows up, uh, Victor's going to tell me what, what turned him gay. What are we drinking? We're drinking um, rum and coke. Bacardi. Bacardi and coke. Now, Pookie's over here fucking with evil Spock. I got dark side Spock or fucking... Uh, you guys haven't seen this. Maybe some of you guys haven't seen this. My friend Sophie sent this to me. Yeah. That's Mirror Spock from the Mirror Universe. See? He's got the beard and everything. I keep him over here. For some reason, the cat comes in and tries to rub on his leg. Ah. All right. Tell you what, I was listening to Judas Priest the other day. Listen to that song, Beyond the Realms of Death. That shit is almost making me gay. Almost. It's about a leather daddy. He has so much willpower that he just froze. And he wouldn't interact with people and then he died. He fucking goes into the damn goes into the damn afterlife to be free. Leather Daddy had so much discipline that he killed himself by freezing. Just standing still. He went comatose. I said they had to feed him and everything. There's discipline there. And he fucking, he died so he can be with his own kind on, in, you know, in the afterlife. Dude, he, 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 the leather daddy had so much fucking willpower that he willed himself to die to be with other le leather daddies in the afterlife, in another dimension. That's oh, some macho shit there. I almost went gay. Did you? Almost. And almost I missed it. Gay. Almost went gay. I missed it. Yeah. I was going to take you with me. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to gay together. I like that. Where are you going now? Oh, okay, he's getting another drink. All right. I was like, he just got back. Yeah, Orl says, Pookie. Yeah, I just, I went into the bathroom and then, like, I saw her. She was outside in the hallway. And I'm like, she was trying to take me someplace, but I'm not really sure where. She's always, she kind of sits there and stares at you. And then you look at her and you're like, hey, Pookie. And she's like, Meow. and I'm just like, what? And then she's like, come on. And then she takes you someplace, but then you're not really entirely sure, like, what she wants you to do. Yeah, you get there and she just stops. It looks around. She forgets. Yeah. Erica says, what are you guys drinking? Uh, rum and Coke. I already told her. Rum and Coke yeah. today. Victor says, I'm not gay, Tom. Those dudes make me let them suck me. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? Okay. All right. That's fine. They I can't, make him? I can't. Yeah. They make him let him suck him? Yeah. Yeah. I can't believe that you went gay and like I wasn't here to witness. No, I didn't say I went gay. Oh, you were. Uh, okay. You I almost, almost went, did. You I almost went I resisted. Gay. Yeah. Well, thank you for resisted, waiting. Resisted. For me. Yeah, because I want to go with you on that journey. What was in the uh, in the afterlife? Oh, all right. You didn't hear the whole story. No, I didn't. I was yeah. in the bathroom. I was listening to a, a Judas Priest song called "Beyond the Realms of Death." Like I heard Judas Priest, but that yeah. was about all I heard. About a leather daddy that fucking had so much discipline that he willed himself to die so he could be with other leather daddies in the afterlife. In heaven. Leather daddy land. Leather daddy land. <laughs> yeah, I don't know it's, if that's heaven. It's heaven cooler than heaven. heaven. It's like it's like Heaven Studio Fifty Four, like a really cool nightclub. Or it's something. a mixture of fucking heaven and hell. See, that seems yeah. to me to be the ideal situation yeah. because it's like heaven, a hell you enjoy. Heaven seems like really boring. Be too boring, yeah. So you know, <laughs> uh, the Phantom asked if you had any new robots to add to your collection. I haven't collection. bought any robots in a long time. Yeah, because he used to buy a lot of robots. He's yeah. got a shit ton. Yeah. of robots. Yeah, my but, friend was making them. Yeah, you haven't bought any in a long time. Right, yeah. I remember when you were like getting in all yeah. the new ones when they came out. I still didn't get um, King Gory. He made King Gory, but I didn't buy it. It was like 300 bucks. Still, I mean, there, a I lot of a, work goes into those. What's that? A lot of work goes into yeah, those. Yeah, and they made very few of them. It was like limited. But my friend in Japan was making them. He had a company called HL Pro. And he was French, but he married a Japanese woman who lived over there and he grew up watching early anime from the 70s, kind of like I did. And uh, when he moved over there later on, he got the licensing to uh, make toys. But he was making die-cast metal, fully articulated robots that were all kind of hand-painted, 
kind of like the classics that you had in the 70s, except they were real high tech. And uh, they were expensive. They were fun, though. I got all the good shit. I got to get King Gory, though, which was in a series called... <clears throat> in France, it was called Gold Rock. In uh, Japan, it was called UFO Grandizer. Which it was a it was a cool story about a guy kind of like Superman, a, 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 a humanoid alien that came to came to Earth to defend Earth from an alien attack, and he stole the aliens. Uh, they stole an enemy robot from the aliens that destroyed his planet. It was a secret robot called fucking Grandizer. He had special powers of his own, but he could also get inside that robot and kick ass. The robot had a UFO to get inside too. Cause you know it's pretty cool. <laughs> but he was fascinated. Uh, Jamie, that was his name, or James. He was he was French. He grew up watching that whole fucking series, and they got he they got the series in France and in, uh, translated into French, and we didn't get it in the U.S. I was watching the Japanese version of it, trying to figure out what it all meant. They didn't even have subtitles. They didn't have subtitles. You could just make your own story. I could, just kind of, I could understand <laughs> what was happening. You know, when you're a kid, right. you could kind of follow it. I was watching it on U, uh, UHF 22, which is the Japanese channel out of Los Angeles. And I was living in L.A. at the time. And uh, not only did Jeremy make Grandizer, who was the good guy, he made a bunch of the enemy robots to that series. And one of them was called King Gory which meant King Gorilla. And it's because they couldn't, the Japanese couldn't get license for fucking King Kong. King Kong, sure. So they had one of the main bad guys towards the end of the series was was a cybernetic giant gorilla that the aliens got a hold of. They got a hold of a gorilla and they increased its size and then they turned it into, they put armor on it and made it slightly cybernetic. I mean, why wouldn't you, really? Yeah, you're right. And they let it go. And it climbed up. And Why wouldn't they? Cli- really? It climbed up on top of a big building and everything. And fucking Grandizer had to fight it. Not King Kong. You know, hi. Just like King Kong. <laughs> Please don't sue. Yeah, well, he made the action figure. Dude, it's. I think it was probably about six, six, seven inches tall. Fully articulated. It had a bunch of diecast metal. All their shit's really nice, yeah, by the way. Diecast metal. They're not paying plastic. us for a plug or anything, but and all their shit's real really nice. And it had real. It had fur on it. Yeah. It didn't have plastic that was coated to look like fur. It was actual it had fur. fur. Yeah, it. yeah. You can get it on you. You can get it off uh, eBay. About three fifty. Yeah, all. I mean, you have a bunch of their stuff, and their yeah. shit is really it's nice. Expensive. It's it's expensive, but it's worth it. It's really really nice. Yeah, they're collectors' items. You take them out, you look at them for a little while, mess with them, put them back in the box, and you just store. And they them. only do limited 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 editions. shit. Yeah, they make a few hundred of them. That's it. And that's it. They don't make them anymore. Um, somebody said. Ira said, um, haven't seen Spock in a while. Yeah, I brought Spock. Spock is right that, did you bring yeah, him over? Yeah, I brought him out a minute ago. To, like, peek into the... No, yeah, it was just showing showing him what Pookie was messing with. He was, Pookie went up there and started rubbing on his leg. She likes to rub on his leg. Yeah. Yeah, Oracle said, uh, Freya, one of her cats, making cute kitty noises earlier. The yeah. weird thing about it is that Bambi, our younger cat, she's, um, cause you know, I used to see videos of cats, um, making that chittering noise at birds, like out the window. I never saw, I saw Pookie doing that one time, but Pookie does not seem to be that interested. She looks out the window and stuff, but she doesn't seem to give a shit about birds or whatever. But Bambi does that all the time. Like I'll be laying in bed in the morning, it's six, seven o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden I hear (laughs) And then I look and she's up like that, like looking out there and there's like a bird like out, cause out of our bedroom window, there's like a little bit of roof and sometimes there's like a bird sitting on the corner and she'll just be out there like chattering at it. It's super funny. I, so I need some like, I need to start making videos of Bambi because we don't have any of her. And it's like one, the chattering shit is hilarious and the flopping behavior because Pookie doesn't really do that. Pookie's not a flopper. Yeah. Bambi is a flopper. You know? Yeah. And it's and it's really funny. Erica says she likes Sailor Moon. Yeah, Sailor Moon came along later. And that was, that was a girl's anime. That's for girls. Yeah, girls liked it. <laughs> you haven't seen it? I've seen. I'm like, I, I'm aware of it. I've yeah. never really been all that into anime. Yeah. To be honest with you. 
Well, they had they had boys anime and girls anime. I know. I like. They have the, all kind of anime. Yeah, I, I liked Grandizer, and I liked um, Getter Robo. I like Getter Robo too. I like the theme song of that for yeah. sure. That's my favorite theme song of and all then, of the. And then, yeah, and then like Getter Robo G. That was uh, now it started to get a little late after the seventies. Some of Getter Robo started to get too bullshitty. I did see some of the manga from Getter Robo. It was good too. And then uh, I liked I liked Mazinger Z and Great Mazinger Z. Or uh, no, it was Mazinger Z and Great Mazinger. They're good too. I got matter of fact, Mazinger Z and Great Mazinger and fucking um, Grandizer. I have twelve inch tall plastic, mm-hmm. fully articulated ones. I had to bring one of them things out and show it to them. Are there Probably, any boxes? I yeah, I don't even know if you've ever really shown them. No, I never showed them. They're good. You have, a, you have a massive. You have a massive collection. I'll get one of. I'll go get. I'll get. Um, I'll get uh, Grandizer. He has a massive collection. Yeah. They're like just in the living room. They're like on a big bookshelf or whatever. But it's like he doesn't buy them the way he used to because he used to like every month like there'd be a new one that come out. He's like, oh, I gotta get this. I gotta get that. But he hasn't bought any for a long time. Jeff Yard said, trying to be a good Catholic, have bean and cheese enchiladas for dinner with no meat and red wine. Eh, All right. I had butter chicken today. Sorry. <laughs> I just brought out I don't, I don't do the Catholic thing. There's Grandizer's box. Which I love that box, by the yeah. way. That's a really All nice. All of them come in these black boxes. So the 12-inch figures. Let me get Grandizer out of here. Uh, so he comes out. <clears throat> comes with a bunch of accessories and stuff. See, that is like super cool. Look at that shit. Out. Look at that shit. Don't get little fingerprinties all over him. Murder Hornet I said. Seen this in years. I know. Well, you can't like take them out. It's like they're too nice to like touch. You know what I mean? It's kind of like I have a really good, like I have a really cool ceramic Tom Servo from Mystery Science Theater, and I don't ever want to touch it. Hey, granddad. Look how nice that is. Yeah. He's fully and he's all articulated. Fully right articulated. You can move his little um. You can move his little waist around, right? Yeah, uh, no, but his legs. That was like everything can move. Yeah. Some of them you can move their waist around, but I don't know. Like, look how fucking cool that is. Yeah, you can move his head and shit like that. Yeah, and I got all his weapons are in there. Yeah, it's super cool. He's yeah. Got a bunch, yeah, he's got a bunch of those. But this one's a plastic one. And he's hand painted. Yeah. He's got a bunch that are metal. Yeah, the metal ones are more expensive. Yeah. Oh, love it. Japanese is shit and 70s is shit. <laughs> this was the Japan's version of Superman. This is basically the same story. Except Superman could fight on his own or he could get in this and fight. Like a big mecha suit. He's little. You know, or not little. Um, well, he's Grandizer small. Is small to... uh, yeah, uh, this thing is so big. Grandizer would be in his. Or, or He'd be in me. his head. His name was Duke Fleed. Yeah, that was like that was like he fucking, sits in his head and he operates. Sit in his head. Head. Right, yeah, and he would fl- he he stole this robot from the enemies that destroyed his planet. It was their best one. It was a new one that was coming. And he stole it and they kept trying to get it back and make things that were better than this one, but they couldn't. Why? Like Japan has such a culture in their entertainment of giant robots and people getting in giant robots and like operating them in the 70s they bought the license to superman and spider-man and they had those two characters but in japan they had robots that they got into because you need a giant robot i mean Like I said, if you could have a giant robot that you could just like yeah. sit in and like manipulate, why so wouldn't you do that? It wasn't anime; though. it was Sentai, which was live action, like like the Power Rangers. Like the Power Rangers, yeah. Right. So you'd have a guy running around in a, in a fucking Superman suit or a fucking <laughs> Spider Man suit, and then when shit gets bad, he'd fucking jump inside a robot. Because the Japanese looked at Spider Man, goes, "Yeah, it looks cool. Where's this robot?" Mean, he's so little. He, he's just this. No, he'd get stomped. Lame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lame. <laughs> Which I get it. I get that. Because, like I said, if you could sit in a giant robot and like just crush everyone underneath, like yeah. why wouldn't you do that? That is a much better idea, clearly. Uh, the Phantom said, and this is a little while back. 
It would be awesome if you guys got Tom's buddy Brian Hackett on the show to talk Bone Tomahawk. Yeah. Just saying since he worked on the film. I was just, actually, he just messaged me today because he wants us to do a show about, like, a serial killer, like a male nurse. They made a movie called A Good Nurse, and he's like, man, this is such a good movie. And it's like, you guys should do a show about this guy. So I wrote it down, so I'll put it in the poll and see how that goes. But, I mean, we did a show a while back about nurses that kill a bunch of people, like doctors and nurses that kill, because that's a whole different, like, angels that's of mercy. That's probably Hackett asking that question. No, it's not. It's not? Okay. It's the Phantom asking it's that Phantom. question. That might be Hackett. For well, me. he told me yeah. that he got banned from YouTube oh, he did? forever. Forever, huh? Okay, they're banning Hollywood people. Well, I don't... He was alternative Hollywood. And I mean, I kind of feel like it probably... I don't know if you can make another... Me and another... Brian went to military school together in Signal Hill, California. Back in their very early 80s. We came out of that same school that like... Uh, that science fiction movie called Soldier that had fucking Kurt Russell in it. It was a school like that. Except we didn't, they didn't fucking show us dogs eating fucking wild boars that would have been even better <laughs> yeah 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 that you know but um yeah we went to that school which was a cool school we liked it that's before i went off to brazil but uh brian ended up being in hollywood and uh worked with kurt russell quite a bit so it's funny because i was sitting there talking about Russell, and he goes oh yeah and he sent me a bunch of pictures of him and kurt russell and you were like, oh, so yeah. jealous. You were like, yeah, yeah. <gasps> you yeah. like that. I know how you do. I ought to have Kurt on. Get Kurt to come on. Let's get Kurt Russell Sh on. The show it. probably isn't big enough. Kurt, Kurt will probably, probably come not. on, though, anyway. I mean, like I said, we've talked about, it's kind of a pain in the ass to have guests, guests on, for sure. Yeah. Like, not not our friends, like Anastasia, yeah. obviously. She rocked. She yeah. was, like, kind of worried about it. Like, after the show, she's like, did I do okay? And I was like, oh, my God, you were fucking awesome. Yeah. She just like talked to, and that was awesome. What sucks is having the 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 uh, the, the, the technology link up. Yeah, having it's to kinda, do like you know yeah, ha having to do shit like we're there tricky. somewhere else. Like it's much easier when they're here, obviously. Yeah. But um, but yeah, because we've talked about like lots of times, like oh man, we should have like Jeffrey Combs or something like that on. Because yeah. that how awesome. I'd love would to that have be? Jeffrey Combs on. I would love. We to haven't have had guests in a long time. We no, had some we good really. guests on. A long time ago. A long time ago. I mean, we had the Angry Gay Pope on a couple times. Yep. Two or three Steve times. Mara. Steve, Steve Mara Mara was on. on. Yeah. Um, uh, fucking um, Robert, Dr. Robert Price has been on. Uh, the guy who ended up buying Summer Wind. That's right. He was on. Yeah, yeah. I tried to get the girl from um, Paranormal Witness, that the, the Poltergeist episode called Oh, Cat. yeah. Because you, yeah, cause you talked, talked to her, to her like online her, for a long time. She didn't want to come on. But that's, I mean, you know, she I can see on. that. And she sent me some cool shit from that case. Uh, she had a uh, an audio message that the poltergeist sent to her on her phone because she had a lot of phone stuff, and it was just a fucking a recording of kitty 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 kitty. It was pretty creepy. Yeah, kitty 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 kitty. It was pretty creepy. Yeah. I'm not gonna That's lie. all the poltergeist said was kitty kitty and cat. It wrote yeah. cat and kitty and said kitty 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 kitty, and threw things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The pull on a door. She's trying to pull the door shut. The yeah. Phantom said, "Damn, what episode was the owner of Summerwind?" Because I got to watch that ASAP. It's on there. I, it, I mean, it was a long time ago. Yeah, we did a couple well, shows about Summerwind. We did yeah. one where we were just talking on. about the haunting episode, and then he reached out to me mm -hmm. and said, "Hey, like I, he either bought or he had done an investigation there." Yeah. Um, and so I was like, "Hey, okay, <sighs> like we can be on the show." So, it, but it was a long time ago. I Bringing guests remember. back on might liven the show up a bit. Maybe, like I said. Look at that technology, see if it's gotten easier to use, because that's been years. Yeah, I mean, we could probably do it. Probably a lot easier than it used to be. We could probably do it. And we got a better connection now. And like I said, we could probably reach out to like people that we thought were interesting, like if we wanted to talk about, especially if we were doing a specific topic. Yeah. And they were kind of, you know what I mean. I could easily have Brian on. He wants to come on. Yeah, that would be super. And Actually, then, that would probably yeah. be good because people could like ask yeah. him about. Because like I said, if you don't know, like our friend Brian Hackett, mostly yeah. Tom's friend, but like I talked to him yeah. too. But um, he worked on. Well, he specifically worked on Bone Tomahawk with. Um, he worked Kurt on Dragged Russell. Across Concrete. Ja dragged Across Concrete, like yeah. he worked on that too, which we've yeah. reviewed. So yeah, so he knows a lot about the ins yeah. and outs. He, of... he uh, was he worked for a bit for Daily Wire. Um, I think he still works for Daily Wire. But he also would just work for, you know, any, any cool production. That's what he, he did sound. He was a sound engineer. 
and he uh, worked with, worked on a lot of Kurt Russell movies. I think he worked on, I think he worked on fucking Escape in New York Part Two. I think, I think it was that one. I didn't even know that existed. Escape is yeah, Escape from New York Part Two was called what? Escape from uh, L.A. Oh, Escape from L.A. Oh, yeah, okay. I think he worked. Oh, on that one. Okay. Yeah. That's why I blocked it. From I think my it was memory. that one. That's why. <laughs> it's not that bad. It's okay. It, it's not as kind of serious as the first one, if you ask me. Yeah, it's me. a little bit cheese ball. A little yeah. bit cheese ball. Like I said, they did lean into it, which I respect that, but... They wanted to go for a different tone. Not really the right decision. I wouldn't have gone in that my, tone. Yeah, Even not though that was way... I think either. Russell wanted it to do it that way. I think they kind of thought it was which, fucking tongue-in-cheek a little bit. It was almost kind of like a satire. But you could go back and watch it. it it's not bad. It has some cool shit in it. It's better than... Now, like when I watch it now, yeah, yeah. like when I watch it now, I don't hate it as much as I hated it at the time. It's like a cartoon. It's like a car. It's like a comic book movie. It seems more self-aware. Yeah, I would have done it that way though. I would have done it. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have either. Yeah, I would have done it. But whatever. I mean, you know. Yeah. I didn't make the shit, so. Uh, It will never really be able to recreate it, man. Well, that's true. They they tried to redo it. They did redo it, kind of. There was um, there's a movie that I have that has who is the guy that played uh, Wayland in uh, Prometheus? Um oh shit. Guy Pierce. Yeah. Yeah. There's a Guy Pierce movie where he goes to space and there's a prison in space and they send him up in there to save some hostages. I don't remember the name of the movie, but what it was was. It was actually Escape from Space. It was Escape from New York Part 3. But they I, they changed the name. And he's playing a character kind of like, kind of like Snake. Technically, Plus. you can't really escape from space. He was escaping from space. He We're was in space, in space and trying to escape from it. To come back to Earth. Sure. It was, uh, what was the name of it? De- De- Demolition? No, fuck. I have it. I've only seen it a couple times. You have like four million movies. Yeah, I have it. I just forgot the name of it. And I liked the movie. It seemed very familiar. And then somebody later on says, yeah, that was going to be like fucking Escape from New York Part 3. But like they retooled but it. they retooled like, it. Sure. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's like you write a script and it's like, hey, this is pretty good. But it's like, yeah. can we do this, that, and the other yeah. thing? And it's like, you know what I mean? It's going to be like that. Well, once I watched it thinking that, oh, yeah, that that's supposed to be kind of like Snake Plissken. And it makes a lot more sense. Right. I forgot the name of it. You guys might know what it is. It's a Guy Pierce movie. You'll probably you think drop of it. it in the damn. You'll pro- I I know what you're talking about, but I can't think of it either. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just laughing at Victor saying, "Quit calling me Jeezy Crazy." I see you. I see your um, Eddie Izzard like uh, reference there. Um, <laughs> Jeezy Crazy. Uh, Jeffy Art says, "Don't feel too bad, Jenny. I had corned beef last Friday." Well, like I said, I'm not a Catholic, so I don't really like adhere to the whole weird. I just eat whatever, whenever. Yeah. I feel like it. So, but the thing about it, like, we went to Fifth Element today, which is an Indian yeah. buffet. Yeah. In, it was good today. It's in Lake Mary. Yeah. And it's not a huge buffet. It's not like, you know, when you go to Koi Wan or you go to Ichiban or something like that, That's and there's like a like hundred things. Yeah, yeah. There's like a hundred things. This one has maybe 20 things. Maybe. Some of it's desserts. Yeah. And some of it's just kind of like soup and stuff. So they don't have a huge amount of things. It's just like a tiny like L-shaped thing. And they have different shit like every time you go. But um, that is a really good, I mean, that's a really good restaurant. Everything they have is like, they didn't have any paneer dishes today, which kind of bummed me out because their paneer dishes are awesome. But I'm going to say, although their meat dishes are good and they had butter chicken today, which I had never seen them have before. And that was actually, it wasn't, as nearly as good as yours. It was still good, though. I mean, your butter chicken Only is delicious. The problem with the place is that their but, steam table doesn't keep stuff hot enough. That's all it is. But I will say that their vegetarian dishes are overwhelmingly better than their meat dishes. But their meat dishes are good, too. But it's like sometimes I'll go and I'll have like a little bit of each thing because I'm like, is this good? Is this good? But always their vegetarian stuff is better. And anything they make with like paneer is out of this world. I love all their paneer stuff. But... Today, like I said, they had butter chicken today for some reason, and I was like, "Holy shit!" That's the first time I ever saw had like that saw that they had that. Yeah, that um, butter chicken was good, man. And it it was good, but like I said, it wasn't. It was like maybe half as good as not even, maybe twenty five percent as good. It was still good, but yours is like off the chain. 
your butter shaking is like really really good I'm trying to find that guy pierce movie yeah what the fuck is the name of that i can't believe you remembered his name before i did <laughs> yeah erica says cool robot i collect everything game of thrones in figures yeah. mostly funko pops the only f- i really wish that i had more money to like collect some funko pops because some of those are really cool i have an exorcist one like of reagan like in her possessed state which somebody sent me which is awesome and i have one i think i have one of daryl from walking dead that i got a long time ago Oh, and I think, do I have one of Elvira? I feel like I have one of Elvira somewhere. Oh, and I have ones of Duran Duran that yeah. um, that uh, yeah. Sophie sent me. She sent me all of the Duran Duran ones from the, of the original lineup of Duran Duran from the 80s. She sent us that, and I think we also have one that's, didn't she send you one too? It was, it was either Billy Idol or... Yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. I think she sent us a Billy Idol one. Yeah, fucking uh, Lemmy. Yeah, and I think we might have a yeah. Lemmy one, too, somewhere. But Man, the, so the Duran Duran ones were right up there. I'm looking for it, and it's like it's not in here. But I know I know he was in it. You made it up. Mm. <laughs> no, I know he was in here. <laughs> they're just, uh, they're trying to hide it like it wasn't any good. Ain't that something? It's not included. But I know he was in it. I'll find it. I can find it later. I'm looking. Ben says Funko Pops are a money pit. I mean, they kind of are, but yeah, they're, they're so. They're, I mean, they're so cool though. There's they, so many of them. I mean, they whoever is doing their marketing stuff, they're fucking geniuses, man. Because it's like they come they up still with. Sell. Yeah, and they're not horribly expensive, so it's yeah. like a low buy-in yeah, for collectors. That. And it's like, and they'll come up with like some obscure fucking shit. I went into, Fye. Like, the mall that we would go to, like, in Altamont Springs, where our movie theater was, they had an FYE, and they had a whole wall of Funko Pops. Oh, and the, I found it. It was called Lockout. Oh, that's right. We watched that. Yeah. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, Lockout. I remember that. Yeah, I saw it, and I was going, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, Phantom got it. Okay, the film's definitely called Lockout. Yeah. Lockout. That's yeah, it. that that shit. That was good, actually. Yeah, you that got, that got. is fucking... Escape from New York Part 3. That's right. Yeah. We watched that. Yeah, it was good. After you figured that out. Yeah. Yeah. But um, they even had Funko Pops from, like... Do you guys remember, like, the old, um, like, Bugs Bunny cartoons? Like, the opera ones? Like, What's Opera Doc and all of those where they, like, Spear and Magic Helmet and all of that? They had a Funko Pop of Bugs Bunny... In the in the female Viking thing, like with the helmet and the braids and everything like that, I'm like, oh my god, I kind of really want that. And then they had one of like Elmer Fudd in the in the outfit, and I was just like, you guys, every single like, no matter how obscure the fucking character is, they're gonna make a Funko Pop of that shit. Because like I said, you know, they're probably like cheap to make, and they sell them for how much are Funko Pops now? I don't even know. I haven't bought one in a while, but they're not expensive. Right, they're under twenty dollars, right? Yeah, they're they're like maybe I think they might be under ten. That's what I was thinking. I thought they were like super cheap. Like like I said, I haven't bought one in a long time. Like I've had a lot of them sent to me like as presents, but whenever I go and look at them, I'm like, oh, like I want this one and that one and the other thing. But like so, no matter how obscure the character is, it's like they can afford. Apparently, the um, it's so cheap to make them that it's like we're just gonna take this tiny scene from this one movie that everybody likes and we're just going to make this character out of it. Holy crap. I mean, and that seems to be a really successful, I mean, good on them. That's a successful uh, business model because people are picking them up. And the, like I said, with the FYE, which is still open, by the way, at the Altamont Mall, they have a whole, the whole back wall is Funko Pops. And my I kind of... My Saudi Arabian friend. <laughs> He's, uh... Sending me links to Instagram, showing all these girls fucking booty shaking and shit. And he goes, he goes, damn, all these girls are from Florida. And I said, <laughs> sorry. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking Florida is the ass capital of the fucking internet, actually, the world. It, it is. Perhaps. Isn't that funny? Well, you were having a whole discussion with him about this whole. Yeah. I was watching because yeah. okay. 
So I'm like... I had discussions with him because we do cultural exchange. Cultural exchange. Yeah, he, he's in Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Last he's, night... He's in the new Saudi Arabia. He's a young guy. Because I'm like, yeah. here's a just randomly... I've been rewatching because I know Stranger Things um, season five is coming out soon. So I've been rewatching all the old seasons. So I was watching all the old seasons. So I'm sitting there in bed. And Tom's like sitting there like talking and talking like on the tablet. Yeah. And he tells me, um, you know, I'm talking to my friend in Saudi Arabia about this, that, and the other. And they, like they did, um, you know, voice messages. Yeah, Sam, voice messages. So he was like playing me the voice messages. Yeah, he's got a real cool accent. Where yeah. they were trying to explain. Yeah. He sounded like something off a fucking Hollywood movie. <laughs> well, they were trying to explain. Because, okay. Mating practices in Saudi Arabia. See, Which sounds how like. get married. Oh my God, it's so complicated. Yeah. It's so complicated. Yeah, there was this girl on Instagram. She's got fucking amazing proportions. She's in Saudi Arabia. She's all covered up, but you can just see she's built like an hourglass. And fucking, there's dudes talking. You can see translations are just commenting on her build, but there's she's writing something in the video itself. So I send it to Saad, and I go, "What? What the hell is this video? Like, what is, what she, is that? What mean? is she talking about?" Right. And she goes, "She's a matchmaker." All right. And she's talking about she's got a girl that wants to get married as a second wife. You know what I mean? And she's looking for certain specifications. He says that they don't have dating apps there, so they use a system of matchmakers. Which is kind of like a dating app, but, like in, dating app. but in human form. Yeah, so a lot of shit started making sense when I was seeing her walking around. Because she has, like, billboards with horse emblems and weird shit behind her in her house. And she, she's running a matchmaking service. Okay. And she's trying to find certain guys that fit certain statistics. And she's got a girl with certain other t statistics. And you can have your mom contact her. And your mom can meet the girl, and then you can meet her in a little introduction that lasts a, an hour or so. And if you like her, you can marry her. All right? And then she gets a commission for making the introduction. That's what was happening. This just seems so he way too convoluted. Yeah, and, he, and he's saying it was a certain kind of wedding that the girl was looking for. And you can see the girl... Little video of the girl, but you can't see her face full on. But you can see she's cute, uh, and it's kind of from a distance though. Another one with a fucking hourglass figure. If you ever did any time in Saudi Arabia or in the, in the Middle East, I was in Egypt for a year. Arabic men like big fine. They like big women that little waist, big booty. They're tits and ass guys. You know that they're like that. I feel like that's pretty universal. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so <laughs> I don't know. I was just saying they do kind of show some stuff. I'll show you guys the matchmaker. Um, yeah, because he kept she, looking at this thing and he's just like, "What yeah. is this?" And he's just like, "Yeah, so, I couldn't understand what the videos were." What is she doing? Yeah. <laughs> like he was asking yeah. him about it, and then like I said, he played me the audio yeah. of him trying to explain it. Like, well, he explained it really well. I yeah. thought. I got. It. I was like, "Oh, okay. I got you. I got you." It's just weird to me because, like I said, we're Westerners and like the shit doesn't work like that. Yeah. And it's just kind of. Like, I'm like, man, this seems like so complicated. This is the girl that was looking for what was called a second marriage, where if you're already married and you want a second wife, she was interested. This one here, all right. And she's writing down the. the he she's got her up for bid, and you know, <laughs> basically, okay. And he said that most women want to be the first wife. Well, obviously. Okay. Most guys that have a second wife, the first wife doesn't know about it. So the second wife has to be in on the deception. You get the second wife. She's cool about not contacting the first wife. So complicated. That's what it is. Okay. Why do you want to make your life harder than it already is? Well, it, I think I think over there the situation in Saudi is is that the second wife is more kind of like the the more fun wife. It's like the mistress. It's like the mistress, so she doesn't have as much responsibility as the first wife, but she has a lot of the uh, a lot of the perks of the first. Maybe more perks than the Ma first. Wife. Well, probably yeah. Uh, okay. Like I said, it's kind of the equivalent of people over here that marry a woman. Yeah. 
and that woman has to like take care of their stupid ass but then yeah. like they have a mistress on the side that's a lot more quote unquote fun <laughs> yeah um so it's like that but it's like legally yeah. sanctioned yeah which okay this is the matchmaker this is the one that's making all the matches okay uh, amazing proportions, I mean, not that, natural. That is a fantastic booty. Yeah, that that that's that's a that's a Brazilian butt lift. It got to be. But even he was giggling. He's going like, "Yeah, that shit there isn't natural." But that's the matchmaker. No, it's not. But it's no. That's okay. Yeah, she's showing it off. She's that's okay. Yeah. So I was just interested like in booties. how they do things over there. Yeah. You're not looking for tips. You looking for like a second wave or something? No, no. But I was just, I didn't know what I was looking at. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, like, I didn't, I didn't understand what I was, was looking at. When he was explaining it, I was yeah. like, wow, that sounds really complicated. Yeah, this is all. As, the... as, as soon as somebody starts explaining it, I'm just like, my eyes start to glaze I over. thought it was a hooker. You know what I mean? It's like, what is she, she selling it? What's the deal there? I said, I thought you could get in trouble for that. He goes, no, 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 no. That's a matchmaker. Oh, uh, Okay. You know, so that's what. Yeah, that's why Tom was asking. He's like, yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. understand what it is that this. Yeah, woman is I thought you could get in big trouble selling. for that. And she's like, and he's like, no, 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 no. She's it's not like that. Ent yeah, enticing guys. I listen to it, and he. This chick, she has this chick, and you can't meet that chick. You got to have your mom meet her. Right. All right. That's and then if your blowing. mom thinks it's okay, then you blowing. can meet her. Right. right. It's weird because like I was talking to this dude. Oh, this was a long time ago. Yeah. But I was talking to some dude in India. Yeah. And it's like, and I know that. I remember this story. Yeah, like not all of India yeah. is like this, but it's just like they, this dude in particular, um, I don't know what region of India he was from because I know India is enormous. But it's just kind of like they didn't have any concept. Well, they did have a concept of like living together before you were married. Yeah. Like because when I said that we moved in together, um, you know, probably like a year after we started, maybe not even a year, but like a, a year-ish, like after we started dating. And then we just didn't get married for until recently. Um, like he didn't understand the concept of living with someone that you weren't married to and having yeah. sex with them and you weren't married with them. And yeah. it's just like, that's, t and to us, it's like nobody cares. And he yeah, didn't, an and that blew his fucking mind. Yeah. That like people did not, did um, that weren't second. scandalized buy it or like weren't and i was just like no it's normal yeah and that kind of like blew his mind yeah. that people just like live together and we're in a relationship well, it's normal and in the west yeah it it's is normal, normal like nobody east. thinks not, anything about that, it that's not normal in india either yeah and hindus like i said i that, didn't realize but hindu is about half half hin, hin, hindu and like half muslim i think it's about half muslim and then it kind of fades into pakistan which is almost all it's all muslim and neither one of those or like that, and and f I heard that's a fucking rough place to be a woman, especially if you're a poor, well, if you're a obviously poor, if you're a poor woman. It's I like, would not. No. For you could give, you could offer me all kind of money, and yeah. I would absolutely never, ever go live there. If no, you're thank if you're you. a rich wo Indian no, woman, you. you're probably you're not going to be there. You're going to be in the United States. I know rich Indian women that are here. One of them, Nancy, she's at the fucking club. All right. Yeah. And she she's into like death metal and stuff. Yeah, she wants nothing to do with it. Nope. <laughs> she's like, fuck yeah. that shit. <laughs> the ones are just doctors and stuff, and they're raising kids here, and they have married like a. Well, my doctor for know, a long time yeah. was was a very nice. Yeah, Indian and they, they they want nothing to do with India. They don't want to go back to India. They don't want to, they 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 are they. Th that's one of the groups that moves here and immediately Americanizes. Immediately. I, you can't blame them. Like I said, it's like um, cultures like that are really good for dudes. Um, for women, not so much. I don't it's, even think it's good for dudes. It's really not fun for them. And it's just like if they can get the fuck out, if they have the money to get the fuck out, then or the education to get the fuck out, then yeah. A lot I of those can places, see that. Women imagine those places being good for dudes. They're not. Well, I'm just saying that it would be worse for women than it was for dudes. Most of those dudes are incels. They 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 don't have oh. the money to get married. That's true. They everywhere. don't ever see a woman. A lot of those ones, and then they spend their whole life working in toil in some fucking mine shaft somewhere, and all the rich guys have all the women, and then they leave country with them. You know what I mean? So no. Well, in a no. way, it's probably like well, yeah, like that kind of shit is not great for everybody, no. and that's another thing that why like dudes that are americans 
and whine about, you know, that are incels and stuff. Um, why don't you move over there and see how that goes for you? At yeah. least here, you have an opportunity. Yeah, you can hook up. If you Not over are, there. if you weren't such a whiny bitch, yeah. like maybe people would like you. Yeah. And would hang out with you. Um, but over there, not really. Like, you don't really have any opportunity. I ought to make a whole to... fucking training course for dudes. On how, how you probably should. Bitch. You probably and, and, should. And, and, and how to be, how to be good with, with, with women. All right. Uh, the first thing to do is that you can't be a piece of shit. You got to fucking get in the gym, build character, go do some shit. It, it doesn't come well, easily. That's the thing. If, if you... you're average, women aren't looking at average. They're looking at above average. It's a competitive situation. Well, the problem being is that dudes, they want the top echelon of women. Yeah, for nothing. And it's like, and you have to, yeah. and women have to make an effort to look like that. Yeah, like, nobody you, naturally yeah. looks like that. Yeah, right. You have to, like, you have to pay money to get, like, your fucking makeup done and your hair yeah. done and your nails done yeah. and, and buy clothes and shit yeah, like that. If you funny. just go out looking like, you know, it, and the funny thing about it is like dudes would be like, oh, I just like a natural woman. No, you don't. No. No, you don't. natural. You would you wouldn't look twice. No, you don't. Her. No, you don't. You do not want that. And here's another, here, it's just, it's just funny what some of these dudes, it's not, it's not the dudes we hang with for the most part. They, they know what's up. Okay. It's just... Uh, I can't really think of any dudes that we know that are... They're like that. Lame, really. no. It's all, just, all the dudes we know are, it's, are cool. Yeah. It's... it's. Here's the situation. Women, even average women, are not looking at average guys. Women like to marry up or date up. They don't like to date over that much at their same level. They don't really find that... Because women, women are trying to look for something, the best thing they could get. Which is going to be a little bit better situation than them. A guy who's a little bit better looking than them. A guy who has a little bit more money. A guy who has a little bit more status than they do. Well, it's, everybody it's, wants it's something of, a little bit better. Yeah, a little bit better. Yeah, it's like a move up. Sure. Dudes won't. Dudes will date down. If she's cute and she's poor, that doesn't matter. He, he's he's going to date her. Well, you're not yeah. relying on her yeah, for anything yeah. other than like, pussy. Oh, I could help her out. I'd be, right. you know, she's going to see me. And you like to up. feel needed. Dudes like yeah. to feel yeah, needed. Yeah, dudes like to feel needed. And right. w- women don't like to... F- don't like that, but dudes do. Dudes yeah, do. I get that. Dudes are the worker bees. They're like the bee. They're like well, the bird that comes women are already itch. needed. Right. Yeah. Like we we already have to clean up after y'all and do all this other kind of stuff. So it's like we and don't I really. Do most of the cleaning up no, 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 no. I'm just saying that in general. <laughs> I'm just saying not you specifically. I'm yeah. just saying in general. Like women are kind of sick. It's like well, look, we already have to have the kids and take care of the kids and clean right. up after the kids and cook for everybody and blah de blah. Like I said, our situation is different. Yeah. Um, but. That's kind of the average. So I can understand most women are like, yeah, fuck that. I'm not like taking care of another fucking person. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you get why women are kind of like, I don't want to take care of another person women that's be taken like care a of. kid. Yeah. Women want to be taken care of. We already of. have to take care women of kids. Women want security. We they, don't want to take care of a grown ass adult. Yeah. They want security. They want uh, a guy who has uh, some social status in her circle that her friends like, uh, that she likes them. Uh, uh, a guy, uh, a guy who's not gonna fucking hinder them in their progress. A guy that'll help support them in their progress. Yeah, you want you know, emotional support. You right, want somebody that's yeah. gonna back you up right. on shit. Yeah. So it's just that kind of shit. Now, <clears throat> the looks department. Some of these guys are fucking very unrealistic. You look at the dude and he's like a five, but he's looking at a chick who's an eight, who's like fucking twenty two. All right, and he's thirty five. And he's a two or a three. You're not gonna get that. Nope. Doesn't matter how cool you are, unless you're a shit. Got a well, actually, no. If you're real cool and you got a shit ton of money and how to handle your shit, yeah, you might be able to do it. Yeah, you. you yeah, you might. Okay. Like I said, if you were like super cool, yeah. Um, women are a lot more forgiving. Yeah. Of physical, sh- like in general. But here's the thing: when I said you might be a two or a three, I'm actually letting my fucking mouth outrun my ass. <laughs> a man's score is very different than a woman's score. Oh, I'm not even going to... The I'm man's not gonna score that. that he gives a woman is almost purely physical, usually, because that's his first reaction is how she looks. The score that a guy has is given to him by women, and women give a guy a total or overall score. You have a dude who's overweight, he's not that good looking, but if he's funny and he's got a lot of money and he's got a high status, he's going to do well with women, especially if he knows how to handle women. Sure. 
He'll do very well. Like if that dude is like yeah. real, he's a good listener. He's yeah. super funny. Like he's re- like if he's he has like a off lot of the box, right? Fucking, like yeah. it doesn't matter as it doesn't much. Doesn't matter much. Women are not as visual. No, we're guys not. are. Guys are. Dudes are a lot more shallow than women. Yeah. Generally, but shallowness is another form of depth, though, in a certain way, because when you see a woman who looks a certain way, she looks like it's actually more of an indicator of other things. That her health is good, that her mindset is good, that she's putting effort in, that she's trying, you know what I mean? And that she has a certain amount of discipline. Uh, All those things guys will go for, you know what I mean? Good looking women don't happen by accident, you said it yourself. It's, they tried. They put, they, yeah. Beyond, I mean, now. Beyond the age of 15 or 16, it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, I'm not saying, like, young women, yeah. like, a lot of them can look good with no effort. Yeah, 15, 16, not 17. Not me. And then not they're me. Eating, they but other, <laughs> other women, yeah. Um, I, cause I did know women and girls in high school who just looked good. They could just wake up, and I'm just yeah. like, oh my God, you fucking bitch. The thing is, look though, at you. Is that, like, I need all of the this thing is, though, maneuvering, but it's I got like, high you know, school buddies in here in the comment section. A lot of the girls that were fucking awesome in high school didn't age well because they get real lazy. It came yeah. easy to them. So they didn't really have the stick right. but some did. But what I mostly saw is that the girls that were kind of in the middle actually blossomed as they got older because they had to try. Yeah. You well, know? and I kind of feel like that Jen was... Jen got better looking as she got older. That's the other thing. Yeah. She was cute when she was young, but she actually got better looking as she got older. I kind of feel like that, too. Yeah. And well, because, Jim like, a, effort, thanks. Well, I had to. Yeah. Because I wasn't... Um, Didn't come easy. I wasn't effortlessly... Mm-hmm. And I was friends with girls in high school that were just effortlessly cute and effortlessly yeah. beautiful. And they got dudes, like, no problem at all. I was not like that. So it's like I had to have other strategy i wasn't ugly but i had to have other strategies you know what i mean i had to be smart i had to be funny i had to like do it like i had to have other shit yeah. going on i was always good with women i i got pictures to prove it okay I showed them on the show before jen knows knows my past and knows a lot of my exes friends with a lot of my exes. i do yes you are actually friends with all of your exes except except one or two one yeah except one yeah <laughs> and um and they are all lovely, lovely yeah. women. What I was getting at was, what was I getting at? Uh, <laughs> there was a reason why I said that. I got sidetracked in my mind. You'll think of it in a I'll second. I'll think of it later. Yeah. You'll think of it in a second. The, the, um, what, what were we talking about before? Um, hold on. Rebooting. Something we were talking about before. Rebooting. I was saying that. Uh, it doesn't matter. No, I was saying that um, that I had to try harder yeah. when I was younger because I wasn't... I'm pr- thinking in particular of like one girl who was actually my best friend in high school. Oh, I remember what it was. Yeah, see, there you go. Yeah, I remember it now. A lot of those young ladies in their teens and their 20s that looked fantastic, that didn't have to try, when you're like me who's had a lot of good girlfriends... A lot of those really good looking girls that were effortless like you're talking about weren't any good in bed. Well, like I said, they, they were didn't starfish. They just laid to, there. They didn't have to do anything. They didn't have to do anything. They didn't think they had to do anything. Yet. They just looked good. Yeah, they just laid out. It, yeah, they were starfish. Like I said, I didn't have that privilege. Yeah. So I had to like yeah. develop other yeah. things. Really when it came when it came to the when it came to actual fucking getting down, it was like the ones that were average to above average. Not the real awesome ones. And, and it was because they liked you. And they had to put in effort. Yeah. You know what I mean? The ones that were really good, like, just laid there, they felt like they were doing you a favor. Right. So it was like low effort. Well, I'm hot, so... <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to sit here. Call so me just... when you're done. <laughs> Is this what it seemed like? A lot of them were like that. Well, like I said, that yeah. this kind of aligns with my experience also. Like I said, I wasn't ugly... But I wasn't super hot, um, and I wasn't like super because I'm like really shy. I'm really introverted, so obviously that doesn't um, play well. And so you kind of have to just do your own shit. Also, you know, I hung out with all the goths and weirdos and stuff like that. So that was another point against me. Yeah. 
but it's just kind of like you have to develop your own shit so in some ways that kind of is better in the long run because when you get older and all of those chicks that were like super hot in high school but now look like you know they've had six kids and now they look like fat walmart people is that i never had the privilege of just coasting yeah. on my looks i couldn't ever do that somebody said india sounds a little creepy when it comes to women it does honestly yeah that you can go on youtube and, and uh see videos made by uh, young western women that went to the india i would be scared to go there and to be fucking, honest, they'll tell you some crazy ass stories like they go into a hotel 20 minutes later the phone starts ringing and he told me about mysterious this mysterious dudes fucking cat call on show them. up and then people fucking at the door knocking on the door open the door open the door and there's like fucking eight guys out there and hey we heard we could rape you yeah you know, is that okay they want to meet you you know and right. what it is it's because the the dudes that worked there called their friends at home said hey man there's western girls here they're by they're alone and they're and they all whores. Come. Yeah, yeah, those whores will. Whatever. But they're trying Bitch, to... Bitch, I will stab trying you. To so, soft, I will trying to soft... Trying to sweet you. talk their way into your fucking room. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. I will stab you. would be like eight or nine Right in your fucking there. eyeballs. Right in your eyeballs and then in your taint. Well... Knife. Right in your eyeball. Yeah. Victor that was says... India, though. Evidently, fucking... It, it, like, you go to a place like UAE or Dubai, there are no problems... Probably Saudi Arabia nowadays. We, I was talking to Saad. You know, that's my friend in Saudi Arabia. You're describing what's going on in Saudi now. It's kind of like America back in the 80s now. It's It, it sounds almost kind of like conservative Western. Sounds okay. kind of like if you were living in Salt Lake City, Utah. So it's not that strict. It's still not great, but yeah. But you can have a good time, though. Right. You can have a good time. Since you can, the, they, the ha, they have all kinds of shit going on. It's just, it's a little low key. It's lower key. But it's I don't not, know, it's man. Like, it's just kind of like... It's not like they throw you in jail for alcohol anymore or any of that shit. It's not, you know... Like, it, as much as I would like to visit other cultures like that, I'm just always afraid. It's like, the, I don't think they could deal with me, man. I just uh, don't... The easiest one... Well, see, we're married now, so there, that'd be a big problem out of the way. Even though they said Dubai, people that weren't married, you can bring your girlfriend there. There was no problem. Dubai, they said, is actually, you know, for Westerners, the easiest one. It's, it's like a Western country. Cause like, like dude, nice like movie. some random ass dude like touches my ass. I'm punching yeah. you. I don't really, yeah. ca I don't care who you are. They're not, so. They won't do it down there. They're not. They're evidently they're fucking pretty good towards women. Now they were like that in Egypt. When I was in Egypt, they were they were they were respectful towards women. Hmm. They'd have fucking Western tourist women at the beach and fucking bikinis and fucking. You'd have Bedouin hanging out with them. They weren't bothering them. I don't know. I don't know if I. No, I don't know if just, I trust it. It all just depends on where you are. Yeah, I mean, for real, I would never go there by myself. I'm not blaming. I'd love you. to go to Dubai. I would too. I would actually like to visit there, but it's just the money. Yeah, but if you go to Dubai, you go to Dubai to make money. So what we got? If we were gonna go there, man, I'd like to do something like where we're gonna do a show down there, or something, or do like a fucking. Like a uh, get involved in like a fucking horror convention like we did before, something like that. They have that. Kind yeah, of shit see, there. something like that would be yeah. cool. Yeah, like where do there a, wasn't any convention. expectation of conforming to any weird. No, no, they got all kinds of shit. You, they not, have horror not conventions and everything, you know. And you can you can just take your Western panache. You know how good I, I am as a salesman. I'll sell every fucking book. Yeah, I'm gonna put you right in front. I'll of I'll sit me there and somewhere. fucking be pimping books and shit. Fucking yeah. You are yeah. very good at that. Yeah. Which is good because I'm not. Yeah. Telling not. stories. and. Well, know. it's harder to sell your own shit. Yeah. Because honestly, you know, if you're an artist and you create stuff. Yeah. You're never going to just like, well, here's my thing. It's like, if you wanted it's, to, it's not as good as I wanted. But if you wanted to make money and. Here, pay and, for and, it. If you wanted to make money and have fun in the Middle East, we go down there to do a paranormal investigation. All right. On the gin. And collect a bunch of gin stories. Oh, no, stories. see, that would be fun. Collect a bunch of gin stories from uh, local investigators. And then write a book in English about the gin. And then you have it translated into Arabic. So you got an English version and an Arabic version. That's a good idea, And actually. then what you do is you build a clientele in the Middle East about gin and paranormal stuff. Because... If you know any Arabs, man, 
Arabs love gin stories. And if you listen to Arabs telling I mean, gin stories, they're, they're fun. pretty good. They're fun. The good gin stories. It's yeah. like a, their version of a ghost story or poltergeist sure. story. I listen uh, to that shit all day that long. Things that they'd seen. You know, some of them are fake. Some of them might be real. I think any any gin story that sounded authentic to me that I heard sounded like a poltergeist or ghost. Something like that. I mean, some it's all kind of the same they just thing. making it up, you know, but it's, that's like with any anything, you know. Erica says, I was picked on in school. I feel ya. Girls can be evil to each other. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's yeah. no sisterhood. Fucking, um, they fucking tear each other up. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't even know. Um, it was girls and boys. It was both things. Um, I kind of had... And I didn't even get... I didn't get beat up or anything like that. But I was bullied, like, pretty bad. And it wasn't even because... I wasn't weird looking or nothing like that. But it was mostly from being poor... And, you know, having secondhand clothes and stuff and also being like bookish and kind of shy and smart and stuff like that. They don't really. And then like later when I was in junior high, you know, I started getting into punk and goth and stuff like that. And then that was another thing that they could like pick on me about. Um, But honestly, um, thankfully, even though it's fucking Florida. I did find a handful of people that were into the same kind of shit as me. So I did have like a support network. Um, but it was still pretty, and I still remember shit from back then. Like how, cause I went to a high school where, um, most like 90% of the people that went there were like upper middle class. And I was very like low working class. And they would absolutely, if you had the wrong shoes on, if you had the wrong, they would absolutely point that out. So all day long, you were just getting, like, criticized for your shit. So, you know, it wears on you when you're a little kid. Um, But, yeah, so, and girls are bad. Like, dudes are bad, too, though. Like, because I had pick, got picked on by dudes also. But girls are also the worst. Can I just say, I don't know if I'm, I'm not going to say her name. I'm not gonna say her name. We have this um, friend, friend, and I've known her for a long time. We're not super close or anything like that. But um, last time we went to Barbarella two weeks ago, Saturday night. This girl is there, and the funny thing to me is that she is constantly posting shit on her Facebook. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's about. What, she's the same age as me or a little bit younger or yeah, what? Yeah, about that, yeah. I think she's about the same age as me. She's constantly posting shit on her Facebook about the toxic people and it's like, oh, I just wish there was like, you know, girls would be better and like toxic, you know, I just want sisterhood and blah, blah, blah. I read some shit that she posted the other day. She legit, last time we were at Barbarella, asked you yeah. why you married me. Yeah, and I just laughed. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? As one, as though you wouldn't tell me yeah. that she'd said that, which you did. And I'm just sitting there going, because... I just thought the shit was funny. I was like, oh, what? Well, I knew that she had asked you that before because she texted you that. Like as after I was supposed to marry her. After we got married, like, in September... Yeah, she was like... Really? Of 2023. Yeah, she... Yeah, didn't she send you a text yeah, or, a, like, or a really? message? Really? Really? She said it twice. And I was like, oh, my God. And then, like, the fact that we were out, like, it, and months have gone by. Like like I said, we got married, like, last September, like, last year. Bitch couldn't believe it. And he told me, like, later, like, we're at the club and we're having a good time. It's 80s night. We're dancing or whatever. And she was there. And she even came up to me and was like, oh, my God, your boobs look amazing. And I'm just like, hey, how are you? Blah, blah, blah. And then, like, later, you told me was that she had asked you that. Like, yeah, early, yeah. why did you women marry bitches, her? Women are bitches, man. We're talking about, man. Fucking, a lot of those women no, are I know. Oh, I know. They're, they're fucking cutthroat. Why do you think <laughs> I don't? Cutthroat. I have a few female friends that I like. I have a few male friends that I like. Yeah. In general, I don't like people. Yeah. No matter what gender. Um, people are kind of the worst. But um, <laughs> the I mean, fact that I'm still thinking about it. Like, I'm just like, what? Like, what? And I'm kind of, it blows my mind because I'm like, did she actually think that you wouldn't tell me that you said that? That she said that? I got a fucking, look, there's a pattern with women. Not me. No, there, there's a pattern with women from a man's point of view. 
women that are hotter than you fucking love you. Women that are like are at your level or beneath your level fucking <laughs> pretend they love well, you. Well, it's They're no fucking comp- jealousy. Yeah. <laughs> And fucking that particular one, fucking for some reason, thought I should have married her. Like, what the fuck are you talking well, about? Well, we have a long Dumb history bitch. with this particular yeah. girl <laughs> where even though there's no way. There's no fucking even way. Even back before, even when we started, first started hanging out. Yeah, she was jealous of you. She told yeah. Paul Vane, the DJ. Yeah. That, that you I were would, really in love with her. No, yeah, in her fucking dream. And you really didn't understand, like, why you were hanging out with me. And in now, like, dreams. 13, 13 years later? Yeah, in her dream. like that. If you were to see the girl we're talking about, you'd fucking laugh. Yeah, we're not, her, don't, please do not show her. No, that is, in her I, I'm in, not going to yeah, do that. In her dreams. In her dreams. But it's just, it was so weird, man. And it was so weird because I've never been anything but nice to her. And she's married. That's the other weird thing. <laughs> she has a man. But she has me, a man. But it's not me. He doesn't come out with her ever, which is a little weird in itself. Yeah. But, you know, we know some people that, like, you know, they don't, like, if their significant other isn't into the shit, like, you know, that's fine. I'm not going to judge too much about it. But it's just, like, she's, I don't know, is she married or just engaged? She's married. Okay. So he, I have met him in person one time. Side quest here. Say, what's up, Katrina? But it's just kind of like, why? Let me get you another drink. Yeah. yeah. I don't really understand, like, why. Because she's a woman. Right. Well, so am I. <laughs> she's not a woman like you. I wouldn't imagine. <laughs> like, why would you? Oh, my God. I just can't imagine being that cunty to somebody. I just can't imagine. And like I said, it's just kind of like. That's why I thought I'd bring it up because it's, I'm not saying her name or anything like that. I'm not going to be that petty. But I've known her for a long time. And the fact that she would say that shit behind my back. And also it's kind of hilarious that she would say that to Tom thinking that he wouldn't say that to me, which of course he immediately did. Um, I don't know. That's very funny to me. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> ah, I really don't get it. Um, yeah, side quest here says some bitches be cray cray. Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, and like I said, I don't. Um, I don't. I don't like to go like lean too much into the stereotype of like, oh, women be crazy and stuff like that. Because I have met an equal number of dudes that were just as shitty, if not more shitty. So it's like, I'm, I'm an, I'm a mis, uh, you know, I, I'm a misanthropist. I, I really don't like a lot of people to be honest, because a lot of them were kind of shitty. So I'm just like gender be damned. But I don't know. Like, I've just been thinking about that since the last time, because I find it hilarious that she, and I was having a good time that night. It was 80s night. Um, that's my favorite place to go on 80s night. I'm just like, woo. It's like, I dance, like I dance my ass off. I was sore the next day. I danced so much. And she was there. She didn't dance that much. She was kind of sitting around on the side or whatever. And she's kind of one of those people that's always criticizing other people for like not being goth enough or selling out or she's one of those kind of people. Like I said, she's kind of our age, which I get it, but you know what I mean? So the fact that she would be nice to my face and then I find out five minutes later that she asked you that. Yeah. I mean, I knew that she'd asked you that before because, I just thought it was funny. because you know. showed me the yeah, I just the message that she sent you on I, Facebook I and I'm just is. like, okay. okay. Oh, and that other bitch asked you that, asked you yeah. that too. Case and Lee's here. He's from Bangladesh. We were just talking about India a few days ago. Not days ago, a few minutes ago, saying that they had these girls on in on on uh, YouTube that went through India, and as soon as they show up at the hotel, all of a sudden dudes are at the door, fucking, and dudes are calling them on the fucking phone because the guys that run the run the hotel or work at the hotel called all their friends back at home and says, "Hey, we got white girls over here, and they're by themselves." Fucking, and they're at the front door. Hey, open the door. Hey, girls. Fucking, hey, sweetie. Trying to get, them, no. get them to open the door. Be like fucking five of them out there knocking on the door. And fucking one of them calling. They're selling Read the, the room, damn, bro. They're fucking 
r- room numbers. You know, they're fucking whoever worked at the hotel sold their room number to all their buddies, the room telephone numbers, and they're calling and shit. And those mm. girls fucking got panicked and got the fuck out. Of I there. do not blame them. <laughs> I would also be fucking terrified. But the thing about it, it's like, dude, like I said, yeah. what the? How desperate are these dudes? Like, get a pocket pussy. Yeah, okay, well, they have those now. I was now. saying, case in a calm back down. Me up. Case in a back me up. Most of them. He's young, from Sri Lanka, not from India. Yeah, he's from Sri Lanka, but it's, it's in that area. The um, he can back me up in that area. A lot of those dudes, young guys, they're basically incels. They they can't date. They can't get married until you have a certain amount of money, and it's all family connections. So those dudes are fucking desperate. I'm sorry that doesn't. And then they ex- think Western women are just whores, you know. That doesn't explain. Look at the way y'all dress. They do the booty pictures and shit. Yeah. So they, they just fucking. They see something. They see one girl do Western girl doing it, so they think they're all doing it. Now here's the thing: me and Jenny do crazy shit anyway. All right. Right. But that doesn't mean you can do crazy shit to her and survive it, because I'll bust you the fuck up. And then I will, <laughs> and then I'll cut you up yeah. and eat you. Some little skinny, so. in, some little skinny Indian dude that doesn't weigh but 120 pounds is gonna get fucked up. You're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, uh, we've been in clubs before, and fucking dudes that are six one that probably weigh close to two, two twenty. A lot of it fat. I fucking grab them by the fucking throat. She seen me do it. Would you dare touch my wife? You know, and they're like, whoa, 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 whoa! I'll fucking kill you. And I'm serious. I'm serious. I can do it with my hands or guns. Because this is America, and even Americans fuck up. There is fucking we've been at, we've been in the uh, now it hasn't happened recently, but at mannequins, there were dudes in there that were just fucking acting bad, like yeah. even for America. You're Which is bad. one of the reasons I don't love. You don't fucking there. touch a woman that is not yours. Doesn't well, matter what I mean, she's wearing. It doesn't matter. It's is that a woman you don't know? Yeah. Then don't touch that person. Why yeah, is yeah. that hard? Yeah. Don't touch people you don't know. Yeah. I don't understand I why that's earlier difficult. earlier in the show, we were talking about that. On another show, we were talking about this. So what the fuck are these, what the fuck is happening to these American dudes, man? This ain't Pakistan. You know what I mean? You don't fucking grab some woman's ass. Oh, but yeah. I've had it done to me many, 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 yeah, many, fuck, but many I, times. I've been grabbed too, but it's different when a woman does it. Well, fucking dudes are doing it. Yeah, but they got fucked up. They ran after it happened. We went in there one time. I was dressed up as Bane. I was in a Bane costume. Yeah, it was Halloween. I had a Bane mask on. I was walking in there. I was all fucking swole and shit. And a girl that was young enough to be my daughter fucking reached out and just grabbed my fucking titties like that. Right in front of Jen. As I was walking by, I was like, what the fuck? Is she was drunk as shit. She was drunk. Sure. And there was like three or four of them giggling and shit. But so it's, it's not as just, threatening. It's not the same. If, it's yeah, not as threatening. It's not the same if it's a girl. If it, I mean, if it's annoying. Girl, if it's a dude. But it's just a girl. girl. Right. She's not, she doesn't be like, hey, I'm going to rape you. She, yeah. She's just like, oh, I'm so drunk. Look at me. It's yeah, like, and like, then <sighs> she moves on. Yeah. It's like, it's not the same. Yeah. It's not the same. Yeah. She can't do anything to me. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's not... So, in the other way... Like, I don't like that either, obviously. I don't want, like, chicks, like, grabbing you and stuff. But it's just kind of, like, not... They're not threatening you. Yeah. They're not threatening you. Yeah. When a dude does it, it's very threatening. He said I didn't catch it. I take it as very threatening. He said... Okay, Kaysen's going, huh, I didn't catch it. What I... I don't know exactly what you didn't catch. I was saying that... I was talking about... She brought up a dude in India that was talking to her over the internet a long time ago. Yeah, this was like 2013 or some shit. And he could not not fathom the fact that her and I lived together for a long time and we weren't married. And we weren't married, That fucked his mind up. And then I mentioned that, yeah, you can go on YouTube and see warnings made by young Western women that have been to India. They're saying, don't go down there by yourself. I would not. And if you go to those hotels, the hotel staff will tell you, will, will tell all their friends that you're in that room. That you're there. And a bunch of dudes will fucking just come in there and be knocking Congregate. on the door, trying to get in and calling on the phone. At which point I'd be like, psh, 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 psh. And, I, and I was explaining, I said, in a place like India, most of those young guys are basically incels, involuntary celibates. Okay. They can't have sex. Because they don't have the money to get married, they're, you know, they're fucking working jobs. They got hey, nuts, so and there's no dating or anything there. 
not in the poor and the middle class. Maybe maybe rich people might date because we have rich Indians here. We know them. But they're just like, they become extremely Western as soon as they come. I mean, the Indians, I, I've known yeah. people from India since I was in elementary school. I went to, actually, yeah. I went to elementary school with it with a couple Indian girls. And like, I've worked with several, but, and they were completely Americanized. Yeah. You would not really know the My difference. friend Nancy, you'd never know she had anything to do with it. No, absolutely not. You would she, not know. Long black hair, pretty. Like Long I said, she's into like death metal and death shit. Death metal and fucking heavy metal and wrestling and shit. She loves fucking big wrestlers and shit. Yeah. You would never know. You'd never that know. Is, no. And she loves 80s music and 80s heavy metal. Yeah. She's all into hair metal and shit. Yeah. Funny shit. Which I was She'll show funny. up in fucking skid tight outfit. She's got her like. At the club with little fucking. Knee high boots yeah, on. She's showed up from like 1984. Looks like she knows how to do. I'm going to show you a picture. Yeah. She knows how to fucking look like something straight She's cool. Out of she's kind of weird, but she's, she's cool. She's a little though. weird, yeah. She's a little weird, but she is cool. She's though. fun. But, like, yeah, so most of the people, they've, like, integrated because yeah. they're like, yeah, we don't really like that shit back there, so we're doing this now. But that's. Mo and, like I said, most of the Indian, and I've known a lot of Indian people over my life, like I said, going back to um, elementary school, they were mostly, I didn't really see any difference. They didn't really see any different to me than Americans did. Yeah. That's Nancy. Yeah. That's Nancy. She's kind of, she's cool. I, like see I, haven't, I haven't seen her in a while, but yeah. When was the last time we saw her? Uh, it wasn't that it wasn't long that ago. that long ago. Yeah. Let's see if I can find I her. I want to say it was maybe a year ago. Dressed up as some heavy metal shit. There yeah. she is. Nancy heavy metal as fuck. This was yeah. a year, this was years back. Yeah. Yeah. She's super into like hair metal and yeah. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> just look at it kind of funny. Yeah. There she is in her Def Leppard fucking yeah. shirt. She loves that. She loves yeah. that. She loves that shit. She looks like, like I said, every 80s yeah. um, chick that was into like 80s hair metal. Yeah. She looks like that. Before Still. me and Jen were a thing, she was fucking, she was after me. She was gunning for you. Yeah, she was gunning for me. I got pictures of her. Well, like I said, and I feel like yeah. for a while after we got. I her, but she was fucking too religious. After we got together, yeah. I there was a little passive aggression. Yeah, she was. Yeah. I felt. Yeah. Um, yeah, she was mad at you. I got that from a lot of chicks, <laughs> yeah. honestly. Like after me and you got together. Yeah. Um, like chicks were nice to me, but you could, you know, that passive aggressive. Yeah. Yeah, I was getting that from a lot of chicks. There was yeah. a lot of women gunning for you, Tom. Yeah. A lot. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah. That's me right there with Nancy behind me. Yeah, remember oh, yeah I remember that picture. That's a, yeah, I got a bunch of them I like remember that, that I guess. That was me and Nancy. We were kind of dating, but not really. We were friends. Oh, is that Tori back there? It's Tori, yeah. And is that Will? Yeah, it was Will. That looked like Will. Yeah. He's gotten kicked out of every club. I mean, He's yeah. older than we are. Yeah. He's an old punk rock motherfucker. Yeah, me and Nancy. He back has when anger, I had hair. He has anger issues. Yeah, though. back when I had hair. Yeah. And that is that Jason? Yeah. Jason Cortez? Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to say people's real names. Oh, but... yeah, remember this. Me and Nancy. I can't see I that. look so different with hair, man. I like you either way. Yeah. That one must have been 2011. No, 2010. 2009, maybe. 2009. Yeah, I think that was before... Uh, we didn't know each other then. I met you. Yeah, we didn't know I each other. I met you in either 2009 or 2010. Yeah. But for a long time, it was just kind of like, oh, I just saw you like out at the clubs. And I'm just like, yeah. hey, hey. It was just kind of like yeah. that kind of thing before we actually like started talking. No, you got in her territory. Yeah, she seemed a little upset about it. She thought she well, had dibs. Like I said, a lot of bitches. <laughs> I didn't realize. Look, man. Like I said, I don't concern myself with other people's <laughs> drama or bullshit. I'm just kind of like concerned with whatever is going on with me, whatever is going on in my immediate vicinity. So I'm just kind of like, like, I met you. I liked you. You seem to like me back, and I was just yeah. kind of like, okay, we're going to do that kind of stuff. But I didn't realize the epic shitstorm yeah. that I would get yeah. in the face of that, because it does seem like after, 
we started hanging out even even before we started like officially like dating dating yeah because i feel like it was almost like a year a year and a half before we were like okay yeah we're a thing um that period holy shit i got so much blowback from the ladies so much blowback well from dudes too yeah but who were um mostly dudes who wanted to go dudes out with her were that off. Yeah. yeah like a lot of dudes would kind of like um oh my god he's such a man whore mm-hmm. he slept with this person and that person and so yeah. which later i was just like yeah that's not true okay but it's, so, it's just, it, so it wasn't true but the shit that did happen i admitted to that early on but that's what i mean and yeah. and like i said the shit that happened when you were single yeah. was not egregious yeah no normal shit. it wasn't any weirder than any shit i mean it wasn't any more people than i yeah. slept with when i was single so i don't really get yeah but like i said so a lot of dudes came forward and were like oh my god he's such an asshole and he's such a he's this and that and the other i'm just like I was, another thing was they didn't really know you yeah i mean i had talked to you um you know, and at some point I kind of like had some long conversations with you, and you were kind of like, "Hi, Desert said I look like a young Peter Murphy." Yeah, I think he does. Kind of, he from did some kinda. angles. Yeah, he did kind of. The Phantom said, "Tom, did you get to bang Nancy? If so, way to go." Um, no. No, that was part of my magic. Is that uh, she wanted to for sure? Part of my power was that I didn't give a shit. I never pursued women really. They just came to you. Yeah. There was... Well, I always had... An ideology... I had always had a mentality of plenty. There was always lots of them. So I never felt desperate. I never really felt like, well, I got hit this and this and that. I kind of got out of that a long time ago. I was actually looking for... See, I don't want to be all fucking... Oh, I was actually looking for a relationship. Yeah. So and I think a lot of I think a lot of the the reasons why I think a lot of the girls that were doing that is because they I think they could feel that. I was trying to choose one that was good. Over time, Jen won. Because uh, she was she was legit. A lot of the other ones, ulterior motives and uh, uh, sketchy personalities that you probably couldn't trust in a fucking pinch. And Jen knows things about my fucking personality, and my past. We didn't even talk about it on the show. Yeah, we, we'll talk about it openly, so she understands what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um. Uh, I would just say I was looking, f- I was looking for uh, 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 the the whole package of qualities, I guess. But it had, I didn't have my mind set on any one thing. It's just that I was just wanted a good woman that I that I was friends with, that I was attracted to, that we could get shit done together. It was, you know, that kind of stuff. And me well, and Jen started to be, basically become business partners before we were fucking even dating. Everyone wanted kind of us like to fall. go out before we Yeah, did. so this thing started to like fall into place. When we first like kind of announced, okay, yeah, we're together now. But he's like, fucking finally. Yeah. They were like bothering about us yeah. for a long time. But, it's so, but like I said, we were dating other people. But I kind of feel like there was this whole thing where... You told me a bunch of shit about your background. Yeah. Which, like I said, I don't even know if we talked about that a lot on the show, but... But if you... if Look, here's the thing that fucking a lot of novice young guys don't understand. If you're trying to hit, you're going to lose. If you ask a woman, high, a woman who's in high demand, she's interested in the guys who aren't really that interested in her. Those are the ones she's actually looking at. If you're interested in her too much, you're disqualified. Well... That's the, that's because the that comes across as desperation, yeah. and yeah. that's not attractive so I just treated, in either gender. I just treated women as people and had fun with them and tried to figure them out and figure out which one was going to go. And uh, yeah, I liked Nancy, but Nancy wasn't right. No, no. But I liked her. Yeah, she was. She was. Cool. I like her too. Yeah, she was cool. But uh, I mean, that's the thing. But yeah. I think that that was what attracted me to you in the first yeah. place. Is that you were one of the very few, and sadly, very few dudes that I knew that actually interacted with women as though they were people. And here's the fucking funny thing. Like, you you weren't trying to sleep with them. You weren't trying to, you're just like, you know, I just like this person. Here's the funny thing. 
that's very rare. Here's the funny thing. Sadly. I, I know how I appear. And I know how I come across. I think to, to most women or most people who don't know me that well would think the exact opposite of me. They probably would. <laughs> yeah. But they probably would. I'm not exactly as I appear. No, you're not. When it comes to that. Yeah. You're not. And it's not that I'm fake. I'm just saying that people read into read into my motives based upon my character and like how, how I do things. Um, I'm, I'm actually not that fucking sexually aggressive. I'm not trying to fucking hit everything because I, I don't value it the same way as other people. Because I think because just the way I grew up, I was popular from a, year, a young age. I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't thirsty. You I mean, know, I you... I mean, from the time you were a teenager, yeah. you could get whatever you wanted. Yeah. So basically. it's like now that you're this age, you just don't really feel the I need. I was pretty to... when I was a kid. Right, you were. <laughs> you were. I could. I could so have any I mean, girl you've had any all. I wanted. Right, there you've had old... all the experiences. Yeah. When I was when I was sixteen or seventeen, there were women in their thirties and forties that wanted to hit. Oh, for real. And they were married. For real. So I was I was navigating that too because I was in Brazil at that time. And I was the male equivalent of a 15-year-old girl with fucking double G titties. God, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I was like that. So it's like Because I looked like I'm one of the members of Duran Duran at that time. You did, rather. <laughs> so, Something like that, you know. Right, so it's like, so you've had yeah. all the experiences. Yeah. So it's like you don't really feel like you missed out on anything no. or you were denied anything. Mm. or I kind of feel like a lot of the problem comes from... People that think that they're missing out missing on out. stuff, trying to make, which you yeah. don't have no, that no. sensation because no. you haven't missed out on anything. No, I mean, when it comes to women, it was easy. Yeah, because I didn't try. And like I said, if you have not been here, yeah, um, you know my body count, if you want to call it that, is very low. It's under ten. Yeah, his is probably in the triple digits. Yeah, actually, definitely in the triple yeah. digits. And they were all beautiful. Right, all beautiful. So I got pictures to prove. He's Jen's been around. Me. Yeah, I have not, but it wasn't really the same for me. Yeah, you know what I mean. Jen lived a different kind of life that I, I lived. did. A lot of it right. had to do with my family. Yeah, and how I was growing up. So, so it's just kind of yeah. like it's a different situation. Murder Hornet said Jen is a homewrecker. How She's am I? A homewrecker. Uh, how am I a homewrecker? She doesn't know. He doesn't know what you're talking about. You aren't married. Yeah. You were married before. Yeah, but you had been divorced, divorced for of, yeah. a long time yeah, before I, I met you. Yeah, I've been divorced. Now for nine I years. was married yeah. when I met him. Yeah, if anything, I was the home wrecker. Yeah, you kind of were. <laughs> well, no, I don't. I don't want to say nah, that. You were on your way out with him. Anyway. I was kind of like when I met him. Uh, but I was married, but like me and my husband were kind of on the outs. Tammy says Jenny knows that Tom really wants to be pegged. These bitches and their their fucking Tammy anal fantasies on now. Nah. Oh, I'm gonna get in there. I'm gonna get in there. I'm gonna get in there. One of the, no, I'm just. I, I would never yeah. do that without your consent. Just saying. Um, I saw something that I wanted to. Oh, um, where was it? Where was it? Marry your bestie. Yeah, you should. I mean, look, me and Tom. Yeah, we were besties. Yeah. We were friends for probably a year. Yeah. A year and a half. Yeah. Before we got together, we were dating other people. We were doing all we this other stuff. We would fool around every now and then. Yeah, it was kind of yeah. a thing where it's just kind of like, like I was married, fuck. but I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah and it's like we would fuck every now and then. Yeah. It's just like, man, we shouldn't have done that. And then like, we go back but to the club, we go get up. We go to the club. We yeah. go to the club together. Yeah. Like I would go hook up with some dude. He would go hook up with some chick or whatever. And then like after a while, everybody's like, oh my god, for Christ's sake, would yeah. you guys please just start going out? Yeah. <laughs> because you're always here together. You're clearly in love with one another. Yeah. Um, we're tired of looking at you. Yeah. So it's just like, would you please? It's a different kind of love, though. It well, it was, is it? I don't know. It was. It was pretty mature. But like I said, I kind of. <laughs> well, like I said, I kind of feel like that's the ideal, that's though, and I and I kind of feel yeah. like that's why a lot of younger marriages don't, don't last. last yeah, yeah. Because you're basing it on shit that. You have to. It's got to be an all package. It's got to be like a fucking big. Right. The, this and has really to be you a don't person. Know the you get a little bit older anyway. This has to be a person. Do you. Is this the person that you want to plan your funeral 
right? Is this the person that you want to go sh grocery shopping every week with? Is this the person that you're going to do boring shit? Every, like, life shit. Um, you know, and I know that's not sexy, it's not, but that's kind of like what you need to deal with. And like I said, and I'm not saying that that doesn't mean that it's like, because obviously his little sexy ass, every time it walks by, I'm just kind of like, mm-hmm. You know, and he does the same to me, but it's just, and that's good, but you need to have more than that if you're going to marry a person. If you're going to be with a person for a really long time, there has to be like another element to it. There has to be another element to it. There's that. Um, You know, Devora says, I'm in a position now where I just want to sleep around, <laughs> but no one locally is interesting enough. I went through, like, I got divorced. I married in 1995, 1995. And I was married for 14 years to my first husband. And then after a while, I was just kind of like, I don't know. Like, it was just getting boring. He was um, telling me he was in love with somebody else at his workplace or something. And I was just kind of like, okay, well, I'm just not, I'm checking out. I'm checking out of this shit. And so we still lived together for a while, but I told him like, bro, I'm like, if you're gonna be in love with this person at work, um, then I'm just gonna check out and I'm gonna go do my own shit. Damn, um, 10 people just showed up out of nowhere. Nice, all right. Yeah. Okay. So that's how that happened. So at that point, I was just kinda like, I don't, I'm, like I said, I'm not a person, I'm very introverted, I'm not, you know, a person that is really into, hey, let's go and sleep with this random person. But I did do that for a little while just to see what it was like. And it's kind of fun, but not really that fun. Not really for me. And I met you and I think that you were the first person that I felt like I wanted to pursue because I knew that there was something like the thing about you, Tom, is that there was everywhere you go, there's this is kind of like um, all of these stories yeah. come up about you. <laughs> like a living legend. <laughs> yeah. So it's like you first moved here in what, 2008, 2009, yeah, something like that. Halfway through 2008. Yeah, something like that. And I started hearing all these stories about you. And I was like, oh my God, this man horror. He just moved here. He yeah. killed somebody. He did Getting this, that. head in the club. Right. And it's like, oh my God, he got head in which the was, club. And it's just true. like, but that was true. Yeah. But, I, and I know the girl that did it, but, yeah, too, yeah. but um, she's, she's nice. Yeah. But the thing about it was that all of this stuff, and then people started, when you started um, making yourself known as like popular yeah. with women. And the reason you were popular with women, because you weren't after anything. No, I was just hanging out with everybody. You were just hanging out, yeah, and you were just kind of like, hey, this dude's cool. Hey, this chick yeah. is cool. We're just going to hang out. Like, you yeah. didn't necessarily, it wasn't goal-oriented. No. You were just trying to, like, hang out the with people. The main one at that, th at, that, at that level, at that time, would have been Sonya. Sonya, Sonya was my buddy. And I wasn't chasing after her either. Although she also asked why you married me. Yeah, she was chasing after me. But the thing is, she was, she's, yeah. I fucking put the offer out before I knew you, and she kind of fucking. She wanted turned me to it. Try she were like, "All right." She wanted me to try harder, and I'm like, "I no, nah. that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> we're I equals. I, I don't want it that bad. It doesn't play. You know, you, you know, you, we, we're equals. If you don't take it, then fine, whatever." So, you know what I mean? She got uh, a little bit mad about that, I feel. Uh, she got... When she tried to double, triple down, she tried to beat you. Yeah, I know. But it couldn't have. It wasn't going to happen. The, the, I know. I like her. You know, she's great. She's a friend of mine. But, yeah. But she, you know, she had to go back to her husband eventually anyway, though. Yeah, she was, she was also a person time. that had a man. She was married. And she was another person yeah. that after we got married last September, <laughs> yeah. she messaged you and she said... Like, really? Really? Yeah, it's, it's yeah, bitch. <laughs> so cunty. <laughs> I said, now you want to talk, huh? She goes, not anymore. That kind of shit is so used to. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. She got She's just her. mad. And she's fucking married. She, no, they're not. Oh, they're not married. Okay. They're engaged. They're just, they're just living together. Right? Okay. I thought they were married. I remember the huge yeah. deal that she made about, oh, she got engaged to her boyfriend. They have a kid. 
Well, they had a kid a long time ago. Yeah, and the kid's grown. Yeah. And they broke up and Come got back together and broke up and got back together yeah. and all this other kind of shit. Like, we heard all the drama. Because yeah. me, and, me and him and her used to go out all the time. Yeah. And had threesomes and stuff like that. So, <laughs> you know what I mean. So, <laughs> shit happened. So, I heard all of the drama. Yeah. But they eventually got back together, and she decided we're going to settle down and be, like, happy family or whatever. And I was like, okay, fine. That's what she wanted to do. She doesn't come out anymore. But the fact that she broke her silence, because she hasn't talked to you in years. No, I'm going to show her. And right. the fact that we got married, and yeah. then she sent you a message that yeah. just said, really? <laughs> yeah. That kind of says all I need to know. Yeah. Kind of like, you know, like her little friend whose uh, name I'm not mentioning. Yeah, yeah. Only because we probably haven't talked about it on the show is that. Yeah. She kind of like said kind of the same kind of shit. I'm just like, I mean, I was never under the illusion that they were actually my friend this whole time. Um, but it is kind of disappointing. No, Sonya kind of was. It's kind of disappointing. Yeah, I think Sonya kind of was. And like I said, it's kind of funny that they would think that you wouldn't tell me that they had said that. Because, of course, he did immediately. So... Yeah. No, I think Sonya was your friend. Mm. As much as she could be. Mm. You know what I mean? She... I don't know, man. There's limitations to that chick, too. That's what I mean. It's just kind of like, look, I'm... uh, I'm distrustful of people in general. Yeah. But like if you just want to if you're a chick and you want to be friends with me and you're just kind of like not it's this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm not about that. That was me and Sonya. That's who, that's that. who she's talking about. I'm not about that. Yeah, yeah. Don't be fucking fake with me. Don't be yeah. don't be talking shit. <laughs> They're like saying shit about me yeah. to you yeah. behind my back. Yeah. Thinking that you're not going to tell me, which I don't really get that. I don't okay. think they really care. But I would never yeah, do I that. I would never do that to somebody. And it's just kind yeah. of like, I don't understand like why other people would. That's yeah. really shitty. <laughs> really shitty. It's when chicks are, man. I'm not like that. Well, you're not really typical, you know. I know, but it's like, well, I'm sorry for being a nice person. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't shit on like people like that behind my... Like, why the... Like, look, if they're I... They're not shitting on you. They're just being female. <laughs> We no, catty, it's not. Man. It's not. Catty, They're man. not all. I'm not like that. That type of women is caddy. I'm not like that. That was she pretty. That was pretty common. That, was, that would never occur to me. Yeah. It would never occur to me. Yeah. Like if I had somebody that if, if it right. was my friend, like I would never. I would never. There's me, Sonia, and Nancy. <laughs> all right, yeah. pee. They're fighting over each other. But that's what I mean. It's like yeah. I would never. Yeah. And the fact that somebody else would do that, yeah. it just blows my fucking mind. That is so fucking Conti. Yeah. So yeah. Conti. Look at her. Trying to lay claim. Well, I will say Trying to lay right claim. Here, can I just say something right here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you and me were going out, and even after we were going out. Yeah. Sonia had yeah. a whole, um, like it's what is it called like not a playlist but a whole um thing on your facebook where your photos are yeah yeah like a yeah. whole album a whole album a whole album of us yeah of and it was called tom and so yeah that's what it was called yeah look at and my face <laughs> she had that for like a long time I'm just like why do you have that you guys are not going out you never did <laughs> no that's no, we were, so we weird were friends. that's so we were weird friends. we were friends it's so weird that you would have that we were like friends. if you're not going out we would make out I, shit. like sure but I would we I friends. would never that would never occur to me like if yeah. there was some dude that I was hanging out with but I wasn't really sleeping with or whatever but he was just my best friend I would never have a whole album <laughs> well we knew each on other Facebook real, we knew each other real well me and this Look, dude one time, one that's time, weird one time, it's weird one time me and Jen were it's taking weird. her back to her apartment and she forgot her fucking purse at the club. We had to drive all the way back. To- we had to go all the way back and get it because she left yeah, it. Yeah, and by the time I fucking she was got drunk her back to her shit. fucking apartment, she had passed out in the back seat of the, the old car that I had. It was the Mustang, wasn't it? I think it was the Mustang. Yeah. It was either the Mustang or... Yeah, yeah I think it was the it Mustang. It was the Mustang. Sonya weighed 95 pounds. Maybe she's a, super maybe skinny. Maybe 100 pounds. She's tiny, tiny. And she's yeah. short. She's yeah. like 4'11". She's like 4'10", 4'11", and super skinny. 
a hundred pounds and twenty pounds Maybe. that was implants really soaking wet. So I fucking pull her out of the back seat and throw her over my fucking shoulder. Yeah, you're like, let's take her in. carry her (laughs) into the apartment. She pees down my back. Yeah. She didn't even wake up. Because Tom's like, why is my back wet? And I was like, oh. oh." (laughs) She peed down his back. Yeah, she's all implants and boots. She was asleep. Big old fucking goth boots and shit. I mean, I'm not going to like shit up. Because look, look. She was cool. She was a cool chick. Yeah. Cool. I was, like Sonia. Yeah, yeah. Don't talk bad about her that much. I wouldn't she's trust just, her as far as I could throw her, though. She was like the local version of Cher. She was like Cher Bonus. She could do yeah. Cher. Do a Cher impersonation. I mean, her Cher, her Cher impersonation and she, was yeah. epic. <laughs> I will say that. All right, I gotta pee. Go ahead. But seriously. Yeah. More Jen's butt though. heard about it. But I'm not one. Well, no, no she, like, she liked you, though. The, the, I doubt that. No, yeah, she did. She liked you. That was as far as that chick would like another chick. Uh, it doesn't get... That's it. That's it. She doesn't understand women the way I understand them. But, um, no. Sonia... No, Sonia fucking liked her. Okay. She liked her as much as a girl would like... The, uh, as, as Sonya would like another girl. Sonya did not like other girls at all. And she wasn't just her. That was her rival. The guy she had a kid with had another girlfriend. Had a, He had a girlfriend who was another hot goth chick from the past. And he had a kid with that one too. So he had two baby mamas. And there was a bunch of fucking rivalry behind those two. Two baby mamas competing for fucking dominance over the, the baby daddy. And here's the thing is, I didn't fucking want to hang out with some chick who had a baby daddy and fucking all this and that. And I'm in between all this. I'm not mad with you. <laughs> Come on. But I liked her. She was my friend. I was just telling her, you know, fucking... Sonya's main rival was her baby daddy's other baby mom. Aurora. No. Oh. No. Oh, that oh. Yeah, the what baby that daddy had another baby mom. She wasn't around during your time. She was around before I, But your I time. know her. But yeah, she's I only brunette. met her like one or two times. And then I can't remember her Sonya was fighting the other baby mama. Yeah. Because he had two kids. I mean, it's just like I said, I don't. Drama, yeah. Well, yeah, it's just kind of like, look, Baby I'm just. Mama drama. I'm a right. real ass person. Yeah. And I don't like deception. Yeah. I don't like passive aggression. I don't like anything like that. Like I said, if you have a problem with me, please tell me to my face. Um, don't do this weird backbiting kind of shit. Yeah. I really don't like that. Okay. I really don't. We've been doing all this fucking drama shit. I'm just glad you guys could uh, be with us on the Saturday, or excuse me, on the Friday. Um, we're uh, helping you guys enter into the weekends, uh, giving you something to do, and uh, being your drinking partner for the very beginning of the week. There's uh, The weekend is coming. Tomorrow, me and Jim will be going out. We're going to go dance to some we're 80s shit club. and your new boots. That's right. Hopefully that works In out. In the meantime... If y'all want to buy us a drink, you can go ahead and drop a super chat down in the comment section. We will answer all super chats. And if you're listening to this recording, if you give us a super thanks, we Jen a uh, response to all super thanks that you give her. I do, absolutely. I mean, this show is obviously pretty freewheeling. Yeah, but I do true. do a lot of work for the That's other true. kind of shows. If anybody, and if anybody ha- has a suggestion or any questions for us, you can drop them in the comment section and we can fucking steer the conversation in that direction too. Although, although this is also fun. Yeah, yeah. But it's almost 10. I'm going to say that this weekend, probably Sunday, I am putting up a review of Stop Motion, uh, the British horror movie, which just came out late last year. Uh, I watched that and I did a review of it. So I'm going to be putting that. I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to put it up on Sunday. Murder Hornet's gone. Get the fuck out of here, bro. No, no, no. Yeah, Murder Hornet's got to leave. We're having a good time. Okay. We're having a good time. We're having a good time. Mini share. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Erica said, I hate baby mama drama. Yeah, baby mama drama. I mean, one of the peak reasons, well, I don't know if it's the main reason, um, that I never had children <laughs> or never wanted children. Just seems to, like, bring up too many complicated issues. And I don't like, 
complicated issues. <laughs> you know what I mean? Phantom said, after this, I'm going to watch Single White Female. Um, one of these days, we need to review that movie. Because I really actually do like that movie. But, whew. like, here's the thing. I know that a lot of people have a perception that a lot of women are like that. And maybe they are. I don't, I don't really know. Um, but please don't tar all of us with that same brush. I am not like that. A lot of women, honestly, every woman that I'm friends with is not like that. Um, we actively avoid people like that, as presumably most dudes do as well. Um, I don't really like people like that. I don't really like people of any gender that are um, deceptive in any way or passive aggressive or in any way or just, you know, looking what for what you can do for them or doing shit behind your back. I really, really don't like that. I don't really care what gender you are, but I, I really, really don't like that. Um, yeah, High Desert said, why would any chick fight over a dead be dead? I don't get it. I don't get it either. Like I said, I don't really want to get too far. I mean, they're still together. Apparently, it's working out. He never married her, I don't think. Um, she was very... Because um, we were still... He would not come out with her. Um, he was in a band and stuff, so he was, like, in the scene, but I don't know him that well, so I'm not really going to say anything about him, but, Who? um, I'm not saying what his name is. Oh, okay. Thank you, Jeffy R. Thank you very much. Oh, we got a super chat. We got a super chat. What did he say? Nothing. Nothing? I'll okay. Just give us a super Thank chat. you, Jeff. But, um, the thing about it, like, so she would come out, he didn't want to go out. Because he's like, oh, I don't really like whatever it was. So we used to pick her up every Saturday night and take her out. like, Because they weren't living together at that time. She was living in the apartment mm -hmm. with her with their daughter. Yeah. And so we would pick her up. You know, her daughter would go to the <laughs> sitter or whatever. And it's just like, so we would go out. And then we'd have to hear about all the stories about what a shithead he was and stuff yeah. like that. So, like I said... Which is I, sometimes entertaining. I, 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 yeah, I mean, like, I kind of knew him yeah. because he did come out. Because remember how I used to yeah. go to lunch with, yeah. um, with uh, you know, Brian and Becky yeah, yeah, and them? Yeah. And it's like, he would come sometimes yeah. without her. And... If you all remember uh, last week, uh, Anastasia, who was a guest on the show, on the last one, Anastasia for a while was Brian and Becky's girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. Because they have Brian and Beck um are older than us. They're about our age. About our age. Yeah. Um they're they're, they're, they're attorneys. They're, yeah, they're attorneys. They're very into the fetish scene. They go to all the fetish parties and stuff like that. They always almost always have a third yeah, got some other chick. Yeah. Um, because Beck is uh, bisexual. Yeah, it's so, not him. It's the it's the wife. So they always and they and I've been to their house many times and they have um you know fetish shit and like the whole X shaped thing that you strap dungeon people. Dungeon stuff. Yeah. They have dungeon stuff in their house. Yeah. So they always have a third. Anastasia was their third for a while. Yeah. Um, but that was a long, long time. Yeah. Ago. They've they've had many since then. Yeah. And keep replacing them. Never really seems to work out there. Does it? Yeah, that last one got pissed and fucking stormed off and tried to hook up with us. Remember that? Yes. Yeah, she made attempts. All of a sudden, we just started, did, I started yeah. got friend requests. Yeah. Yeah. But then she well, vanished. I don't know what happened. To her. And Beck told me that too. She's yeah. like, "That's kind of one of the downfalls of this lifestyle, mm -hmm. is that you know, there's obviously there's going to be jealousy in any relationship, yeah. but you're it's going to be like yeah. multiplied." Yeah. In that kind of shit. So you have to, like, really deal with it. It's all good, Rich Jeff. You are. It's all right. <laughs> oh, my God. Please don't worry about it. We're all broke. <laughs> We're all broke. Phantom said she was a hottie. Oh, indeed she was. Who? Anastasia. Yeah. Well, she still is a hottie. Yeah. Yeah, she's a hottie. She's lost a lot of weight before. Yeah, she's actually, like, a, she's lost some weight, and she was, like, not happy about it, no. she said. Well, it's because she fucking looked great with a little more weight on her. She was real curvy, kind of a Marilyn Monroe, no, even more, 
Now she looks like a fashion model. She's been living in New York. Fucking, it's expensive to eat there. But when she was here, man, yeah, like she lives with her sister ago, in yeah. Spanish Harlem. Yeah, she is um, teaching yeah. at this point. Yeah, and. I always liked her. She's very... Real I like her because she's like... She's super hot and stuff like yeah. that, but she's super nerdy. Nerdy and intelligent. Love Which Star Trek. I love She'll that. She'll go on and on about Star Trek all I day long. I love that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And like me and her, we're talking about Stranger Things like because she loves fucking mm-hmm. Stranger Things. So we were talking about that in the bathroom like while she was getting ready and stuff like, make Tom watch it. It's so good. Blah, blah, yeah. blah. So I've watched it like five times. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's tall. She's about six feet tall. She's a lot taller than we are. Yeah, fucking. Uh, I I met her a long time ago before I met you. Yeah, she's been around a long yeah. time. But like I said, she moved away like 10, yeah. 11, 12 years ago. We were making out. Do you know that? No. I didn't tell you that. Yeah, we were no, making out. Fucking Brian that. fucking busted that shit up. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? I didn't know who Brian and Becky was oh. at that time. It was that early. Oh, I think you kind of told Have me. Remember I told you that? Yeah. 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 She didn't know who I was either. She's not who gave you the STD, right? <laughs> just asking. I don't have STD. No, I'm just saying. No. She, she slept on our couch, everybody. Yeah, yeah. No. but We no, have that, a couch in her living room. Yeah. She slept on that. That was like a long time ago. She might not even remember that. She probably doesn't. She didn't say anything about it. Mm. Well, no. I talked to her for fucking years after that. Yeah. Dude, you know. We were just buddies. Yeah. We were both, we were both drinking. That's how I met her. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey. But then I met her through, and then also started hanging out with her through Little Swell. Little Swell dated her. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. You guys know who Little Swell is. Little Swell's never been on the show. But I've been talking about Little Swell. One of these days. One of these days we have Little Swell on the show. He's from New York. He's a buddy of mine. And he's a little bit shorter than me. He's not Swell, though, but I call him Swell. I call him Swell mm-hmm. because he loves 80s action flicks. He's young. Even though he's fairly young he's, he's young, only in his yeah. 30s he's just in his 30s yeah he was in his 20s when we met him and he was just a fun kid from new york he's from Ma- manhattan and his dad owned this really big uh landscaping company working for billionaires he's been on he told me some fucking billionaire properties in new york that were fucking amazing he said one of the places that he went and he did the landscaping he also did a bunch of lighting and part of the house had a staircase that went under the ground, under that fucking house. I think it was. I think it might have been in my Manhattan. And underneath the grass was the fucking theater that looked like it was from the 1920s or the 1930s. Underneath that house that could seat about a hundred people. And it had a fucking. It was there for a long time, but it had a. Um, it had been fully modernized with like HD projection screens and fucking like a million dollar stereo system and, and everything and it was where some one of those damn billionaires lived in it and it was his private theater he said it was creepy going down in there yeah because they had a whole he had a whole underworld underneath that piece of property can I say we got yeah, another yeah. super chat okay yeah, yeah from high desert what's up high desert what's up thanks we got another super chat what do you say have some extra rum and cokes thank you can you recommend a good seventies Satan movie, other than Rosemary's Baby? Oh, the, the one Exorcist. with fucking the one with uh, was that Lee Majors? No, no, the one with uh, the one with uh, fucking uh, William Shatner. Remember with the book? oh, The Devil's Reign. The Devil's Reign, yeah. I love that movie. That good. Anton Lavey was in Anton that. Anton Lavey was in it. He was a consultant on it. Yeah. He was in it for like five seconds. Mm-hmm. But Ernest Borgnine. also, yeah, you get to Ernest see Ernest Borgnine. Borgnine in a goat head. Yeah, yeah. Well, not a goat head exactly, but like goat head makeup. Yeah, I love that movie. They're in this like old west. Um, you might have already seen that one. Ghost Town. That. Yeah, it was controlled so by good. Satanists. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah, and it's and the, and the movie has like a fucking advisory warning in the beginning that this shit like is we real. couldn't handle it. Yeah, like you have to understand something. This I'm, shit's real. That I'm was sorry. the advisory warning. This is real. They okay. really are. I think that was one of the that was one of the movies that started the whole satanic panic thing uh. of the of the early eighties. It's because they were making shit like that. Here's more money. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Who's Victor. that? That's Victor. Is it Victor again? Okay. I forgot to tip Jenny earlier for getting the Eddie Izzard reference. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. When you said cheesy crazy. Yeah. I immediately knew what you were talking about. Immediately. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 
Yeah, the car is another good one. High desert. Honestly, car. we did a review. I love the car. I got it on Blu-ray. The we car. did a review of the car. Yeah. And it might have been Race with the Devil, too. Yeah. Like both of those movies. I think we did a double feature yeah. review of those two movies. Another good if you go one back from and look. the seventies that you can get. I think you can get it on DVD. I'm not sure you can get it on Blu-ray. It was a made-for-TV movie that you can get called uh, Gargoyles. Uh. Gargoyles is a. It was really good for the seventies. We reviewed 70s that TV. one, and it was kind of satanic about you know the gargoyles. Okay. Were kind of like these demonic fucking race of beings that slept most of the time, but now they're coming out from underneath this mountain out in fucking the desert and in California out in Mojave. They're grabbing people, grabbing women, and gonna go, one of them's gonna crossbreed with women and shit. Fucking, it's it's they can talk. It's it's a wild flick. It had good costumes for the time. I think we did review that one. Actually. Yeah, gargoyle. But see, that's. Demons, man. They're yeah, just kind of like, ah, yeah. hey, we're just gonna sleep or whatever. It's like, oh wait, we need to like wake up and do some stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll just like kidnap this one woman and impregnate her or whatever, and then we're just like going back to sleep. You said yeah. never heard of that one. He must be talking about never heard of uh, gargoyles, or you never heard of fucking uh, the one with uh, Shatner. What was the one with Shatner? The Devil's Reign. Devil's Reign. That's right. The Devil's yeah. Reign. Honestly, I really like that movie. It's pretty good. I really like that movie. Yeah, when I saw it, and it actually had some pretty good technology for the time. Remember, they had that damn magic crystal ball that had like a screen in it. Yeah, that Satanists had. Yeah, yeah. How'd they do that? Do you remember? It was some kind of projection. I mean, yeah, it was probably like a green screen. Yeah. Victor says, "Does anyone remember?" Yeah, Night of Gargoyles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phantom said, "Yeah, you did, Jenny. It was a double feature." Yeah, I'm pretty sure we did the car and race with the devil yeah. because they were both kind of like vehicle related and also kind of satanic related so i'm pretty sure that we did because we watched them both around the same time victor says do does anyone remember night of lepus of course yeah giant killer bunny rabbits how could you forget that she told me about 1974 it. there was a british movie that kind of reminds me of that when she talked about it it's called day of the triffids it was a yeah. british movie it's about not killer alien plants. Yeah, it scared me as a kid, but you told me it's not that good, so I don't. Remember. Okay, I will say. Okay, so it's based on a novel or a novella by John Wyndham, yeah. who was a very famous British author. I will say that the book is about a hundred times better than the movie. The movie is good, but it's not great. It was low like, budget. Yeah, like I watched it when I was a kid and I was like, ooh, but then like I watched it again recently yeah. to do like a review like, Doesn't hold you know, up, in huh? the last couple and I was just like, man, that's it's so boring. It's really boring. I mean, I found it kind of boring. And that's saying a lot because I don't usually find stuff boring, but I find that kind of boring. But it was the book was way better. Phantom had a comment. Just read the book. Just read the book, seriously. Uh, another good Satan film from 1974 would be uh, People People Toys, a.k.a. The Devil Times Five, which is free on YouTube. It's got a young Leaf Garrett in it. Oh, my huh, God. I've never seen that one. I don't think I've ever seen that one. Oh, my God. I have to watch yeah. that, like, right away. I'm always kind of like, man, how many fucking movies came out in the 70s that I didn't even know? And I was even alive back then. And I remember. But there was a lot of good movies in the seventies. There were. There were a lot of good B movies in the seventies. Well, and there were a lot of good made for TV. There was yeah. a lot of good made for TV. Yeah, Salem's too. Rot a lot is excellent from the seventies. I mean, that was Toby Hooper. Yeah, excellent. Too. Salem's Lot. If you haven't seen it, see it. They're remaking that, you know. Hopefully, they do it right. We'll see. The made for TV Salem's Lot I thought was damn near perfect, except. Um, I mean, Mr. Reggie Marlar should have spoken. No, I don't agree. I don't Mr. agree. Mr. Barlow could talk. Nope. I don't agree. I don't know. Man, don't make your monster talk. Don't make your monster talk. It just ruins it. Well, if he it talks, ruins he has it. to say some wild shit. Because, you see, in Omega Man, the, the, the mutants could talk. And that's really what made the story. Right, but that's kind of a different situation. And they were the monsters. Or was that's Neville kind the of monster? A... You're not really quite sure. Neville was the monster. Yeah. I mean, that was the initial intent of the novel. Yeah. That was the initial intent of the book. But he was trying to do shit from, like, the opposite Neville was trying side. to preserve the old world. Right, but like yeah. like I said, the whole point of the book was that the old world was 
gone, so there was nothing left well, to preserve. Was it really gone because he had a cure? Remember the kids? Right, right, right. But that didn't happen in the book, it, really. It, in the movie, it happened. Right. In Omega Man, it happened. So in a way, he was Neville was more sympathetic in in the Omega Man. A yeah. Lot more. He was sympathetic in the book too, but the whole point of the book was that you were following this protagonist, you know, three quarters of the way through the novel, and then you realized he was the bad guy. Like, he yeah. was the monster. Like, that was... It was a subversion. That's what he was trying to do. And I kind of feel like they didn't really do that with the movie, except for the Vincent Price one kind of did that. Yeah. But that was kind of the whole point of the book. That's, like, what he was doing. Jeff Yar says Toby Hooper, Toby Hooper captured the... the, the the oh, big time! That movie, uh, big that time. That book, well, yeah, yeah. He did a really good job with that. High Desert said, "Jen, you should review some of the um, wacky, wacky Christian Chris. apocalypse movies." I've thought about it, <laughs> like some of like Left Behind and all that kind of stuff. The problem is that the quality of those movies is not very good. They're not super fun to watch. Like the, the only really good Christian kind of apocalyptic horror movie was the one that had the, the dude from fucking Aliens. In it, where they were killing the demons. Frailty? Uh, what's that? Frailty. Frailty. Yeah, Frailty. Jenny can remember all the titles. I don't really remember. That was a fantastic movie. Yeah. Fantastic. Christian movies can be good. It's just. Just that, not usually. It's just not usually. They don't have the writing. And, and the reason why they're not good is because there's an agenda in the yeah. script. You never really want a, an obvious agenda. It doesn't matter what your political orientation. You want a fucking story. Just make a good story. One of the best Christian movies of all times, The Exorcist. That's sure. a Christian movie. Yeah. That says the devil's real. Yeah. If the devil and the real, Catholics beat it. Yeah. And if the devil's real, then that means there's a God. That's a Christian movie. Sure. No one has a problem with that. Yeah. Absolutely nobody. Right. Atheists like yeah. me, I yeah. love that fucking like, movie. Yeah. 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 And uh, in a because it's a good fucking movie, yeah. And Rosemary's Baby would be a Christian movie, although that's kind of a satire. Well, the novel was the intended as a satire, yeah. But, but the yeah. movie was is that no, they're Satanists, sure. The Christians love that shit, and it's that's, real, yeah, right. And then, uh, and the and, and it, not only was there not only were there Satanists, there was the devil, yeah, that got fucking it Rosemary got her pregnant, pregnant, right? I mean, that was the whole so that's a Christian movie, sure. Um. I don't have an issue Frailty with that. Frailty was a Christian movie. You yeah. Know, religious wackos killing people because they're demons. Turns out, no, they were demons. And the demons were, yeah. They were real. They were yeah. really demons. Yeah. Spoiler So alert. that was a great Christian movie. Shit like Left Behind or whatever, the the execution's probably not very good. I mean, um, from- Even I've though seen, Nicolas Cage was in the first- Nick Nelson Cage, he'll, he, he was in a, that was in a time where he'd do anything. He's just like, yeah, just give he me a check. He couldn't even really cage the check, fuck out. But I'll, yeah. I imagine that's fucking tedious to watch. Because I've just seen, I've seen it. It is very tedious. Is yeah, I've seen just clips of it. It is I'm very all tedious. Like, I couldn't bring uh, myself uh, to watch the other ones. I'm yeah. like, eh, I have too much respect for my time. I'm I've said really... before on this show, I would fucking love for there to be, now that you have CG, you could make a movie about Revelations. Bitch, Literally why? Literally out of fucking the book of Revelations. Come on, that would be awesome. With the lamb, and the yeah. seven seals, and fucking all that, that shit. And, and you show it as it's described, like a music video. Yeah, it'd be good. Well, if you haven't seen, like I said, I know you love um, Darren Aronofsky's Noah. Noah, great Christian flick. He well, also, flick too. yeah, he also made a movie called Mother, yeah. which is a... Um, it's not straight up religious, but it is based on, um, the kind of book of Genesis sort of narrative, like a Cain and Abel, yeah. uh, mother earth kind of thing. Okay, it's yeah. metaphorical. I loved it. A lot of people really hated it. And it's like, I don't really, like, I thought it was awesome. I haven't seen it. So I you might like, you might like it. Yeah. You might like it. But like, it, I kind of feel like a lot of people hated it because they didn't get what it was doing. Yeah. I don't, I, you know, I don't really know. But it is, it's a religious metaphor. He yeah. makes a lot of movies like that, but he makes them um, like Noah was. He's yeah. like, well, I'm going to take what's in the scripture. And make that what it And says. just make that literally. Right. right. Even though it wasn't, it wasn't um, Genesis. It was also a lot of the stuff that come, came from the Apocrypha. 
right. right, exactly. Because there's a lot of shit that you, your average normie Christian doesn't know that there's other books that are like that outside that were left the Bible. out. There's sure, a bunch of shit. Because the Jews, the Jews wrote all kinds of extended universe stuff, and a lot of a lot of the stuff that was in Noah came from the Jewish stuff. I think it was what was it, Book of Jubilee? I think is where 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 a lot of that came from. Which is you know it's not. Christian can, can, can it's not Christian can, can you sure but it is in the Judeo Christian universe yeah right? and there's more detail in that I think it was Jubilee is where they got it from mm. um, so there's a lot more in there and it's a lot more movieable and if you haven't seen Darren Aronofsky's fucking Noah you're fucking wrong all right that shit is as good as Alien or Prometheus or in, I love Prometheus a lot of people didn't like it. Uh, it, and it's a movie like that. You're on this fucking ancient world that has aliens on it, which they came from the heavens. All right, they're the Watchers. That's what they were called. I mean, yeah, Look, Watchers. He's the watchers just showing were, right. what watchers, exactly was in the yeah. story. The watchers, I'm showing was, you what exactly is in the, the story. The Watchers were what you would call the fallen angels, or the angels. Some have been right. fallen into the earth. So some of them actually kind of got. Because they were punished, they got merged and they became rocky. And then there was uh, what was his name? Fucking Tubal Cain, who was like I guess might have been a descendant of Cain. Okay. Well, yeah. And uh, he's he's trying to save his people, even though God or Yahweh Yahweh he's trying to fucking flood them all out because they ain't worth the shit. And they had technology. They it looked like they had internal combustion. Uh, they're uh, they had cities too, but it was it was just a good flick. It was like something out of cross between Prometheus and Conan and the Bible. I'm gonna have to wild show you. Flick, man. I'm gonna have to show you Mother now. Yeah, I, I'm flick. interested to know because yeah. I loved it because I immediately yeah got the metaphor I, and I, you probably would too. Yeah, so you might be into it. I'm not really sure. I grew up with Bible stories. They capture you might the, really like it. I grew up with Bible stories, and they capture the imagination of, of young kids, and they kind of become part of your mythos, you know. Well, Assad from Saudi Arabia, he, he's Muslim. I told him about that movie. He watched it too because you know they have that a, a similar version of that same story of, of the flood story. Yeah, and he and he a was lot blown of away. He loved it. He goes, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. So you know. It's it's just a good story. Well, yeah, like like I said, it was a good story. It was a good story then, too. You know what I mean? It, and I, I it, it it's sci it was sci fi then too. I think if you ask me, it was all sci fi. Uh, <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. It's just yeah. kind of like look, from heaven means aliens. And that's how they're shown. See, in this I movie. don't have a dog in that fight. Yeah, I'm yeah. like like I said, I'm an atheist. I don't really believe that any of this stuff is real. So it's just kind of like, just show me. You can base says. you can right. base it on religious shit. You can base it on Bible stories. And stuff. I'm not biased or anything like that. Just yeah. show me a good fucking movie. Yeah, you know what I mean. Entertain me. Um, and if you can do that, then I'm not gonna get butt hurt that it's like yeah. oh, based because I don't think it's real. Yeah, it's the kind of the same thing that I was like if somebody made a movie, but like Clash of the Titans. Yeah, that's how I see it. Right. It's like it's like Clash of the Titans. Yeah, it is. Well, it's the same thing. Sure. That's what I mean. So it, so it doesn't offend me. It doesn't, no. nothing like that. I'm not no. offended by Christian movies or anything like that. No. It's just the thing about it is that a lot of Christian movies, yeah. they're so worried about making a movie to push their agenda that they forget to make a good movie. I don't, I'm going to insult a bunch of people right now, probably if you're of faith, uh, don't, you just got to forgive me for it, but this is true. <clears throat> the... The Septuagint, which was the original version, and it was written in Greek, the original version of the Old Testament, and that was where, it's not as old as people think it is, but that was where a lot of the, uh, uh, the Jewish literature comes from that ended up, you know, that influenced the Torah and everything. The Septuagint was really kind of like the hillbilly version of the Greek pantheon. It's still the same God. It's still, it's just not on Mount Olympus, but it's God's his demigods, his sons, and 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 the children that they had with mortal people. It's like this, you know, the sons of God had children with mortal men, and they became the Nephilim. That's demigods sure. in the Greek system. It's yeah. the same system. It's just yeah, yeah. The Jewish version was more 
backwoodsy in those days. So the center, of, the center of civilization was Greece in that time. So, but it's the same system. Once you understand the two, so yeah, Darren Aronofsky's movie is basically Clash of the Titans. It's just the Jewish version. Sure. That's and that's what I mean. Yeah. It's just kind of like there's a reason yeah. why those stories have persisted yeah. for thousands of years. They're good stories. They're good stories. Yeah. Um, that doesn't mean that they're true, literally. Yeah. Um, but they're good stories. And like I said, I can respect that. So like I said, if you're going to make a movie like Darren Aronofsky did with Mother yeah. that was based on um, essentially like the book of Genesis, yeah. but, you know, a metaphorical version yeah. of it. I'm not offended as an atheist. I'm not offended by that. I just like, it's a good story. I, I enjoyed the old classic Hollywood version. I think it was called Greatest Story Ever Told. That yeah, had, yeah, yeah. Had yeah, Chiston that was a good movie it. too. That was a good movie too. It had Cheston in it, Charlton Heston. It had fucking, um, the ball guy. Fucking, what's his name? He was in fucking... Yul Brenner. Yul Brenner, yeah. He See, was, he was the original right. Terminator. <laughs> in Yul, Westworld. In Westworld. Fucking Yul Brenner, he played fucking Pharaoh in it, and they go through the, all the fucking plagues of Egypt. And that's a great, almost like a like a Godzilla movie or a sure. horror movie. It, it, it's, it's good. It's good. It's real good. Like I said. And they haven't recreated that. They need to do that story again. With, with CG, you So much to mine there. Some, so much to mine. With CG, you could make a badass fucking, uh, uh, fucking plagues of fucking Egypt story. See, like I said, I kind of feel like Aronofsky is like the only he person that do that. that's doing that. Yeah, yeah. Like that is going that because I know you haven't seen Mother, now but I gotta see it now. I gotta see it. Yeah. You would pro. I don't know. Like you would either love it or hate it. I'm not sure. I really liked it, but a lot of people hated it. I get it. But you would know immediately what that was, so you might be really into it. I thought it was awesome, but you know. I've thought about. I mean, okay. One of my favorite channels, it's not so much on YouTube, but they kind of do more um, like podcast stuff, but they have a channel on uh, uh, YouTube too, but it's just kind of like just audio is, um, man, what do they call them? It's a bunch of atheists. It's like three of them and they review Christian movies, like shitty ones, like the Kirk Cameron ones and all that kind of stuff. And it's, hilarious like a lot of times their podcast will be like <laughs> twice as long as the movie is because they're just kind of like discussing it and making jokes about it and stuff but it's just like super super funny and i don't really know like i said i've read a couple books about like why specifically christian entertainment because they have their own um sub culture i guess you would call it and it's just kind of like the movies and stuff that they it's just not most of it's just really not that good and i've read a couple books about why that might be but i think it just might be because well they don't really have um the openness to explore because you know darren aronofsky he doesn't really have a like i said he's not he doesn't have anything invested in um, you know, I don't really believe in this. I don't really like, so it's not to his benefit. It's like, I'm trying to push an agenda or anything. He's just trying to make a movie about shit that he's interested in. He's yeah. not, and like I said, and I think that the problem with a lot of super Christian media is that they're so constrained by their beliefs well we can't do this and we can't do that and we have to like show this and that and the other thing that's really like shooting yourself in the dick yeah like what when, when you're an artist you just kind of have to be able to do whatever like even if it's uncomfortable scroll down for you. dora sent us a thing and she says she likes god awful movies remember that one that was a good yes podcast. god awful movies that's good it's a good podcast we, oh we, my we god i love yeah. God awful movies. The Thank you for Christian me. movies. Yeah. Now was the uh, was the one with uh, Yul Brenner and Charlton Heston? Was that called the Ten Commandments or was it the greatest? Story I think ever it told? was Ten Commandments. Ten Commandments. Uh, which one was the greatest story ever told? That was the one about Jesus. I think that was the Jesus. The Jesus, um, Jesus movie. Yeah. Crucifixion. Ten narrative. Commandments. I want to see that one again. I remember Yul Brenner killing it. He just do it. At I feel style. like we watched it not yeah, like yeah. a couple years back. Yeah. I mean, Yule Brenner is good in everything. Fucking Yule, yeah. That dude was so fucking sexy. Mm -hmm. But yeah. 
Because he was bald. He was bald and well, short. Well, I don't know if it was just he was because. bald, short, and kind of jacked. <laughs> Well, he had like, and also he had like charisma. Yeah. Like he had that kind of face and yeah. he had that voice and shit like that. Well, he was partially. It was uh, a whole thing. He was it partially was a whole thing. Mongolian, if I remember correctly. Wasn't he from, he's Russian? Was oh, I Mongolian. can't remember now. I think he was partially Mongolian or something. Maybe. He had a cool look, kind of a slightly Asian look to him. You might have to give me another drink. All right, yeah, yeah. Just one more. Yeah. Victor says, I was an atheist until Jesus appeared on my tortilla. Turns oh. out. <laughs> Zach, wait a minute. It turns out Zach de la Rocha from Rage Against the Machine, but still. <laughs> oh my god. And I, like I said, I don't mean to be like offensive to anybody that is um, religious or anything like that, but I don't remember. I was not raised religious. Um, I was raised like bullshit religious. They were just kind of like, yeah, God, whatever. Um, you know, people gave me books of Bible stories when I was a little kid and shit like that. But it wasn't anything. I never went to church. I think the only time I went to church when I was a kid was when I was staying over with my cousins once or twice. So it was just not something that was a part of my life. And then like when I was older, like when I was got to be like 11 or 12 or something, and I got really into like Greek mythology and Roman mythology. I got all into like all these other mythologies. And it occurred to me that I was just like, man, like people back when the ancient Greeks were alive, they probably thought this was real the same way that people nowadays like think, you know, X, Y, and Z is real. So it's just kind of like, so it never, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm just like not predisposed to believe in that kind of stuff. I'm just not. So I'm just not. Man, I like all the fucking epic but there, it, but like I said, I. But it's interesting stories. to me. Like it's interesting yeah. to me because it's interesting to me yeah. how different cultures yeah, interpret different yeah. things and believe different things. I mean, That's if, interesting. If you made a I'm not ass, shitting on if anybody. You made a badass Mormon movie. I'd fucking like. Sure. Where you got fucking Joseph Smith and fucking the Angel Moroni talking to him. Yeah, I would watch that. Got the tablets and the glasses and shit. The fucking American government's after him. He's fucking trying to divide up people's women and take other. People. I would fucking love a movie like that, but it has to be told like as, like it's real. Like yeah, shit really happened. And, and you got to make it a good story. You can't yeah. just make it like an agenda, like to push your agenda. You right. like that's always and then, like, like lame. fucking Maroney's telling telling Smith that no man, if you uh, do this and that, fucking God will make you a god of your own planet. You know. And explain the whole system and everything, and all the all the wild shit. And they need to show us this, and it would be yeah. a badass move. I would watch that. It's not just talking about it. I want to see it. Right. And yeah. like I said, you have to also. Story, like I said, the the problem is that a lot of times, is that people that are making religious movies are making stuff not because they want to make a movie but they're because they're they're trying to spread a message yeah that's not how you do it and if you're gonna do that then the movie is probably not going to be good because no. you're trying to spread a message and that's your main objective yeah. and if you're gonna there make good the art there goes the entertainment yeah there, there goes, goes your art. entertainment value Go because on. nobody that already doesn't believe what you believe is not going to want to watch that mm. i wouldn't watch that no, I want. But no, like I said, I will movie. happily watch Darren Aronofsky's Noah, even yeah. though I don't believe any of that shit really he's, happened. He's stuck to that premise. Sure, I'm gonna show you what it said. This, this is, is what, what it said in the book. I'm said, gonna make that. Is. That's right. And I was like, awesome. I love yeah. that. Yeah, and it was, and it, he made a good movie. Yeah, because it's visual. You get to sure. see what what it was, what what it is that the story. And he didn't about. have any agenda. He was like, yeah. I'm not trying to make you believe this really happened. I'm not nope. trying to like. Yeah, it was that. It's just it's just showing you what it was. Right, right, right. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm, that, that's what, you know, I would fucking go with the Mormon faith. Let me see it. Let me see what they're talking about. Because it'd be some wild shit, man. Because, you see, the Mormons had a good narrative. They had a lot of fucking detail to the story. I mean, that was ballsy for and, sure, yeah. like the shit they came There's up with. There's a lot of stuff in there. I wouldn't have the balls to come up with that and, stuff, but okay. And it's uniquely American. It is. I would like to actually see the ancient America that they talk about in the Book of Mormon, where the Israelites are in ancient America. I want to see that. <laughs> Just, yeah. And I want it serious, like, you know. I mean, they're as, like one one rung down from Scientology to yeah. me. Yeah. Well, you know, faith is a faith. 
Okay. Sure. But like I said, I don't get it. I'm it, not. It I didn't has grow a, up like that. It so has I don't a get it, wild but. canon. It does. It does. And the motif is actually pretty Gnostic, and it's also kind of Masonic. Yeah. All right. So it looks like he knew what he was dollar, doing he for he was sure. Doing. So, and yeah. So it kind of has a Joseph lot of, Smith. I mean. Yeah. So there should actually be. The motif should look like something out of the dollar bill. Or something yeah. out of a like some Illu- Illuminati shit. Yeah, Illuminati looking sure. shit. Sure, that, really lean what, into it because that was the time in which all this stuff is coming from. Exactly, and that was the motif. And you have to have a real expert on that subject who's not really necessarily a believer, but just says, "No, I believe this story. I can show you what it is they're talking about," and not to ridicule it, but just to show exactly what it was talking about. It'd probably be an awesome movie. Yeah. It'd be wild. I don't know if fucking people would see it. The Mormons would probably get mad. But, but it'd probably be a badass movie. Because like really the, bad the, be, the best Christian movies made Christians mad. Exactly. All right. That's what I was just going to yeah. say. And I right. think that that's why a lot of Christian entertainment, because they yeah. have a whole subculture. They have a whole, it, it's a whole other economy. They yeah. have their own, uh, somebody right. mentioned Pure Flix. They have yeah. their own version of Netflix. Yeah. Which David A. R. White and I imagine Pure Fix fucking sucks was the dude that's responsible for that, and that dude has several um, TV sh- series on that that he stars in because of course yeah. he does, and he has like kind of frosted tips. It's a whole thing. Yeah. So w- the only reason I know that much about it is because there is this hilarious. If you guys are not subscribed to Nick DeRamio, um, he is this super over the top like gay guy and he reviews shitty 90s movies shitty lifetime movies and shitty christian movies he has a subscription to pure flicks and i'm gonna say like the shit that like when he takes down pure flicks movies and series are like the funny he is like the funniest dude on youtube he is fucking hilarious he's super bitchy and i love it i love it here's the thing I can understand. I don't have a disagreement with Christians trying to make more Christians and trying to propagate their stories and their faith. A faith is supposed to do that. What makes me fucking laugh is how ham-handed they are sure. about it. You cannot make a movie with the intent of making more Christians. It becomes obvious. So it becomes obvious yeah. propaganda. Like, Well, this has to be family-friendly it has to be Christian propaganda or we're not going to make the movie. No. Yeah. You have to t- make a fucking extremely entertaining, adventurous movie inside the Christian universe. That's how you make more Christians. They seem to be trying to do they're that, but they don't tr- really they don't seem... Do they don't really seem to be capable. No, yeah. The, 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 the creativity... Because the, the actual... creative. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. Like, actual creative people... Yeah. Um don't have the same constraints yeah. that they have. So it's like it's you're going to have a hard time finding actual creative people that are going to work on your shit yeah. because they're like, "Hey, we want to make this." And the people are like, "Eh, no nah, thanks." Uh, like, what I don't I, really want to What I would do is do I, that. I would work within canon of of the Old and the New Testament. But I would do stories that were exciting. And they necessarily, like, I'd do some shit in the Old Testament, do some Old Testament stuff. I'd do stories about Cain and Abel, but they'd be hard, they'd be pretty hardcore. And I'd do a bunch of stuff happening in the apocalypse. It would be kind of like a survival adventure story, kind of like Walking Dead. But it would, and there was, there are actually zombies in <laughs> the, uh, I mean, because it says that you know, at one point in Revelations, the dead were risen. You know, for a while, so the dead do come back in there. It would just have to be fucking perfectly serious, pretty much verbatim. But you, you have to tell a story within the lines of the canon, so you're not violating canon. It has to be within the canon. So in other words, it's kind of like extra canonical. Sure. Stories. And they have to be just good, you know, and it could be done. And that's how you make Christians. You don't look do it by fucking. Like good. I said, you know. Um, if you want an example, and I know this is going back away. If you want an example of like a Christian who made stuff that appealed to a mainstream audience, C. S. Lewis. 
Mm-hmm. Lie in the witch in the wardrobe. Yeah, if that, that is, is obviously a Jesus metaphor. Yeah. Um, you know, Aslan the lion is Jesus's persona. I didn't make that up, so please don't attribute that to me. But um, you know, it that was a Christian story, but yeah. it was still like a good story and yeah. People like me who were not raised super Christian could still read that and just read it as a cool fantasy story yeah. and not get all of that and bullshit what, that was what, attached to it. And what that does to a non-believer is it gives the Christian message, message to a non-believer in a way that non-believer goes, okay, I know what they're talking about. Didn't that, work, though, but... That yeah. line is Jesus, and that's what that's what Jesus... Right, I got that, but I was that, like, it's yeah, so that, that's, that's <laughs> But the thing is, is that's how you effectively yeah. spread shit, spread... I don't want to say propaganda, but to, to, to spread I mean, it is canon, kind of, yeah. You know, to spread faith that way. Sure. It's got to be indirect and real creative. And it has to be entertaining. Sure. And the person doesn't have to believe it as something that's historical, that happened. It's it's anal- it, it, it's uh, it, it, it's an analogy. Sure. And that's much more effective. That's what I Most mean. Most of the fucking canon is analogy anyway. And lot, that's kind of where I'm coming. Like I said, I kind of feel like I didn't, even though I read C.S. Lewis when I was a kid, and I just liked it as a um, fantasy story before I later realized that, oh, this is a Christian analogy. But I was already, at that point, I was already old enough to, you know, I, having not been really raised as super Christian or anything yeah. like that, I was just kind of like, oh, okay, I see what you're doing. But it didn't work on me because, you know, I was yeah. older at that time. Tammy says, Yul Brenner kills it in all his films. Yeah. Yeah, he does. That um, dude is like, he's super fucking foxy. Now, um, Thank you, Jeffy Art. Jeffy Art gave us another super chat. The issue with studios like Pure Flix, yeah, um, and Angel Studios, is they're so hung up on um, proselytizing. Yeah, yeah like, proselytizing. Yeah, that's what is, I was saying. You spread they lack again. complete self-awareness in yeah. their bubble. Yeah, that's kind of the thing, and that's yeah. kind of what happens. Like I said, Pure Flix, I've seen, like I said, not because I paid for it, but because I watched it with people making fun of it. Yeah. Um, either God Awful Movies or Nick DiRamio, who both do, you know, uh, vi- like long form videos, like yeah. breaking down the shit. Because I'm not going to watch it on my own time. Come on. Now, High Desert fucking brought up something good, man. And I never considered this before, but this is a good question. Wasn't Battlestar Galactica based on the Mormon story? I tell you what, now you say that Lauren You know Green, what? Maybe, maybe that, so. That would be a fucking very good. Yeah, yeah, it's close. They're trying to go to the promised land. They're sure. being attacked by a fucking force that hates them. Yeah, that's 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 the Mormons running from the American from the U.S. Army, trying to fucking establish fucking Salt Lake City. Yeah, that that and, and they didn't have the fucking Egyptian motifs and the ancient motifs sure. in Battlestar. The, if it isn't, if it isn't an analogy of fucking Mormonism, it should be. You could reinterpret it that as that. Well, like I said, I can make my own about. I can make my own battle star galactic. And Lauren Green would have been what Smith? Is that Smith? Joseph Smith, maybe. I don't know. Well, see, that's the thing. The reason that religions have persisted for such a long time is because they have good ass stories. Mm-hmm. So if you want to like maintain that, steal some fucking stories from that shit. Yeah. Because you know yeah. what I mean, like from old shit, because that's persisted. Well, if it, like you know that that's gonna if that hang is around. Mormonism, it would be like C.S. Lewis story. We have Mormons sure. rebooting their their faith and their story as a science fiction story. Sure, that'd be that's a good that's a good way that that'd be a good idea. Yeah, and yeah. a lot of authors have done that because, yeah. like I said, not everyone's dumb. Like everybody knows the same shit that I know. It's just kind of like look. These religions, these stories have persisted for thousands of years, and there's a reason for that. So it's like there must be some um, fundamental uh, thing about the story that is making it persist. Yeah. So we're going to, like, base something around that. Phantom asked when I'm going to show the car in the upgrade. It's going to make a video soon. There's been progress on the car. For those of you who don't know, I got my hands on a old lady's car. <laughs> she died. The husband lives across the street. He sold me the car. It's a 1999 Mercury Grand Marquis. It looks fucking beautiful. It is beautiful. It's like 97% looks brand new. 
It's a uh, like a metal flake burgundy color with pretty much all original. Did redid the fucking headliner in it. Fucking all leather gray interior. I had some progress on it recently. I told you all I was getting the damn error code on there for random misfire. I figured it out. I started thinking it was fuel pressure. So I ordered a fuel pressure regulator, a new fuel pump to rebuild the fuel cart the, the pump cartridge that's in the tank. Sending unit and everything's okay, so I just need to pull that shit out and put a new pump in it. And I went down to fucking Harbor Freight and got some fucking pressure gauges and checked my fucking pressure on the fuel pressure rail. Fuel pressure when cars running is supposed to be between 30 and 40 psi. With the old fuel pressure regulator in there, I was only getting about 20. So it was way under pressure. New fuel pressure regulator came in. That's a two minute job. Threw that in there. It went up to 27. Almost 30. Car runs beautiful now. I got the fuel pump. It came in also too, but that's it's going to be harder to get that in that tank. The fuel pump I got was instead of the stock fuel pump that the that the car came with, you can get those for about 40. I got the hundred dollar option out of the newer, newer ones, the 2011 town car, ground Vic, Grand Marquis. It's a turb, it's a different turbine that they said that it's the old fuel pump that died or is weak now had an estimated life of a hundred thousand miles. I'm at a hundred, 100, 100, 100,000 miles. The new fuel pump that's going in there has an estimated life of 300,000 miles. I only want to do it once. 100,000 miles from now, shit, I might be in my 70s by then. I don't want to go in there and do that shit again. This is going to be my last car. This is going to be the car I graduate with. Go to the afterworld. We may die in this car. I'm going to die. This is my last car. I don't want any more cars. <laughs> it's a 99 Marquis. Like, hopefully you're going to die with this wife. You're yeah. going to die with this car. That car. It's a 99 marquee with only 100,000 miles. Those cars aren't even broken in until like 200,000. You can get... There are cars out there because there are grand marquees out there with a half a million miles, 500,000, on the same engine. Which, wow, that'd be something, wouldn't it? Yeah. And see. for you foreigners, you know what it is. The grand marquee is the same car as the Crown Vic and the, and the uh, Lincoln Mercury. They were our cop cars livery cars and taxis. taxis yeah so they were built to fucking last now you got to replace shit schedule maintenance i got shocks that can go in there i'm also thinking about reactivating air suspension because it stock came with an air suspension it doesn't cost that much to get the, and they said air suspension ride fucking feels great they said it's the next best thing to an active suspension what I have in there now is just springs and shocks, because a lot of people deleted it in the, in, that when they got the Grand Marquis. As soon as that air pumped or airbags failed, they just went to the fucking delete kit. But I'm thinking about fucking, I got a delete kit, but I'm thinking about going back to fucking air ride. I want to see what that feels like. We'll see. I got the money. I need it. It doesn't cost much. For 160 bucks, I can reactivate it. And some elbow grease. Got to get it underneath there to do it. Put the new bags in and put a new pump in it. This should be ready to go. Hi Desert said, what was the name of the bitchy guy who does movie reviews? His There's... name is Nick Deramio. D-I-R-A-M-I-O. Um, he puts out uh, one or two videos a week. He does Lifetime movies, 90s like shitty romance movies, which are hilarious. And also, he has a subscription to Pure Flix, so every now and then he does, like, Christian movies, too. And he is, like, super, super bitchy, and it's awesome. Yeah. He is, like, the funniest fucking dude. He is the funniest dude on YouTube, I think. The fan of saying the fucking yellow fog lights would be cool. The Mercury uh, Marauder came with fog lights. It was the same car as I have, except it was black, and it was the uh, four-valve per cylinder instead of the two-valve. Made more horsepower, but I tell you what, man, you do not want a Marauder. You need to get like fucking 12 city and like fucking 18 highway. Right? They drink fucking fuel. I got the car I want. 
In Florida, you don't need fog lights. I got fucking high, um, uh, fucking high output LED headlights that are so bright, people fucking hit me with their fucking high beams all the time. I gotta adjust them so they go a little bit lower. I mean, they're they're at where they should be. Although since I readjusted them again, they haven't been hitting me with high beams anymore. Maybe that's no, I haven't seen that. The fucking headlights that are in there is one of the best upgrades I did on that old car. Is put modern headlights in it, and all my blinkers are all LED. My fucking overhead lights, the fucking map lights, everything, the fucking courtesy lights and the footwells are all LED now, bright as day, and they don't fucking suck any power. Those headlights are so fucking bright, man. I was just like, man, this is the best mod I've done to this car. I'm also going to put a black carpet in there. The yeah, carpet well, in there is good, but I think black would look cooler. And they don't cost much. 90 bucks, I could get a carpet. You know, it's going to make it a pimped out ride, man. And it's got a fucking cool fucking computerized fucking stereo in there. New speakers, high output speakers. This car is fucking rolling, man. And it looks great. Jeff Yard says, at its true core, Christian values are pretty universal. Live and let live and be the better person. And that is exactly why I always make the argument that you don't need a religion to be uh, a good person. Who said that? Jeffy? Jeffy Yeah. yeah. Uh, actually, uh, no. That's That's the... That's the message that is mostly told to the I public. mean, I kind of feel like in practice, There's most Christians do not do that. There are three or four. At all. There are three or four different Jesuses in the New Testament. There were there was more than one Christianity a long time ago. And they fused That's, a bunch of them together. See, this is why I'm not a big fan of religion, yeah. honestly. Right. No, some of the Jesuses... Just, get, just be a good person. Yeah. You don't need that. No, some of the you Jesuses were uh, about judging people and making sure that fucking, you know, so, you know, fucking tongue like a sword and fucking... Sure. They were, some of the Jesus... Ver, some of the Jesuses were like the Punisher. They were going to come back and fuck you up. All right. So, no, there, is, there wasn't one Jesus. There's like three or four different versions of them. One of them is the soft-ass Jesus. It's more like the Greek version. Now, the Jewish versions of it, of Jesus, because, you know, this is all Jewish stuff, all right? It was Jews. The first or, original Christians were Jews. Christianity is a Jewish sh- sect, basically. It is. And some of the versions were real Old Testament. Uh, it just got gentrified over time, you know, to become the soft, forgiving Jesus. Well, shit, then if anything can fly, then why be it? Why even be in its Why religion? even have that? Why have this religion? No. The real Jesus fucked you up. That's <laughs> Well, much like the Old Testament God did. Yeah, right, right. You yeah. just stepped a foot out of line. Right. We fucked you up. Real Jesus fought evil. Don't love that. Punished bad people and fucked you up. Okay? And then he was cool with you. <laughs> if don't not, there shouldn't have been a Jesus. I don't okay. love that. I don't right. love that. Well, and and I kind of feel like the whole reason that they came up with that concept was because they're like, well, maybe people think it's like too harsh. Maybe is that what it was? Uh, well, no. What it was is that originally Jews had made their way into the into into Rome. And we're being born and raised inside a Roman culture. The and Roman culture had had was more a precedent. It was of, more forgiveness. More, sure. it was more Greek style. Yeah. Uh, the original Jewish stuff from Ju- Judea was real hardcore. It was like something out of ISIS. Okay, or you know, it was real hardcore. Yeah, you fuck up. Yeah, we will fucking do this and right. that. Too. So they're being they're being brought up as the gentry. So they reboot Judaism. As a Greek or Greco-Roman yeah, like, religion, oh, right. which that's is right. more soft and more forgiving. Right. The thing is, is that there was more than one of them. There wasn't yeah. one Christianity. There was like six or seven yeah, Christians was a whole bunch of different all ones. competing against each other inside of Rome. Later, hundreds of years later, like 200, 300 AD, that's when they started to fuse them all together. And it became a greatest hits album. Let's put the best Christian stuff in together out of all this 
That's a good way of yeah. putting it. Yeah. It's like a greatest hits album. So the Bible that you read today is essentially a greatest, a, a greatest hits, hits album. Right, yeah. Album. And then over they time. They left a lot of stuff out. Then over time, they harmonized it. If there were any. If there were any. Or it's uh, kind of like massage over. Yeah, if there were any. any contradictions, uh, contradictions or they started whatever. to harmonize yeah, it together yeah, yeah. into a single kind of uh, theme. But it, it's not really. It wasn't harmonized really all that well. There's still. Three, four different versions of the gospel, and they they don't end the same. There's like way. two creation stories in yeah, there. Two, in the Bible that we have well, today. Well, that's in Genesis, though. I know. Yeah, well, because the, they were doing the same thing to the Septuagint or the, or, or I know. the Old Testament. They were harmonizing that too. There were there was a I know lot why they more did material. it. I'm there was just a lot more that. material than what you have. They're trying to synthesize it. Um, yeah, they're trying to make it all canon. Yeah. In the parlance of yeah. The MCU or whatever. It'd be whatever. like taking all the different versions of Star Wars and trying to harmonize all Yeah, that. like all the books that have been written out. Yeah, yeah it's like that. All the fucking it's like TV that. series and you're trying sure. to turn that into something. That's you're trying to turn it into one like coherent right. narrative. Even, yeah, even though it was different directors and different sure. writers and different times. You, exactly. You can't do it. So that's, what, that's what's that's, happening there. Well, that's exactly yeah. what It's exactly happened. what they're doing. That's exactly what happened. You can't take any of that shit seriously. It's basically exactly comic books. Happened. Exactly and people right. that are into comic books and comic book fucking canon understand religion a lot better than the than a lay person because that's what it was. Yeah. This is all people. That's exactly what it is. Going, that's, it's, well, that's what it says it so in the Bible. You know, in, in the New Testament they're saying you have to send this we are we are honoring especially the Pauline material. You know, we are talking about our supper and our lord and they are talking about their supper and their lord. Mm. So right there fucking Paul, if that is Paul writing, because people Paul wrote in Paul's name. No. They're saying there's more than one Christianity. We're talking about our version of Christianity and the New Supper and our Lord and their version of the Lord and their version of the... So there was more than one Christianity. I mean, do you understand now why like I never bought into yeah. any of this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that guy never existed. Do you really think? <laughs> do you really think that you, yeah. at this point in the four plus billion years of our of the Earth's history, do you really think that your beliefs have any uh, any precedent in reality? They do not. Um, it, that is any better than anyone that has ever existed over the past thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Here's, like here's, why? Like I don't understand why anyone would think that their shit was any better than any one other shit. It's all the same. Here's another way. It's all the same. Some Christians, and I'm an I'm a I'm an ex Christian. I'm a cultural Christian. I like Christianity. I like religions in general. I think they're useful. I think they're, they're interesting. They're, and, they yeah, are and very interesting. I think they're interesting. useful for holding the fabric of a society together, uh, as long as they're not real destructive. Okay. Um, A lot of Christians are saying, well, you know, this is just religion. We're talking about the historical Jesus. If there were, if there was a historical Jesus... I do not believe that was a person. I just don't. Let me finish what I'm going to say. If there was a historical Jesus in Judea preaching this gospel, if that guy existed, he no longer exists in the, in the scriptures that you're given. Not in you, the way that he's described. No. What's in the scriptures is a uh, different versions of basically a Greco-Roman deity. It's very much in yes. Uh, it it may have been based on a person, but what you're given in the New Testament that's not the source material. That is something based on a person. But here's the thing: when you really analyze it, it didn't have to be based on anybody. Just like writings of Dionysus and things about fucking Perseus, that wasn't based on anybody. They're just stories. Yeah. And that's and that's what most likely that's what that is in the New Testament. They're stories. They're stories sure. about some a, a Greco-Roman god that has Jewish roots. That's all. That's all it is. And it's pretty much every story about Jesus was lifted. From an older, from, from, from Dionysus or Perseus sure. or Hercules. Yep. There's, and many of the things that he and said, Mithras. or supposedly said in there, was lifted from Socrates and other 
Greco-Roman figures. Nothing of the original remains. You've just seen church propaganda. So, shit, if it gets to that, then Jesus could be anybody. Well, I told you. If he's you. just some preacher standing around in Judea, I mean, shit, they got had fucking thousands of preachers. There were a lot around, of standing around. There was a lot of bad stuff yeah, going on right, at right. that time period. Right. So it's just kind of like, like I said, and I'm not meaning to be offensive to anyone's beliefs or anything like that, but it's just kind of like, um, it's a cultural artifact. This was not a real person. If it was no. a real person. Um, nothing of that real person exists anymore. Remains, yeah. Because everything that is attributed to that person, yeah, can be attributed to another myth. Another myth that another is myth. older. Yeah, it's a reboot. Right. So I don't really. A good analogy would be Superman. Sure. You could say, well, no, there, no. When you're reading comic books, when you're reading comic books, you're just reading. Uh, 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 fucking secondhand stories and shit. There was a historical Superman. No, there wasn't. No, of course not. No, no. that's a fictional character. Right, yeah. So I kind of feel like the same thing. And like I said, I think people think we're being glib yeah. when we bring that, but we're not. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. You're yeah. kind of like here is a f uh, whether he was a fictional character to start with or not. It might have been a real person that it was based on. It possibly was. I don't know. It was a long time ago. But the thing about it is that so much shit has been attributed to him in the interim, like in the thousands of years since then, that it's like at this point, he is essentially like a comic book yeah. character. It's right. kind of the same right. thing. Jesus turned water into wine. He could fucking walk across water. He could rise from the dead everything that made Jesus Jesus was a supernatural act. It wasn't anything historical. And the supernatural acts that he did tended to be the same acts that guys like Dionysus or sure. Hercules or Perseus Every single thing he everything. did was an older... An older version. Version right. had done Somebody would say, well, that. he didn't really do all this stuff. He was a historical person there putting all this Roman stuff on. Well, shit, that's not the same thing. That that means that the original was just some dude. You're not worshiping some dude. He said, well, I'm worshiping the words that that dude said. Everything he said is something another Roman god said. Yeah, they stole that from others. They stole from, yeah. So there's People. nothing original about it, really. It's just, and like I right. said, I'm. It, it's just like a conglomeration. Yeah, yeah. And I grew, up, belie I grew up believing that. That's good. Bitch, I told you. Yeah. I told you. Yeah. Over time, I was like, yeah, yeah, that's right. I told yeah, you. Yeah, that can't be. I thought there was a historical Jesus, but nah. no, it couldn't be. The more I learned about it. I corrupted I you. I was just like, no, it wasn't you. It was actually <laughs> Dr. Price. We had him on the show. Well, yeah, but like. Dr. Dr. Price fucking lays it out. He shows yeah. you where, where it was written in the Greek text. But it's so interesting. That's right. what's and so he was interesting. A Dr. Price he was, used, was Yeah, a he used to be. Okay, so he, he, he was be. a believer, but the more he read, the less he believed. He's just like, yeah, this I, is... Uh, I kind of feel like that generally is yeah, the case. Yeah. And then they're like, and then they say, well, the beliefs of it are good. And they say, the thing is, no, the beliefs are not consistent. Each church has its own interpretations because it's picking and choosing what it wants out of the script. Right. So, so each church is slightly different. And here's, here's the thing. And here's the thing. It always was, was like that. Yeah. They were always different. Honestly, like some people, like I know that you, I'm... Um, I don't want to say I'm anti-religion, although in a in a lot of respects I probably am. Um, I don't really like the mindset um, that leads to people believing in religions. I'm not yeah. really into that. Um, you are kind of more because you were raised. I was not raised religious in any particular. I was raised in like a vaguely Christiany kind of thing but like not as any but you were kind of like raised in a religious framework yeah. so you kind of like are like oh okay maybe some people need that or something I don't think people need that um, but you know we, we kind of differ on that so I'm kind of like to do with the IQ well I don't know about that though <laughs> yeah. I, I kind of feel like in a lot of ways the mindset behind religion I kind of feel like in most instances, 
I kind of feel like that's kind of harmful. No, uh, it, it depends on how smart or dumb you are. I don't know. You, I don't know about that. The dumber you are, the more magical thinking you have, the more you need a religion. That's the fucking. I don't know if that's if the not, case though. I don't know. You don't know the ghetto. You don't know the white. Well, ghetto no, or the I black do. Ghetto. I do. All right. I do. They, they, but they it depends have, on the person because they, they have to have a guy who's a man in the sky, like a cop who's watching them that will judge them. But that doesn't that. seem to help, though. No, uh, yeah, it does. When, it yeah, doesn't it does. really when seem to help. When they're more religious, they just behave. They just they don't. They, yeah, yeah, they did back in the they day. They don't. They did back in the day, and in religious countries, crime is actually less because they're afraid of punishment. Uh, now the rich people in those countries do whatever they want because they know that it's kind of bullshit. Because they know it's all. They know it's all bullshit. But it, it's just a way of keeping control of people that are sub one hundred IQ. Here's the thing. Uh, but hold on, let me answer a question. Okay, I got to pee though. Okay, I'm gonna go pee. You right. answer. Her Erica says that that, that um, Superman does give her like religious vibes. Yeah. He is well. He okay, it is a religious story. Yeah. Okay. Superman's name was Kal El. El means God, God Almighty. It comes from the word El, El Shaddai. All right. Uh, the Lord. Okay. Uh, El Elohim is another word version of uh, of the Lord, of the Lord Almighty. Uh, this fucking when I was in Egypt, there was a. There was a town right outside our military base called, um, shit, what, what was the name of that place? It had the word L in it. Fucking, uh, L, uh, no. Uh, in, in it, never mind, it doesn't matter. L is also the word for fucking Allah, El Allah. It's, it's like that. Um, Allah is also L. It just means God or the Lord. You have Jarrell, okay, Jor God or whatever, takes his only begotten son Kalel and sends him from heaven, which is space, you know, the heavens, to Earth to be the savior of mankind. Sure, that's what it is. Now the person that wrote this, now the reason why this happens. Is because Jor-El's fucking homeland is consumed by fire. It's destroyed. Krypton is destroyed. Okay, so there's only one survivor that's come to the world to save mankind. The person that wrote this story was a young Jewish guy who was sent out of Germany by his parents to avoid the Nazis. He goes to New York to work in a newspaper to make, I think it was a newspaper, to make a, 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 a comic strip. So it, this is a Jewish story, all right? Um, it's a, a savior to come save Metropolis. Sure. All right? Which was New York. Okay. That, that's what it is. So it's kind of Jewish and Christian at the same time. So the kid that came up with that shit was pretty, pretty, pretty smart. He knew how to fucking uh, grab into the fucking roots of people's uh, beliefs, and little kids picked up on that. They're like, "Oh yeah, yeah." They didn't realize that it's a Jesus analogy, and Jesus is a Jewish story. Well, I mean, you, he you know, tapped into yeah a zeitgeist, yeah, if you want to use that word. Like yeah. he really did tap into right, and he made it see. I kind of feel like that's the root of the best art. You take some stuff that's like personal to you as a person who is maybe yeah. marginalized in some way, like that guy was, and you make it universal so yeah. that everyone can uh, apply it to their own situation. Yeah. Even though it initially it was, um, you know, his own personal experience yeah. that he was putting into the art but everyone could relate to it in a certain way and I kind of feel like that's the best art and that is uh, the art that tends yeah. to stick around now Superman and Jesus are not the original you know 
not the only time that story's been told. They weren't even the originals. They're reboots of Heracles. All right. He was God's son sent down from Mount Olympus by yeah. a mortal woman well, to save <laughs> Greece or whatever. Not to be game. a douche, but like all yeah. of the Christian stories were borrowed, They're borrowed right from older right. tradition. Per- Perseus is also kind of that same story. It is. Uh, uh, a mortal woman, a son of God. Knocked up by a god. Knocked up by these gods. Same thing. Yeah. It was Danai. Zeus, the father of the gods. In Perseus' situation. So this is all the same. It's It's the the same same Superman. Story. It's the same story. Yeah. And that doesn't diminish it. I'm just saying that that is something that obviously. It's just what um, it is. Well, it's something that obviously strikes a chord. Yeah. It's a good story. Sure. it's It's a good story. So that's why people keep reusing it. In different contexts. Yeah, you have this guy who come who's come down from heaven. He's got all these fucking powers, all right, and he's an example to you, all right. And he's 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 trying to save you. It's a personal savior, and a sure. savior of mankind. Well, and I feel yeah. as though um, populations that have traditionally been oppressed um, will tend to have. Uh, mythologies about a savior like that's gonna come and fuck up all their enemies and like save them yeah that is very common like so, across the globe man I was talking about Beowulf cop cop yeah. I don't know Beowulf's genesis though I don't think he was the son of a god I don't wait know. was he not I don't think he was I'd have to go back and read that again. He was a geat. I read it in college Beowulf was a geat that was a long time which ago which was kind of like a viking I think they were from Iceland. Uh, I don't know who his dad was, though. One thing about the Beowulf story and about a lot of that stuff is that a lot of the shit that turns up in the Beowulf story turned up later in Christian mythology. And I don't know if a lot of Christians realize that. Do they not? That what? That a lot of their shit was from Beowulf and older. I don't think Beowulf was as old as Christianity. Beowulf. I no, think it's he, older. Yeah. And the thing about well, it is Beowulf like. Beowulf was like maybe about fucking five, six, seven, nah, eight. That's way older. Yeah. And the thing about it too is that the quote unquote Noah's Ark story, way older well, than the Bible. Way that's, older. That's the Epic of Gilgamesh. Sure. Yeah. And it's like I don't I don't know if a lot of Christians know that either. That well, it's the just ep- like Epic of Gilgamesh when the flood story was considered to be history by the Jews. Yeah, they're just like oh, they're yeah, that it. happened. Yeah. Sure. That's the only reason why they're telling that story. And they that be history. I mean it's arguable whether something like that happened in real life, which it probably did, but like on a much smaller scale, I no, would imagine. I don't think it happened at all. It probably didn't. No. But I kind of feel like maybe something happened locally and then it just kind of like blew up uh, into... If you ever go, you know, I was in the Sinai Peninsula up on top of mountains out in the Gulf of Aqaba. Uh, it was a place called OP311. And it's high, much higher than sea level. You can stand on top of the fucking OP311, which is a fucking... It's, 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 it, it's a... It's a desert island. It's an island in the desert, in the ocean, in the Gulf. You can stand on top of there and look way down and see the ocean, but you can also reach into the ground and pull out a bunch of seashells. So a person of that era would go like, man, I'm up high. Event. There was a time in which the water was up here. Sure. So the earth was flooded. Right. And you could do that all throughout Egypt and all through that area. You could find things that came from the ocean. Right. Out, out and I, I think that might have been the genesis. And that's of, where they're coming from. Right. This from. The, the, what they didn't know about is they didn't know about fucking plate tectonics. No. All that shit got pushed up. Yep. It was underwater at one time, but it got pushed up by plates and shit. So they didn't know about that. They thought at one time the ocean was high. Which yeah. it was. I'm not saying that it's like the ocean was higher. But not that high. No, it wasn't that high. So they thought there was. So if the ocean was that high, then that means that there was a flood. There's another theory about the Red Sea that the, at one time 
the Red Sea was also the Reed Sea and that it was higher and that there may have been a mountain collapse which allowed the ocean to flow into the Red Sea and it would have, it would have flooded a bunch of people. There are some, at the bottom of the Red Sea, there are some, looks like some ancient structures where there were like tents and shit down in there and small wooden buildings. But that, they're not talking about the same event. No, that's not the same event. The flood event came from the Epic of Gilgamesh, and they got that from just looking, going to the tops of high mountains in that area and noticing that there were fucking still like seashells up there. That was a localized event yeah. that somehow, through yeah. the telephone game, became a worldwide event. I kind of feel like that's what happened. Yeah. Um... Heidegger said, I tend to believe the Graham Hancock idea that there were prior civilizations on Earth that got wiped out by comets or whatnot. Look, you man, were just talking about this the other day. Yeah, I was talking like about yesterday that. or the day I was before. Some actually. scientists talking about deep time and how old the Earth is. Yeah, I think old, you were talking about this. How old the damn last galaxy night, that we're in sure. is. There could have been whole other creations long before the dinosaurs. Okay. There's enough time there. The Earth was habitable, go, habitable going way back. It the other was. thing is, is that how incomplete the fossil record is, is that in the dinosaur era, some of them dinosaurs could have had damn cell phones, and you wouldn't know about it. I doubt it, but no, yeah. No, they said they could. So I mean, there was possible, enough time, it says it's so incomplete, that there was time for a dinosaur to become technological and then become extinct. And everything that it made would have been wiped out. Everything that we've made, all, all um, traces of human technology, if we were to end today, I think they said it was a hundred thousand, or I think it was a hundred thousand years from now would be you would not find us, sure, even a shred of evidence that we ever existed. I mean, it hasn't really. I mean, all from the buildings, a, everything that we did. Yeah, gone. I mean, from a right. evolutionary standpoint, yeah. it hasn't really been a that long yeah. of a time it hasn't really been right. that long of a time so there could have been all kinds of stuff in the past we'd never know about it that's why um some of these younger scientists who aren't as fucking hung up on stupid shit like some of the boomer scientists and pre-boomer scientists were fucking stupid when it came they were really good with math my grandfather was one of them well i mean he math was, is he, yeah he worked for fucking math that Grumman doesn't change and fucking general atomics and shit that bitch could pull out a fucking little fucking slide rule and fucking do all kinds of computations. The thing is, is that, and he was religious as shit, okay? <laughs> there could be a lot of stuff out there that we, we would never know about. Oh, absolutely. All right. All right. Absolutely. Um, there's, you have to be a lot more flexible nowadays with your thinking. The earth is m way older than, say, that my grandfather believed it was. You know, he believed the Old Testament. You know what I mean? Oh, it's only 6,000 years old. No, shit's fucking millions. Bro. <laughs> he, he, he didn't believe in... Yeah, and he was on the Saturn Project. Well, yeah, like, I know that was but more acceptable believe, back he, then, but it's just kind of like... He didn't believe in evolution. But he believed in rockets, rocket power and atomic sure. power. He knew all about it. Good. Like, that's less uh, likely nowadays, but I yeah. know there are absolutely, like, some fucking weird creationist motherfuckers, like, working on stuff that, like, think the Earth all, is six, Let me tell you, let me tell you all a secret. During that time that my granddad was doing all that shit, he worked for McDonnell Douglas and Grumman. I'm gonna get a picture of that bitch. He, uh, made the fuel injection system for the F-14 Tomcat. He knew the Shah of Iran. He lived in Iran for a long time, and my mother's sisters all lived over there, so I have some Middle Eastern connections. A lot of my uncles are still there. And he was half, um, what do you call him? Oh, shit. He was a Syrian Christian. And, and a Syrian Catholic is, is what his mother was. See, he had Middle Eastern roots, which means I'm like one eighth Middle Eastern. <clears throat> they, uh, shit, I forgot where I was going. In those days of the 60s, all of your aerospace contractors, all the big ones that were doing fucking weird shit, like he also worked for General Atomics, where they were making this thing 
this atomic fucking rocket. They mostly recruited those guys. He was an aerospace engineer, but they recruited him from religious colleges. They didn't want any atheists. The government didn't want any atheists in there because they were afraid that atheists would sell secrets to the communists. Bro, why? Because the because the we communists are, right? because the communists were atheists. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm an atheist too, but that doesn't mean anything. Well, the intelligence agencies of the time didn't really trust atheist scientists. Yeah, I get it. Uh, I think it probably goes back to Oppenheimer because they they suspected that Oppenheimer s- sold nuclear secrets to the to the uh, to the communists. So what they wanted is they wanted Christians, and if you were a fucking devout Christian who believed in creationism and shit, they felt that you would be very anti-communist, which they were. So you wouldn't sell any of the knowledge that you had to the Soviet Union. So that's. I'm sure that. that was probably not a failsafe. It was probably very true. He was very anti-communist, <laughs> and um, yeah, he was he was a, a, a fundamentalist Christian. But like I said, he mm. didn't have a calculator. That dude, he could sit there with a fucking slide rule and do advanced computations. Well, you he had built to. that fucking heavy lifter from the Saturn from the Saturn rocket. And he worked at JPL, or Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And uh, it was just a different time. They wanted dudes that would shut the fuck up, that could do math. Hmm. That's all they cared about. They didn't care if you believed in hokey religions. As long as they believe, as long as they could trust you. As long as you didn't, like, as long as you blab would, about whatever As long as you didn't blab about what you were doing. So they wanted people that were loyal. Exactly, more that's than... all they cared about. If you were loyal. Someone who was actually good at what they... No, no, he was good at what he did. Well, no, I'm not saying that. I'm just yeah. saying that... No, you had to be loyal. Kind of the major thing that they were... And they didn't want you to be political at all. So if you were religious, you were less political in those days. Yeah, in those days. Yeah. Not so much nowadays. High Desert says, What do you all think about CERN firing up the Hadron Collider I don't know during the eclipse? It. I heard yeah. about that, like, today... Um, I don't know. I wouldn't really, I, it's in my nature to like not attribute any nefarious, um, purpose to that, but it's like, who fucking knows? I know like conspiracy theorist people are going to be like all about it, but I'm not that kind of person. So Devorah says a lot of people have told me they think the earth is flat. Um, it's not flat. It's <laughs> not, for the record. <laughs> Even my not. granddad knew that it wasn't flat. He was the It's not, for the record. Um, if you think the Earth, like, genuinely think the Earth is flat, you are either, one, an idiot, or two, you are trying to be an edgelord of some kind because you think that... Well, they wouldn't really believe it then. That's what I mean. Well, so you don't actually believe it, so you're yeah. just trying to be, like, um, contrarian. I only know of one girl who is a friend of ours who believes the earth is flat and it's mostly a stunt. Angel. Angel believes the earth is flat. But no, she doesn't. But she claims to believe that it's flat. Is she a moron? She's no, not a moron. No. She just then she doesn't actually she, believe it. I don't that. think she actually believes it. She's just trying to be... Yeah. She's stunting. Yeah, I think it's a stunt. And it's like... And to me... That seems like the same thing. Yeah. Thank like you very if much, you, High Desert. Thank you very much, High yeah. Desert. Um, have another rum and coke. Well, thank you. Jack Parsons. I might. How about a show on Jack Parsons? I thought we we did one, right? Yeah, we talked about him when we talked about Jack Parsons when we were talking about We did a Jack Parsons show. We did a Jack Parsons show? I'm pretty sure we did. I'm going to, I'll I'll look tomorrow, but I'm pretty sure we did. we talked about Jack Parsons when we were talking about Scientology. We did a Jack Parsons show, and I'm pretty sure we did, like, um, a Thelema. We did, we talked about that. Yeah. Oh my God, we totally did a Jack Parsons show. I'll look pat. I'll look in the catalog, but I'm pretty sure we did a show about that, and not that long ago, maybe like two years ago. I feel like. Yeah. But here's the thing. Angel, I love her, but one of the things I kind of feel like there's a certain type of person, which I don't really understand. But they are kind of like I'm just gonna believe all this stupid bullshit. Because it's what I'm not supposed to believe, or it's, I don't know, it's very edgelordy, and it just seems very try-hard, and it's just kind of like, I don't... Yeah. 
Erica comes up with some good shit. She goes, just because I, uh, I want to say being a Christian, she's Catholic myself, doesn't mean that you don't believe in science. Uh, George's uh, Lemetary is a father of the Big Bang. Lemaitre, yeah. Lemaitre, and a physicist and a Catholic priest. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That, that, that exactly. Of, That's not, those two things are not mutually exclusive. Yeah. The, the, the thing about Western science, uh, a lot of, I guess, younger people don't want to admit, is that the creation of Western science was actually very Christian. In, back in the 1500s, all the scientists were Christians. They mostly uh, justified what they were doing by un trying to understand God's creation. Yeah, well, that's and, how and they how God made got away with things. It. Okay, sure. And some of the best scientists that have fucking changed everything really would be like Sir Isaac Newton, and that dude was a fundamentalist Christian who believed in angels, and he also believed in other shit like fucking uh, 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 what, what's that shit called? Alchemy. alchemy. He believed yeah. a lot in he believed in alchemy. I read a whole thing about his alchemy okay. shit. Right. It's fascinating. He was a yeah. fascinating person. The problem was is that you had conflict between scientists who were Christian and then religious people who were Christian. They were once Yeah, that, those are not it didn't fucking the work same. out too well. And it's not the same. They, they they fucked over the scientists who were Christians a lot, okay? Yeah, big time. Uh, but you know, it wasn't as bad as it was in other cultures. They worked that shit out. Even, here's another thing. You had Christians that freaked the fuck out over Darwin's work, saying that it was anti-Christian. You could go back in time hundreds of years before Darwin, and you would hear Christian scientists saying things that supported evolution. Like they were saying... Well, they the knew. Bible. They knew about it. They knew. You had Christians that were going... Well, it says in the Bible that things come from their own kind, but the kind kind of changes over time. That there you go. You're already you're talking about fucking Christianity. Sure. You're talking, Natural selection. You're talking about not Christian. You're talking about evolution. Sure. So you had Christians writing things who are of scientific minds writing things down that basically sounded a lot like yeah evolution. Well, like I said, but you had to watch yeah. what you said. Yeah, you get in trouble. Or you'd get yeah. burned at the stake or whatever. Well, they had that Italian guy who actually said that fucking that the, the sun is a star and those other stars that you're seeing probably have planets around them and those planets, some of those planets might have beings like humans around them. You're talking about aliens. Hello, Giordano Bruno. Yeah, well, they killed him. We should do a show. Yeah, well, they not only killed him, yeah. they put like uh, fucking nails through his lips yeah. Like to shut him up, and then they burned him alive. Yeah. I read a whole book about that. This is how stupid that was. They said, so you're saying there are other people. Well, how did they hear the word of God and the uh. and, and Jesus? And all he said was, is he said, well, God has his own ways. There, He must have given them a savior, too, to get that savior. Yeah, they got their own shit going on. So then they went, oh, so now you're saying Jesus wasn't unique, that there were many Jesuses. That's blasphemy. Got to burn you at yeah, the stake. Yeah, there's only Sorry. one Jesus. Yeah. So, uh, Poor dude. yeah, that's the problem. Man, but, I read some books about that. Oh, <laughs> that made me so sad reading about him. But he wouldn't, but but here's the thing. He they, wouldn't They asked him just capitulate. back off. If you he back wouldn't, off of that, we'll, we'll leave you alone. He wouldn't he back wouldn't, off of it. He was kind of crazy. I'd have backed off of that shit. Nah. I'd have backed off. Okay, no, that's yeah, badass. What's that? That's badass. Yeah, but they, well, he, he knew what him. would happen. They he knew what would happen. <laughs> he knew what would happen. Well, they nailed his lips together. Yeah. Before they set him on fire. Um, but he still would not capitulate. Yeah. I wouldn't have done it. Which I said, yeah, No, yeah. I get it. I probably wouldn't have either. Yeah. But like I said, it's people that and it, and I kind of talked about this a little bit cuz I did a review a little while ago of Mark of the Devil, which is kind of like a witch exploitation kind of film. You know, and I know that's fictionalized, but it's just kind of like there were some people back in the day during the witch trials and all that that would not capitulate. They would not confess. They're like, I don't want to say what you want me to say. I'm just not going to do it. You can torture me. You can kill me. You can do that. And I fucking fucking stand for those people because God damn it. I like, look, I wouldn't have the fortitude. 
Like, if somebody starts torturing me, like, what, look, what, what do you want me to say? I'll say it, fine, it, whatever. But it's like, those people are like, absolutely would not. And it's just like, I fucking respect that shit. I respect that shit. You're willing to like, get fucking tortured and get in the most horrible way and die in the most horrible way because you just will not capitulate. I respect that. I mean, that is badass. I do not think that I would have the fortitude to do that. But I admire the people that do. So, again, I read a couple books about Giordano Bruno. And he would abso- he was absolutely, he was a scientist. And he's just like, look, I, you know, this is what I came to and stuff like that. And they tortured him. He's like, nah, nah. Like I said, they fucking nailed his lips together. They burned him alive. He just would not capitulate. And I respect that. That is awesome. Awesome. So High Desert gave us another $5. Thank you very much. Have another rum and coke. Yeah. Which I had to plug this in. I need power. I'm going to lose my shit. I could probably use another rum and coke right now. I was just saying that it's like I always had the utmost respect for people during the witch trial era that would not confess even when they were tortured and stuff they're like not nah. fuck man they didn't get anything out of it they got killed anyway yeah but still i i admire that like they had um you know they stood on their principle they're like look i'm not telling you what you want to hear i didn't do that shit you can torture me you can kill me you can do that shit i mean that is that's fucking awesome i don't think that i would have that same i'd just be like yeah whatever yeah i did this not the other I'd probably be a wimp about it. But, you know, if they did not, I admire that. I mean, it didn't get them anything in the end, but I admire that they didn't go down like a bitch. I admire that. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure we did a whole show about Jack Parsons. Right? <laughs> yeah, the fans said, good show tonight. Lots of interesting topics covered. Yeah, Sidetracks is my favorite. Because like I said, we just drink, we get drunk, we don't like worry about keeping to a topic or anything like that. We just talk about whatever we want to talk about. We did a show about Jack Parsons right there, right? I think we did. I kind of feel we like did. we did. You thought we were just talking about... Uh... Nah, we did a whole show about that. I'm okay. sure we did. I'm sure we did. Like, I can't look right now, but it's like, I feel like we did a whole show about that. And not that long ago. I feel like it was within the past couple of years. Phantom says humans were more bloodthirsty back in the day. Yeah, that's the thing. It's just kind of feel like. I don't know. Maybe me and Tom will disagree on this. I kind of feel like um, humans are largely, I mean, there's a genetic component, obviously, but they're largely a product of their environment. So if you live in an environment where it's not really, um, you know, it, it it's not, it doesn't behoove you to acts like a selfish asshole you're not gonna go around like stabbing people randomly or stealing people shit or whatever there's like some repercussions to what you're doing then most people 90 95 percent of people will behave i kind of feel like back in the old days this maybe didn't apply so there was like a larger percentage of people that would do fucked up shit and i kind of feel like back in the old days too like fucked up shit was like more acceptable I want to say, like, nowadays it's not really shit, man. Like I said, you talk in a movie theater nowadays, I'm going to, like, punch you in the fucking throat. Or, you know, I kind of wish that I could punch you in the throat and get away with it. But back in the old days, you could do fucked up shit and no one would really get all that mad about it. Well, there wasn't any law. Right. Right. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So I kind of feel like it's a lot better nowadays. Like now, like, P- 
people piss and moan about nowadays people doing this, that, and the other, but it's just kind of like, yeah, it's annoying, but it's like, it's not the same. You have more protections than you used to. It's not the same. Well, like, I forgot, I forgot so, something. Um, Phantom was asking me about the car and never asked his fucking, never answered his fucking question. I found out why the engine warning light was coming on. It's low fuel pressure. Yeah. I got some gauges from, uh, and it, when it put it on the fuel rail, and I was only making um, 20 psi of pressure for the, on the fuel rail. It's supposed to be between uh, 30 and 40. So then I, I had two things show up: a fuel pressure regulator today, and a uh, fuel pump. Put the pressure regulator on there, and it went up to 27. So almost within spec, but it's like you know. Too, still too low. Slightly lower. So that means I got to pull that fuel pump cartridge out of the fucking Boy. tank and put that new pump in there. And the new seals and gaskets and put it back in there. And it, it'll be fine. But other than that, car's fucking running good. I think I'm going to put a new carpet in it probably and leave it at that. I'm going to work out on it over time. But there should it should be within spec once that uh, fuel pump's in there. I feel like you're having a good time working on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I'm enjoying it now. And it looks beautiful, I think. And it's running. I was really worried good. that I might have had a blown ga- head gasket, so I got um, the chemical test I needed. I couldn't find any sign of a head gasket leak, except uh, I needed a way to test the coolant. So there's this fucking little rig that you get. You put a little bit of this blue fluid in there. You suck the vapors out of the fucking radiator. If there's any exhaust fumes in there, the blue, the blue fluid will turn yellow. Came back negative, so head gaskets are good. As long as head gaskets are good on a on that Ford 4.62 valve, as long as head gaskets are good, fucking fuel and, and the oil pump's good, which no oil pressure is great. As long as all that shit's good. At 100,000 miles, you should be good to go. No problem. So, you just keep the support stuff going on that engine. It should run to 300,000 miles. No problem. As long as you're doing scheduled maintenance. Erica says, Sometimes I think we're just as bloodthirsty. We just have better laws now, thankfully. Better what? Better laws now. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, people, people haven't changed that much. No, uh, like I will submit that people haven't changed that much, but I think they've changed to an extent that most people, even if they have those urges, which I, I'm willing to say that most people do. I have them. You have them. Everybody has them. But it's like most people would not act on that, just because, um you know, from a standpoint of, you know, just the culture, um, it's not acceptable anymore. The biggest change I saw in my lifetime was the internet. Oh, big time. Um, yeah, and that really affected some of the boomers, but mostly Gen X and, and younger. I think it's only about half the boomers, maybe. Because a lot of them didn't really get on that train. Yeah. My dad never made the leap. No, my grandmother did not either. My mom did, though. Uh, but my dad never made the leap. He never really understood what the internet was. And what that did was is it made people before the internet... And it's funny you know, to think about it, man, because I fucking watched all that shit happen through the fucking 90s and everything. People before the internet were low information. Yeah, big You time. could be an intelligent person, but if your information levels were low, you did stupid shit. You believed in stupid shit. Well, you okay. just, you didn't have a lot right. of options. You just kind of like believed whatever your whatever was around. family said or yeah. whatever you heard whatever on you TV heard. or whatever. It's like right. you didn't have the internet. Like, yeah. and you know, I'm only a couple of years younger than you. Yeah. And in a way, that's why I wouldn't trade in being Gen X because we, we saw it all happen. Well, and we've experienced both things. Yeah. It's like we experienced most the old of our world and the new world. Childhood yeah. not having that. Yeah. And then having that when we were, you know, high school, twenties, like college age and stuff like that. And then that came out of the flower and it was just kinda like so experiencing both of those things was really yeah. um 
uh, that was very um, educational. Yeah. I will say that. Um, low information people did stupid shit. They believed in stupid shit. They weren't dumb. It's just that they didn't have anything to work with. Yeah. So I'm kind of like uh, forgiving of a lot of these, you know, like I don't really hate the old church and all fucking crazy. There's motherfuckers who were so low information. They were working on information that was faulty. They were intelligent, but they just didn't know what the fuck they were doing. They didn't right. have any other options. The human mind can only come up with so much original shit. And if society's telling you one thing, and then the fucking books and the institutions that society runs is telling you one thing, you're going to go with that. They're doing it now. Part of the ins- Most of the insanity that you see happening in the West right now is because if you look at the ruling class who's in charge of the government and the industries that run the government, because the government doesn't run industries. Industry runs government. Rich people own this shit. The reason why this shit's so fucking crazy is because they're old. Those are baby boomers. And half of them don't have not didn't make the fucking tr- transition. The transition into the sure. internet era. So they're trying the same old tricks that's worked for fucking decades or hundreds of years on people that know more than they do. (laughs) All right? That's why your leaders seem so insane. They're fucking dumb. They don't know anything about the internet. They just say what worked on television 30 years ago or 20 years ago. My dad couldn't wrap his mind around social media. And he died believing whatever they said on the news, even though fucking reality, when you look at internet and you look at people who are actually on the ground in these places the news talk about will say something totally opposite so they just kind of toe the party line and that's why the fucking system's just going schizophrenic because you got a bunch of old people with a whole bunch of money that have no idea what the fuck is going on paying people to lie for them and a lot of those people who are lying for them know the truth but they can't go against what the money's telling them to say and then you have everybody else like us on the internet who, who are young, who know what's happening. And then there are some young people who are too young to know what's going on. You don't know what's going on. When, it doesn't matter what you're told when you're that young. They just believe whatever they're told in school. And they might have been told any old random shit that sounded good to some corporation somewhere that wrote that damn textbook and controls the, whatever state they are. Because the West is an oligarchy. It's not a democracy. It's a fake democracy run by corporations and rich families. And it's always been that. Always. Is it new? Yeah, it does. It's always been that. It's just that internet has now exposed it for what it is. I knew that when I was a child. Yeah. The United (laughs) States and the West is run by robber barons. Going back during the Industrial Revolution, starting with the Carnegies and the fucking Rockefellers and the Morgans and their descendants and, 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 and their equivalents are still in charge. You could also call it a plutocracy. Well, that's... You know, yeah, that's another that's way of it. And they nice. own the government. The government that you elect is not for you. It's for the rich people. Well, here's the it's thing. It's the go-betweens. They tell you what to do and tell you what the rich people want. <laughs> My ass was always like, look, nobody gives a crap about me yeah. as a person. So I'm just kind of going to do whatever I got to do to like survive in this environment. Yeah. But in another way, I'm kind of glad, like I said, I'm kind of glad that I was Gen X because we straddled the old world and the new world. So in a lot of ways, you kind of saw what was happening with the 70s and the 80s with like all the TV and stuff. And it's like, hey, look at all of this stuff. And like we're showing these commercials and all this stuff. But it's like you were cynical about that even back then. And then when the internet came along, you were kind of like, um, you understood that, okay, everything you suspected was true. Yeah. Right? So it's just kind of like, we kind of like are right on the cusp of everything that happened around that time. So it's just kind of like... I really, I would not, even though it sucks being old, I would not give back being alive at that time because you understood how everything developed, you know? And it's just kind of like, 
We watched stuff from 70s and 80s TV. We're like, oh my god, how could anybody Live buy on. into yeah, what they're saying? This because it seems so obviously bullshit. Yeah, <laughs> it seems so obviously bullshit. Go back and old watch old 70s television, which it program. seemed bullshit to us at the time. Yeah, too. And, and it's 80s a, shit. Sure. Very low information. Why do you think I loved yeah. Late Night with the Devil so much? Yeah. Because it kind of made fun of that shit. Well, bit. yeah, they were kind of like low key making fun of late seventies, late night talk shows, and they were. It came across as genuine. Yeah. But from a point of view of we know this is not, this is bullshit. Yeah. And but in a way that wasn't super overt that it was bullshit. Corporate television through the 70s and 80s and I guess my parents' generation and grandparents there, you could, it was designed so you really would never know what was really going on. And they would have these fake kind of factual investigative reporting programs like 60 Minutes. You go back and watch 60 Minutes from the 80s, it was all bullshit. Most of the, they were mostly covering for, for, for power. Well, they're reason. not real... Um, it wasn't deep enough to know what the hell was no. going on. It was mostly kind of like a smoke and mirror show to distract you from something else. And most of the things that they talked about, history showed later on that they were lying. And it's because, shit, man, fucking big, powerful corporate and family interests were involved in that. And you, they weren't going to fucking... They weren't going to fucking defrock those people. It was just a way of making the public feel like they knew what was going on. They didn't. They were kept in the dark about all the important shit. Anything that was shown on old television was some kind of distraction or a placebo to make you feel like you knew what was going on. They wouldn't touch any of the fucking real important fucking topics. (laughs) Well, yeah, and that's what I mean. It's like I kind of feel like people talk about, and the Phantom is saying, I'm... I don't know if this is what he was saying exactly, but he's like, oh, at least cancel culture did exist back then. I'm uh, assuming he meant didn't exist back then. Um, no, it existed back then. Oh, <laughs> you were not there. Yeah. Um, it absolutely did, and it yeah. was, like, way worse. Yeah, the satanic um, panic was kind of like cancel culture. Uh, there was a lot of shit that was like... Like, yeah, there was a whole the thing. The Maoist revolution in China was can- cancel culture. Yeah, fucking the Nazi fucking movement in Germany was cancel culture. We lived Any through conflict. it. We lived yeah. through it. Um, so, you guys, if you see horror movies, and I'm just, I'm coming at it from a horror movie standpoint, because that's kind of like where my thing is. Like, if you see horror movies nowadays, and they're just kind of like, oh, there's this, that, and the other, and people are complaining about it, it's like, oh, they cut this, that, and the other. If you were not around in the 70s or the 80s, I don't know if you guys know, but so much shit was cut out of movies in the 70s and 80s because they thought it was too... Yeah. You can get them restored today. Yeah. Uh, now it, so yeah, like that, that nowadays, be, it's better. A lot better. Because like you, you can get the movie as it was originally yeah, intended to like be the seen. Original cut in the might, 70s and the 80s, you, could, you couldn't see you it could. because they cut all of yeah. the stuff out of yeah. it. Like the original version of My Bloody Valentine was superior to the fucking theatrical cut. They cut all yeah. of it and I out. I think Terror Train was supposed to be better. Yeah. And then they cut a lot of Terror Train. All of it out. I don't know if you guys know, but like in the 70s and 80s, yeah. the MPAA... Yeah. Would absolutely they wouldn't cut stuff out directly, but they would tell the directors, "Look, you want an R rating, you need to cut this, that, the other." Yeah, and most directors would do it because it's like, "Look, we don't want an X rating, we don't want yeah. NC seventeen or whatever." There was well, an. When fans talking about cancel culture, he's not exactly caught talking about it. He's talking about in, in the social thing. The thing is, is that they had cancel culture back then it's just that it was through television they didn't have social media so television's power was actually more powerful because people only had a couple channels they could watch from and they were controlling people's minds that way sure the internet you can kind of escape it as long as you don't use certain platforms or you understand the, the that's what i mean you understand it's just what those platforms i don't are understand about. like why people whine 
yeah. about it now it's because a lot better than it was because like now yeah. it's like even if some platforms like tell you hey you can't put that up you can put it yeah. up somewhere else yeah back then uh, you, you couldn't do like, that you, you like couldn't do channels. that yeah and like i don't understand like i feel like people don't understand i feel like people like i was alive in the 70s and 80s all these movies that came out Later on, yeah. they're like, "Yeah, we had all these other scenes in there. We had to cut that shit yeah, yeah, out." He's talking about being fired from your television, being fired from your job because of something you did on the internet. Yeah, they didn't have that. But no, you could but have got a job. You could have been fired from your job for something that they thought you did. Sure, like they thought you were. A it Satanist wasn't that. They, it wasn't that different. It, yeah, it was. Just, it would. Yeah, it was different. It was just. It, it was delivered in a different way. They would have some program on fucking Sally Jesse Raphael about Satanism. And they would say Satanists all fucking wear black, and they fucking this and that. And you're fucking wearing black, and all of a sudden you're a Satanist. You get fired from fucking sure. Perry Drugstore because they, because your boss saw some shit on Sally Jesse Raphael. It was full of shit. It was just, yeah. It was, just, it was just, not it was just different. Kind of a different way that it came at you. It, it wasn't was different. It was just it, nowadays. It's like it's more ubiquitous. Yeah. But back in the day, it was the same. Yeah, it, but what it is is now it's more interactive. Sure. You're talking to people that are far away and things that are sure. happening and then other people ratting on you. There's a rat culture that has kind of come up. But that's end. not different. Not new, it's, it's not different. That, it's just that it's not as it's not like it was. It's now becoming kind of like an internet version in some ways. Depends on what you're doing. In some ways, like East Germany. East Germany was a big rat culture. People telling on one another. <laughs> The thing is, is that those were the old ways. You have government agencies trying to get other people to tell on other people for their political beliefs. It's not working, though. People don't care. And the message is usually coming to you through television. And really, nobody under the age of 55 watches television. Old people watch that's, television. That's I mean, I'm old, too. Show. I'm 51, but it looks yeah, like I don't so watch this TV, is, though. You're watching a dying system trying to grasp for power. And it's under the command of people in their 70s. Late 70s, a lot of them. They're going to die soon. Yeah. No one's worried about that. That's part of the reason why this shit is getting so fucking crazy. Those people are old. They're real old. And they don't know what people under fucking 55 are doing or thinking or saying. They're still in the 1960s and 70s. I guess. Mentally. Yeah. They don't know. Well, the the weird thing about it is that, bitch, I will look at like some young person post some shit on social media. A meme or something. I immediately know what that means. Yeah. But I kind of feel like a lot of old people they don't. don't. Get it. They don't get it. Yeah. And I'm old too. I'm 51. Mm-hmm. But like, I get that a lot of like people in their 70s, 80s will be like, "What are you talking about?" Yeah. I get it. Yeah. And it's just kind of like that. That's where the disconnect happens. They're they're old. They have a lot of money, and they're from very powerful families. That have run this plutocracy for fucking generations, and they just can't adapt. I mean, uh, just a few years ago, somebody, somebody, uh, fucking described what was happening in cable television. I don't know how how many of these guys are still alive, but they said it was a mm-hmm. bunch of dudes in their fucking mid to late seventies with trophy wives that were in their forties trying to hold on to a market and a way of life that existed in the 70s and 80s. And I Trying love... to get you to watch television. I love that their wives yeah. did not help them. No, no. <laughs> They're like, no. nah. Nah. He's 75. <laughs> I'm 45. Just die. Just give me the paycheck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just and die. And they're still trying to Just figure die. out... What they should do That's on, awesome. on getting people to love it to, to buy cable, and you know, and fucking they they pumped a lot of their fortunes into cable television, and it's old people that have a lot of money trying to help their old friends pumping money into cable television, and that shit's just falling a fucking part. I mean, the I sooner have a hard time believing that that still exists. The sooner that old people yeah. cack. Yeah. 
Not all old people. No, just those rich old just dudes. Just those are, ones. Yeah. Y'all can catch. 77 with a 42-year-old fucking trophy wife. Maybe we'll eat you. <laughs> Maybe. And it's, it's wife number five. You know? Oh, Tom. <laughs> you know that you would love that shit. You would uh, love that. Nah, those dudes, I don't, those dudes don't know what the fuck is going on. They really don't. They don't know what the fuck's going I on. I mean, they no. really don't. They weren't cut out for the new world. I feel like probably. Nah. I, if I was them, I would have pulled my money out. So, okay, yeah, yeah, fucking cable's done. Okay, that's it. I'm, I'm retired. I I'm mean. Fucking, I'm taking my trophy wife and we're fucking going on a fucking cruise for the rest of our You would life. think that most people would have Yeah, but they have their own. That yeah, yeah, I would have fucking bullowed the fuck out. Sold my shit and closed closed down NBC and ABC and all that shit. So fuck it. You would think, but you know, as soon as YouTube appeared, that was the television of the future. And now other ones have opened up, other channels basically, you know. And uh, you know, the world's different now. I mean, honestly, ninety percent of the time I watch shit on YouTube. Yeah, but yeah, it's guess- a. <laughs> Erica says she she watches television and then she laughs. I watch television. What'd you say? I watch um, TV. The it only cracks thing me up. Only, they play X Files and Twilight Zone. The only Murder thing like we Shira. watch on TV. She's four hundred years old. Grew up watching X Files. Yeah. That the only thing we watch on TV. Yeah. The only thing we watch on TV. Yeah. Is hometown. Yeah, hometown. Yeah. That's off cable. That's because that's fucking where my me and my dad grew because up. Because. Laurel, Tom is that he's from Laurel, yeah. so we really watch that. From there, my family's from there. Yeah, so we yeah. watch that show. Like they, it I comes on. There. I think it comes on Sunday Night Live, yeah. but we watch it on Max. Yeah, Monday night. Yeah, whenever they. It's host about it. Laurel, Mississippi. Yeah, so we always. <laughs> I love that show. Yeah, like those two are like adorable. Yeah, I grew I, up there. Every, I love this. Most two. of the summers of my life. Right. You know, and I'm like I said, that's you kind of got me into it. Like yeah. after you kind of came back. Yeah, it's like Mayberry. Yeah, yeah. Laura it's a good show, man. It's a good show. Those yeah. two that do that show um, yeah. are adorable. Yeah, and I love that. So we watch that when it comes out. But Tammy said lots of TV still being made. Yeah, it shows you how foolish they are. It is. Yeah, it shows you how stupid they. And are. I mean, people are still watching it. I guess it's all old people. Probably. Yeah. Old people, people that don't have computers. Real low information people. I would never spend money on cable. I have never. No. I haven't watched. Uh, I have no interest. I can't remember. Yeah. It's just garbage. It's just junk. Like, right look, there. we have a lot of, we subscribe to you. I have HBO Max. Yeah. That's with my phone plan. Yeah. We have Netflix. Yeah. Um, Tubi. Yeah. That's free. We, uh, I pay for Shutter. Yeah. Um, Shutter's awesome, by the way. Yeah. Um, what else do we have? Uh, the fucking the other television, the uh, slight television. Tubi. Tubi. Well, Tubi. that's free. That's free. Yeah. Tubi. Honestly, if you don't have the Tubi app, yeah, you still. If have you're it. a horror fan, yeah, please subscribe because they have a fuck ton of good horror movies on there. And series. Awesome. And brought up a good one. He says, I don't know how the fucking QVC channel still in pro- Why? Got, like, they, I don't understand because how Because they got still- crazy old women in trailers that still watch television. That is so sad to me. It's so lines. sad. They'll dial up and order some fucking so a, a bracelet that they'll never wear. And they never leave that trailer anyway, but they'll spend $20. Uh, on okay. Network. I kind of feel like there's... The is that they, they act, they're able to talk to those hosts when they buy something. Can we feel the like there's a, um, a, an overlap yeah. between that and people who appear on Hoarders? Yes? Huh? People who appear on Hoarders? Yeah, yeah. Because also do QVC, yeah, yeah. Hoarders. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you guys watch Hoarders, yeah. there's a whole subculture where people, these, it's usually ladies, but I'm, I don't want to go too far into that because Hoarders, it's more common for them to be dudes. Yeah. But they make it seem like it's more common I challenge than they on the you. show. Open up another window. And Google, ask, the, ask Google the question, what's the average age 
of a fucking cable t- TV subscriber. Now, I don't know if they're going to factor in shit like fucking airports and hotels and shit like that, which because they play all kinds of games with that. Well, but they want to make it look good. They want to make it look good, but I sure. bet you average age of a fucking cable subscriber is like 64, 65, I bet. Do we have a cable subscriber? No. I thought not. Well, no, we kind of have something like that. Wait, that do we? It comes free with the internet, uh, okay. but we never look at it. And we I have like very, our it's very basic limited. Yeah, thing. like our neighborhood. Yeah, has a, its has own that, has its Wi-Fi. Own thing. Yeah, and so they have their own like hey cable that kind of comes with it. Right, but we don't think we pay for that though. I don't it watch out, it though. It comes out of the fucking uh, the homeowners fucking or whatever the homeowners fucking yeah yeah fee that we have to fucking pay. I have never honestly watched. Yeah. Which they'll TV. factor that in. The only well, the only thing watch. that I watch on TV is um, I watch Gordon Ramsay shit. Like a, f- a funny thing, a funny thing about the fucking cable package. Not only what he got in this one, and then the other one that comes free with the fucking homeowners association. You can if if you can use obscure ways to flick over to certain channels, and they have pay per view porn. Remember that. Yeah, I found that one channel where it was just a bunch of menus, big titty chicks and shit like that, names for shit. And you're like, yeah, you can order this for ten bucks. That's some weird shit. Man. I didn't expect that to be on there, but cable will try to sell you all kinds of stuff. Well, you but know, but you never, we never go in there and look at it. Well, no, because we can. Yeah, um, we watch internet through our fucking big screens and fucking. We can find all. I'm kind running of it through my uh, Xbox cheaper actually. free porn. Yeah, and I very mm-hmm. rarely. Buy Xbox games that are new. I'll fucking I'm playing like the old Tomb Raiders, Tomb Raider one, two, and three. They re they fucking reissued them, and uh, but they they're like updated. And then I fucking played all the old Doom games. You could buy Doom for like ten bucks for like three of them, like Doom one, two, and three. Well, same kind of and thing. Quake, it's like classic Quake for like twenty bucks. You get right. all the classic Quake games. It's like, like I'm kind of yeah. And well, fucking, and the thing about it James is that Bond, fucking Golden Eye, 007, played that one. Yeah. Yeah. If I see a movie that I really want to see, and I'm gonna um, post a review of Stop Motion, which is like a fairly new movie, but. <sighs> You're gonna charge me more than three dollars <laughs> to like watch some shit. Yeah, Jenny's drunk. She's fucking slowing down. You're Jenny. You're you're getting so drunk. You're slowing down. You're starting to go into slow motion. Am you're I always, really? Yeah. You, what are you trying to do? <laughs> are you making fun it's of cute. me? Yeah, it's are cute. you making fun of me? We should probably look. It's it's getting late. It's almost midnight. We probably should go ahead and sign off. You think? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, been drinking, been working all night. I just wanted to thank you guys for uh, partying with us this weekend. Tomorrow we're gonna go out to the fucking club. Gonna go dance to some eighty dancing. shit. Yeah, I got all tomorrow. my fucking shit broke in. Hopefully tomorrow we'll get something to eat. You guys, uh, do you have anything you need to say, Jim? I think not. Okay. Jen's I mean, I'm just saying it's like, oh my god, thank you so much for everybody that gave us super chats. <laughs> yeah. see, why are you laughing? Because you so you sound so drunk and so cute. <laughs> I know I'm drunk. <laughs> okay. I know. All right. But What's everybody saying? You're good. All right, Nate and night all. Yeah, see, everybody's okay. good about it. Everybody's saying good about it. Like, night. everybody gave us some, like, everybody super chats. Everybody gave us some love. Oh, my, yeah. oh, that's awesome. Yeah. We love that shit. We're going to see you guys um, when? Well, this weekend, Yeah. I'm going to post a review of Stop Motion. Okay. Uh, I've already recorded it. I already edited it and everything. I'm going to put it up this probably Sunday. Okay. Um, But Monday, we're going to be doing a movie review. I have no idea what movie it's going to be. Okay. Because. Okay. We'll see how it goes. I don't know about you, but I'm starving. Me too. You hungry? Okay, let's get something to eat. Go ahead, shut right. it down. So, yeah. So, we're going to be back Monday night. Yeah. Talking about a movie. We don't know what movie it is, because I don't even know. <laughs> but, this weekend, I am going to put up a stop movie interview. That'll be okay. going. Yeah. All right. 
So, <laughs> there you go. Hey, I'm gone. You talk. <laughs> He's gone. All right. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out with us this Friday night. Thank you, everybody, for your super chats. We're signing off for this evening because I'm super drunk. Thank you for hanging out with us on Friday night. Good night.